hello everybody um doing a little bit of an audible here we are going to run we have the time for it we're going to do day one of nikolai muse trial uh guys we're trying to catch up because uh we were doing george kelly but apparently for whatever reason long crime kind of cucked out on it and doesn't want to do it which i think is absolute nonsense why they're deciding not to do it uh they you know i think a lot of people are watching it it was actually getting really really good um but hey they don't want to show it they don't have to show it so we'll just deal with that from there so we are going to start day one and we are going to get started with the opening arguments from there let's see here So we are going to watch that. Let's get started, guys. Uh, and before we get too far, I think this is hilarious just because the way this all works together. The We're using the feed because Nikolai Mew is from uh, Minnesota. He lives in Minnesota. Going across the border to Apple River isn't a big deal. It's a place to go intertubing. Um, if you notice him, that is Derek Chauvin's attorney. So be coming into evidence during. So that that is kind of the funny part there. Um, so we're gonna get we'll get re ready to go with the opening arguments and everything that's gonna happen. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I asked Mr. Chirafasi to uh, connect that more with the jurors' ability to be fair and impartial in the trial, uh, and to steer away from anything that might be viewed as conditioning. Uh, the jury uh, to better understand the experiences of either Mr. Mew or the other witnesses uh, during the incident. Uh, Mr. Anderson, is there more that you want to say? No. All right. Mr. Trophacy? No, sir. All right. Uh, next, uh, this morning, there was a request to allow uh, Sandra Mew to sit in the courtroom uh, despite the sequestration order. Uh, having given it some thought, I will uh, grant that request. Um, the reason for sequestration is to mitigate uh, the risk of witnesses conforming their testimony to what they hear in the courtroom. Um, Ms. Mew has given at least one, possibly more statements to law enforcement. So her testimony is more or less locked in. Uh, the attorneys know what she's going to say and the risk of her deviating from that is uh, minimal. Uh, she's also scheduled to testify near the beginning of trial um, so I don't see um, risk uh, to her being present during the um, testimony and opening statements. Um, those are the two things I have on my list. Um, oh, one more thing. Mr. Anderson, how long do you expect to take during your opening? I think about 40 minutes, Judge. Okay. So what I'll probably do is um, give the preliminary instructions, state opening statement. We'll take a short recess. Uh, and then we'll come back in for the defense opening statement that we break up the afternoon a little bit. Yes, and then are we taking a break after my opening before we do anything else? Um, probably not. I think we'll just roll right into witnesses after that. You know, the plan after uh, just a... Okay, guys, we're switching because I don't like all this garbage at the bottom of the screen. That just takes away from us. We're going to use Longcock just because it's a little easier there. Um, so we're switching over to it. Here we go. The jury's walking in. Here we go. It's time to start. One, uh, yeah, but that's your. All right, please be seated. All right, members of the jury, 
Good afternoon. Welcome back. Uh, the first order of business is to administer the jury oath. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to stand one more time, raise your right hand, and the clerk will administer the oath. Do you swear that you will, well and truly, try the issue joined in the matter announced by the court, and unless discharged by the court, a true verdict given according to the law and to the evidence given in court? So help you God. Please have a seat. Uh, members of the jury, uh, before the trial begins, there are certain instructions you should have to better understand your functions as a juror and how you should conduct yourself during the trial. Uh, I am going to read these instructions aloud. I've also published them on the monitors, uh, so you are welcome to follow along if you'd like. Your duty is to decide the case based only on the evidence presented at trial and the law given to you by the court. Anything you may see or hear outside the courtroom is not evidence. All people deserve fair treatment in our system of justice, regardless of their race, national origin, religion, age, ability, gender identity, sexual orientation, education, income level, or any other personal characteristic. People make assumptions and form opinions from their own personal backgrounds and experiences. Generally, we are aware of these things, but you should consider the possibility that you have biases uh, of which you may not be aware which can affect how you evaluate information and make decisions. You must carefully evaluate the evidence and resist any urge to reach a verdict that is influenced by any bias for or against any party, witness, or attorney. Personal opinions, preferences, or biases have no place in a courtroom where our goal is to treat all parties equally and to arrive at a just and proper verdict based on the evidence. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all of the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices, such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging, or social networking sites, to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. But we will stop or recess from time to time during the trial. You may be excused from the courtroom when it is necessary for me to hear legal arguments from the lawyers. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device including personal wearable electronics, applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by other means. If anyone does, despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with other members of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After this trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. 
If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. Evidence is, first, the sworn testimony of witnesses, both on direct and cross-examination, regardless of who called the witness. Second, the exhibits the court has received, whether or not an exhibit goes to the jury room. Third, any facts to which the lawyers have agreed or stipulated or which the court has directed you to find. It is not necessary that every fact be proved directly by a witness or an exhibit. A fact may be proved indirectly by circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence is evidence from which a jury may logically find other facts according to common knowledge and experience. Circumstantial evidence is not necessarily better or worse than direct evidence. Either type of evidence can prove a fact. Attorneys for each side have the duty and the right to object to what they consider are improper questions asked of witnesses and to the admission of other evidence which they believe is not properly admissible. You should not draw any conclusions from the fact an objection was made. By allowing testimony or other evidence to be received over the objection of counsel, the court is not indicating any opinion about the evidence. You, the jurors, are the judges of the credibility of the witnesses and the weight of the evidence. You are not required to, but you may take notes during this trial, except during the opening statements and the closing arguments. Uh, the court will provide you with materials. In taking notes, you must be careful that it does not distract you from carefully listening to and observing the witnesses. You may rely on your notes to refresh your memory during your deliberations. Otherwise, keep them confidential. After the trial, the notes will be collected and destroyed. Uh, you will not have a copy of the written transcript of the trial testimony available for use during your deliberations. Therefore, you should pay careful attention to all of the testimony because you must rely primarily on your memory of the evidence and the testimony introduced during the trial. It is the duty of the jury to scrutinize and to weigh the testimony of witnesses and to determine the effect of the evidence as a whole. You are the sole judges of the credibility, that is the believability, of the witnesses and of the weight to be given to their testimony. In determining the credibility of each witness and the weight you give to the testimony of each witness, consider these factors. Whether the witness has an interest or lack of interest in the result of this trial, the witness's conduct, appearance, and demeanor on the witness stand, the clearness or lack of clearness of the witness's recollections, the opportunity the witness had for observing and for knowing the matters the witness testified about, the reasonableness of the witness's testimony, the apparent intelligence of the witness, bias or prejudice if any has been shown, possible motives for falsifying testimony, and all other facts and circumstances during the trial which tend either to support or to discredit the testimony. Then give to the testimony of each witness the weight you believe it should receive. In your determination of credibility, you must avoid any and all bias based on a witness's race, national origin, religion, age, ability, gender identity, sexual orientation, education, income level. Or hey, guys, we're going to skip ahead on the jury instructions here. Sorry. But. In 22. In count one, uh, first degree intentional homicide on July 3rd. Approved. State. Senseless and horrific acts of violence when all Nikolai had to do was walk away. That's what you're going to see in this case. 
You'll see he eventually did walk away, but not until after stabbing five people. As Jeff Waterman said, my name is Carl Anderson. My co-counsel, Brian Smessad, and I represent the state of Wisconsin in this case. It's our duty to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Nikolai Mew is guilty of all charges. <clears throat> You're going to hear in this trial that Nikolai said it was self-defense. But there's a video of what happened. You're going to see the video. You're going to see the sequence of events. You're going to hear a lot in the video. You're going to hear people yelling at Nikolai over 20 times, some version of, get away, go away. You hear the boys, the teenagers yelling, get away, get away from us, get the fuck away, get back, get away from us, walk away, walk away. You're going to hear that there's another group of tubers, adults, who hear this and come over to help the boys. You're going to hear them yelling, go, get your ass and go, go, get your ass and go, 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 go. You're going to hear that Isaac's group and the group of adult tubers, I'll probably refer to them as the Carlson group throughout the trial, didn't know each other, still don't know each other. You're going to hear from both of those groups testify about what they saw. You can hear that there's six victims in this case. One that was punched, five that were stabbed, and you're gonna hear from all those victims except Isaac Schumann. That's because on July 30th of 2022, Nikolai Mew killed him. It was the summer before Isaac's senior year of high school. He was living in Stillwater, Minnesota with his mom, stepdad, brother, and stepsister. He was looking forward to going to college after high school. The photo on his left was his last school photo from his junior year of high school. The photo in the middle was his last birthday. He went out to celebrate at a restaurant with his family when he turned 17. He was such a nice boy. He done do nothing wrong, Chad. Such a nice boy. Nice boy. The photo on the right, he was showing off the new trailer he bought to his mom for his new car detailing business. He was a spiring rapper, chat. Spiring rapper. On July 30, 2022, it was a nice day. Weather was in the 80s. Perfect sunny day for tuning. You'll see body cam, but it was busy. There's a body lot of video summer. evidence. Isaac was tubing with five of his best friends. Alex Vang, Juwan Cockfield, Owen Peliquin, Ryan Nelson, Landon Wire. And the last photo is Isaac. His friends called him Bike. These are, you'll see, uh, this is how they're dressed when they're on the river. These are screen grabs from that day. The other group you hear a lot about is the Carlson group. The only one who was stabbed out of Isaac's group was Isaac. The rest of the people stabbed and punched were from the Carlson group. Riley Madison was stabbed. Dante Carlson was stabbed, A.J. Martin was stabbed, Tony Carlson was stabbed, Madison Cohen was punched. The other group you'll hear a lot about is Nikolai Mew's group. Some of these folks you'll hear more about than others, likely. Ariel, you'll see him in the video of the incident. Gilma, I expect you'll hear testimony from her. Eric Von Williams, you may see in some body cam, hear testimony. Nikolai Mew, that's Sandy Mew, Nikolai's wife at the time. Ernesto, you'll see in the incident video also. So Nikolai and Ernesto worked together. Um, a lot of these other people knew Nikolai through Ernesto or just met at Nikolai that day. Sergio was, he's the far right. He wasn't actually in this picture, but he was the last member of their group. So all these groups were tubing on the Apple River. They're all out with friends. They're all drinking. This is a map of the Apple River. Tubers started at River's Edge up on the top right and they kind of tube in this snaky U shape down and then left and up. 
A lot of the tubers stop and did stop in this case at the hideaway. There's a bar there, there's a beach spot to hang out. The incident, the stabbings, occurred shortly before the tubers reached the 35 bridge that crosses over the river, my area referred to as the Sunrise Bridge. And then the place where tubers exit is called the Village Park Exit. And you'll hear that the only group of these three groups that made it to the exit was Nikolai's group. You'll hear that shortly before the incident, Ariel was phoned, got knocked in the water. It was in a waterproof case. Mm. You'll hear testimony that he wasn't that worried about it. He said he has insurance for his phone, but Nikolai insisted on looking for it. So the group ends up waiting at the sand, out of the sandbar. Nikolai goes downstream. He's got goggles and snorkel. He's going to look for the phone. Isaac's group is tubing ways downstream. God, this guy is so boring. And you can't make a murder sound interesting, homie. You gotta work on this. Guy is tubing next to their tubes in extremely shallow water, getting really close to them, not really saying anything. He's got a veil of the strap with a strap, a strange look in his face. They're creeped out by him. You'll hear from several of them that he said something about looking for little girls. You'll hear from one or two that he said something about looking for a phone. Jawan, second from the left, filmed the main video in this case. He also filmed a nine second video shortly before that main video. <clears throat> and in that nine second video, you'll see Jawan saying, he said he's looking for little girls, he's a raper. And Nikolai is walking away. He doesn't keep walking away. At the end of that video, he stops and he turns around. Two seconds later is when that main video starts. The video of the Savings. <clears throat> You'll see at that start of the main video, Nikolai is walking towards a group of tubers. They're down in their tubes, the teenage boys, Isaac's group. In the beginning, when Nikolai's walking towards him, he's got his hand down on a pocket on the right of his shorts. You'll hear from people from his group that that's where he kept his knife. You'll see in the video that this, he then starts to run. He runs at the boys who are down on their tubes. That's the only time in this video you'll see Nikolai run when he runs up on the group of teenage boys. He doesn't even run after stabbing five people. He walks away. There's his hand on that pocket. He's carrying a snorkel and goggles. That group in the background there, in the middle photo, that's the Carlson's group. They eventually come over in response to the yells of the kids. Nikolai puts his goggles in his mouth and grabs onto their tubes with two hands. You'll hear in the video, the boys are yelling, whoa, whoa, what's this guy doing, weirdo? You can see their reactions in the video. That's how it's staying on the left. Nikolai drops his goggles and snorkel in the water. He then starts reaching in the water where they fall into the water. He starts walking around their tubes. They're yelling at him, get away, get away from us, walk away. They're also chirping at him. You'll hear Juwan saying, he's a pedophile. Nikolai says something back, you can't hear it in the video. He's standing, now Nick, this is facing downriver, so the direction they're tubing, that's that bridge going over the river in the back, background. Boys are yelling, get away. That's Isaac in the middle photo with the white hat, purple chunks. That's Isaac again in the left photo, standing with his hands up, fingers splayed. You can see a gold bracelet on his left wrist. You can see that again later in the video. At this point in the video, you hear the boys start to cheer. And that's because the, you'll hear from them that the Carlsons, some adults, were coming over to help. Those two people you see walking over are Madison and Dante. Madison's later punched, Dante's later stabbed. This is Isaac's bracelet. As Madison is walking over, she's yelling, go, go. 
Go. Nikolai says, you'll hear it in the video, they took my snorkel. Madison's pointing and yelling for him to go. Well, if they take your shit, you just you don't get to walk away. In that pocket on his shorts, metallic clip. His pocket knife. You know, they talk about all this, and they're like, some people said he was a pedophile. The other people said he was looking for his phone. That's a weird game of telephone there. Somebody's obviously lying, chat. Madison's pointing and yelling at him to go. Nikolai turns his back to her, looks back at the group of boys in the right photo. She drags him back away from the boys, back to her. You hear from her, that's why she went over there in the first place, was to try to get him away from the boys. She keeps telling him to go. He starts smiling. He waves upstream towards his group. More women from the Carlson group come over. That's Riley in the middle, in that middle photo. She ends up getting stabbed. Right photo, you can see Nikolai puts his hand on that knife in his pocket again. He's smiling. The boys are laughing. They're drunk 17-year-old boys. They have nothing in their hands, as you'll see in the video. They're laughing and pointing at Nikolai. Wait, he's gonna admit, wow, he admits they're drunk? He's smiling. That's interesting. And then you'll see his hands. Wow, he admits they're drunk. Start moving. You can't quite see what they're doing. You can see they come together in front of his waist. You can see behind him, there's nothing but clear and empty water. As Madison and Riley, two women, are talking to him, telling him to leave, he takes out his knife. He opens it blade up, still smirking, looking straight at the women. He's like, you bitches, I shall cut you. you Make a kneel the Nikolai country. Raise his knife and brandish it. You'll not hear him yell at anyone to get back. You'll not see him say anything at this point in the video after he takes his knife out. You'll not see him try to take a step back or walk away. You will see him looking around, smirking, while continuing to hold the knife down by his side. Smirking. While holding the knife, he looks around, looks back over at the boys. You can see Riley leaning over, trying to keep his attention. Nothing but clear water behind him. You'll see Madison's got sunglasses on. Some more people from the Carlson group come over. That's AJ in the yellow swim trunks. He gets ultimately stabbed, you'll see. That's Dante in the right photo. He gets stabbed. This entire video is three minutes and 23 seconds long. It's not a very long video. But from the point in the video when witnesses say Nikolai punched Madison until you see Nikolai walking off after having stabbed five people, it's only about 20 to 25 seconds. It happens very fast in the video. You'll see that when you see it played in real time. You'll see the boys are loud. They're boisterous. You'll hear that in the video. There's a lot of yelling. Pedophile is looking for little girls. Go, get away from us. But he wasn't a pedophile looking for little girls. That's kind of a big thing here. Nikolai. You don't see anyone raising fists to him before it turns physical. You don't see anyone besides Nikolai with a weapon. You don't see the boys touch Nikolai until after the stabbings start. The next portions of the still frames is moments before the witnesses say it turned physical when Nikolai punched Madison in the face, who was one of the women standing in front of him. The Carlsons say he punched Madison. The boys, the teenagers, say he punched the blonde girl. They didn't know her name, they didn't know each other. He punched the blind the girl? Fast. Remember, up to this point, Nikolai already has the knife in his hand. After it pans, 
from the last frames I showed you, AJ was walking over in the yellow swim trunks. The video pans back to the middle. You see so what the heck is going on then? Are standing in front of Nikolai. The video pans to the left. You see the boys still laughing. That's Isaac in the background of the middle photo. He's pretty much just standing there in the background. Then you see everybody react and you hear it. You hear the change in the tone. And this is when witnesses say Nikolai punched Madison in the face. You hear Madison testify and Nikolai punched her in the face. Madison's sunglasses are no longer on her head. You hear testifying that they got knocked off when he hit her. After Nikolai punches Madison, Dante, her friend, punches Nikolai. You can see that in the right frame. Again, Madison's sunglasses no longer there. Nikolai goes down in the water. You can see in the right photo, he gets slapped. Shallow water, his butt's in the water, essentially. That's AJ in those photos, pushing on Nikolai's back. You'll see that the push doesn't really do anything. Nikolai gets right up with the knife in his right hand, lunges at AJ as AJ is going to push him again. It looks like some disparity AJ of force here. He's pushing Nikolai. Nikolai stabs into his lower abdomen with the blade up, and slices out his stomach. Okay. You can see in that right photo, he just missed his throat chin. In the middle photo, you can see AJ's stomach opened up on the bottom, right above the symptoms. Well, they're finding out quickly. From the push from AJ, Nikolai goes down, lands in his spot in the water again. You won't see anyone in the video pounce on him at this point or approach him, try to hit him when he's down in the water. You see him try to grab at Tony. That's Tony, you hear that's Tony in the jean shorts. Tony walks by him. Tony has his back to Nikolai. And you'll hear Tony yelling in the video, get back, get back. We hear testimony from Tony that he thought he was breaking up a fist fight. So he's yelling at somebody off screen to get back. He has his back to Nikolai. Nikolai gets up still with a knife in his hand. That person in the top left of the left photo is Riley. So after Tony, you hear him yelling directing somebody off screen to get back. He turns, over, turns to Nikolai and he's yelling, get back, get back. And you see him pointing in the video and yelling. And you see Nikolai's hand going back with a knife in it. He makes a stabbing motion off screen. Tony's yelling at him, get back. And then you see Riley's just been stabbed. That group in the background there that Nikolai is facing with nobody between him and that group is his group. That's his group of two groups. Tony, you'll see and you hear from him when he testifies that he's just yelling at Nikolai to go. Nikolai doesn't. Again, that's his group. In the right photo, the guy with the aviators, that's his friend Ariel, almost up to Nikolai. Nikolai doesn't walk back to his group. Instead, he turns to Tony with the knife in his right hand. He stabs at him twice. You can see Riley bleeding in the background. Ariel, Nikolai's friend, is there as he's launching the knife at Tony. That hand there on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see more clearly in the next still shots. Isaac goes to shove Nikolai. See the gold bracelet? As he's shoving Nikolai, Nikolai lunges out with the knife. Nikolai kind of stumbles back from the push, comes back with his knife covered in blood and dripping blood. You can see the women recoiling from him. Nikolai ends up by his friend Ariel as he's stumbling from the push. No, Dennis. You don't see Dante get stabbed in the video. You like to think so, but no. But I expect you'll see evidence and testimony that it was after this. It's not until this point in the video, 
after he stabbed AJ, Riley, Tony, and Isaac, that you hear people start react and realize what's going on in the video. You hear that they all suddenly saw AJ, and you'll see in a second what they saw. Up until that point, people didn't realize that Nikolai was stabbing people. You'll hear in the video the shock and disbelief as what just happened. Camera pans around, you see Nikolai looking in the direction to where AJ and Isaac are. AJ is in the water, holding in his guts. Isaac's friends scatter and run. Juan, who's filming, runs back. Nikolai walks away. You can see at this point, if you recall the photo of Dante, he's got dark chunks on the bottom, light on top. He's got his hands on his torso and he's looking down. Nikolai continues to walk away. He walks by his friend Ariel. On that right photo, he's standing in front of Ernesto. He walks by Ernesto. On the right there, that's Alex Bing running to Isaac, who is collapsed in the water. You see AJ struggling. That's Nikolai by Ernesto. Nikolai continues walking. The camera pans away, and it pans back. Nikolai's off in the distance. Pans down a little bit, and that's what the middle photo is showing. And then you see, in the right, sorry, in the left photo, you see he's approaching the right shore. Camera pans down, pans back up. He's walking away from the right shore. Isaac's group and the Carlson's group start helping each other, try to get to shore, get the victims to shore. Isaac and AJ were collapsed. Nikolai starts walking back from the right over across to where his group is at the sandbar. Camera pans around the water. It's where, water's running red. It's Isaac's hat floating by. Nikolai is almost back to his group. You can see people trying to help AJ and Isaac. You see a couple people from the Carlson's group start to call 911. We're here from four people that were stabbed, and none of them saw Nikolai with a knife. They didn't notice he had a knife. They didn't know. They thought they were punched until they looked down and see all the blood. There's not going to be any testimony on what Isaac saw. If he saw Tony get stabbed right in front of him when he went to shove Nikolai, because Isaac's not going to be here to tell what he saw. You hear that some good Samaritans who are also tubing, some nurses, tended to AJ and Isaac until law enforcement and paramedics arrived. AJ, as a result, was disemboweled. He had to have emergency surgery. He was in the hospital for nearly a month and had to have numerous follow-up surgeries. Riley, who was in the bikini in the middle photo, was stabbed in the side. It sliced her diaphragm. She had to have emergency surgery. Not that kind of diaphragm chat. Tony was stabbed twice. One, I'll describe how he kind of blocked it. He thought it was a punch coming in, so it just kind of scratched him. But the other one went into his torso. Isaac was stabbed in the chest and the torso, cut clean through two ribs, and sliced his heart. Died almost immediately. He was 17 years old. Dante was also stabbed in the torso. Nikolai returned to his group. You'll hear from people in his own group. He didn't really say what happened. He said, They took my knife. They stayed at the sandbar for a while. So a little while, sometime after law enforcement arrived. Multiple members of his group called 911. He did not. They reported they didn't know what happened, but multiple people were injured. One person from their group, Eric Von Williams, went over to help with the wounded. He also spoke with law enforcement when they got to the scene. He's the only one who did. 
At some point, Nikolai tells his group that they should just float to the exit. So they floated to the exit. You'll see that when law enforcement arrived on the scene, it was chaotic. The information they had was that an unknown subject stabbed five people. People didn't know where he was. They're all looking at AJ and Isaac and trying to help each other to shore and then paying attention to where the guy with the knife went. There's dozens of tubers that continue to go through. There's tubers running through the woods trying to find the guy who was stabbing people. Isaac and AJ, there's no place to get to them by road. Officers had to go to the nearest. They went to the 35 bridge and then they had to wade upstream to get to them, float them out on tubes. <clears throat> You'll see that when officers get there, there's bystanders, just other tubers intermixed with victims, intermixed with witnesses. Some of the witnesses were so emotional they couldn't even say and articulate what happened at first. So, Juwan, who filmed the video, he alerts law enforcement that he's got a video of it. And he pauses it at an image of Nikolai from the video. And that officer, that deputy, circulates it around to other law enforcement who are responding. Officers go down to the exit. One deputy walks right by Nikolai and his group because he's looking for somebody who matches that photo and the reports all that they had where he was by himself. Deputy walks right by Nikolai, but then two citizens, one employee of River's Edge who had the photo and a friend of the owner of River's Edge alerted law enforcement that they think this guy matches the photo. This happened up in Wisconsin, guys. Nikolai is apprehended. <coughs> Members of the group asked, why is he being detained? You have the wrong guy. This is how he's dressed when they law enforcement contact with him. You'll see in the body cam. Chin, we'll talk about this in a bit. Showing emotion when he's taken into custody. You'll see a video of Sheriff Knudsen and Nikolai is in the back of the squad car. Sheriff Knudsen goes to check on him. You know, how are you doing? You're doing all right. Nikolai says, what's going on? I hear somebody got stabbed. And I fit the description. Nikolai is later told by officers that he's under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide. Ultimately, Nikolai is interviewed by Lieutenant Randy Hart. That video, in that video, you'll see the recording of that interview. His version varies drastically from the video of the incident. The interview is about 45 minutes long. We get to see that video, but I'll highlight some portions of it. When Nikolai is interviewed, he's not told there's a video. Lieutenant Park shows him a screenshot, that one that went around the law enforcement. She asks if he knew that they took his picture. He says, no, he didn't know that. And then he asks if she has any other pictures of him. What other pictures did they give him? So up to this point, Nikolai told his group they should leave the scene of the stabbing. He put on a jacket, hat, and sunglasses. He tried to walk by law enforcement at the exit. He said to Sheriff Knudsen, I heard somebody got stabbed. And he was told he was under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide. So you'll see in the video, Lieutenant Hart is explaining he doesn't need to speak with her. Nikolai responds, or I can say it was, uh, it was, it was self-defense, self-defense. There's lots of people. Uh, they came to me, self-defense, and they produced two weapons when I took from them. And that's the only thing I tell you. They were, they hit me, they were on top of me. That's, I don't remember anything after that. I just remember I ran away. You'll see that Nikolai repeats over and over throughout the interview that they pulled knives on him. Because of that, he feared for his life. He also repeatedly says they knocked his goggles off his face. He says they're trying to pull his swim trunks down. And uh, they uh, snorkeling, so they took my snorkel away, they threw it in the water, they grabbed my pants. One wanted to pull my pants down, and I grabbed onto them. And I don't know who that kid was, but he produced, he had a knife on, on him, and there was another knife, a longer knife, looked like a kitchen knife. They came, they grabbed my snorkel, and they threw it in the water. Those goggles are lost, they took them, they grabbed them off my face, and threw them in the water. 
Not only does Nikolai say repeatedly throughout the interview that they pulled knives on him, he says he did not have a pain. I feared for my life. There was the truth. And they started hitting me, pointing, pointing a knife at me, and another kid pointed a knife. I thought that was it for me. So actually, I took it from, from one of the young kids, and I think that's when I swung back. When you watch the video, the only thing you'll see in other people's hands in that video are drinks, cell phones, and a vape pad. We'll hear testimony from both Isaac's group and the Carlson's group that none of them had knives. They fly again. I'm one handed in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it. I poked him with his own hand, and I took him from his hand and then I swung. So I don't know who I hit. I just know that I took the knife from, from one of those kids. Lieutenant Hart asks, um, did you have a knife with you? No, no, absolutely no. Nikolai says he's telling the truth that he does not know where his knife was. He says, I had, he, says he had one earlier to cut the string for the tubes right at the beginning. I left it on the, I don't even know where at, what I did with it. I either gave it to one of the people or I put it in my truck. To tell you the truth, I don't even know. I don't even know uh, where it's at, to tell you the truth. Maybe one of the bags we had with it, with us, it may have been in, uh, I don't know, maybe I left it and put it back in the car. It really says he, everything happened fast. He doesn't know why they attacked him. I don't even know why they took my snorkel. I don't know why they wanted to pull my pants down. I don't know why they made so mean. Why did they want to scare me with the knife? They're scaring people on the river. It's a family-oriented river with knives and what they did. I just grabbed the kid's knife. I didn't even know I was holding it right. I grabbed it from him because he tried to poke me with it. So I feared for my life. He says it over and over. They're pushing me, shoving, I tripped, I fell down. I got up and that's where I saw one of the kids there, the closest kid with the knife and I grabbed it. Again, you'll hear he was already told he was under arrest for homicide. Nikolai asked Lieutenant Hart, so what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Lieutenant Hart says, yes, four people went to the hospital with injuries. Nikolai says, oh my God. Lieutenant Hart says, and one person died. So Nikolai says, oh no. Lieutenant Hart says, I don't know their names or their genders, I don't know. And Nikolai asks, is that because they fought each other? Again, you'll see this in the video of Nikolai walking off to the right shore before walking back to his group. You'll hear from Gilma Constanza, who was one of the tubers in his group, that as he walked back after the incident, he did not walk back directly to the group. He walked over to the shore across from them and threw something onto the bank. This is a, you'll hear from Chuck Coleman from the Sheriff's Office. It's a 3D rendering, this is a bird's eye view of it. These are approximate locations. We'll hear on where things happened. The river in this image is flowing downstream, or down to the bottom. These are going to be below this image. <coughs> the, white ins the white dot is approximately where the boys were when Nikolai first made contact with them. They continue to drift down a little bit. The Carlson's group is that pink dot. They also continue to flow down, so at the time of the incident, they're more kind of uh, parallel with Isaac's group. And then orange dot is the sandbar that you'll see in the video where you hear that the Nik Nikolai's group was. That star, you'll hear that's where law enforcement found the knife. This is that knife that was found on the shore. You'll hear that this knife was sent to Wisconsin State Crime Lab, tested positive for blood. It was compared to DNA samples of the five people that were stabbed. It had DNA, Dante, and Isaac on it. By close and trial, you'll see that these were senseless and horrific acts of violence, and all Nikolai had to do was walk away. At the close of trial, the state will ask you to find Nikolai guilty of first degree intentional homicide of Isaac Schumann, 
attempted first degree intentional homicide of Riley Madison, AJ Martin, Dante Carlson, and Tony Carlson, and Battery of Madison Carlson. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, members of the jury, we are going to take a short recess. We'll come back at 2.10. Please take the jury out. Guys, that was not very impressive. That was very, well, you killed somebody, so, well, you should hold them accountable, I guess. Uh, it's like, come on, guys. Have a little bit of fire in your thing. Somebody's dead! A little bit of emotion. But yeah, it's, it's a Walmart knife. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, $10 gas station knife sharpened up a little bit. will cause a lot of problems for people. All right, so Damn, I muted again. God damn it. I hit the button. All right. All right. All right. So, I mean, would would this be a good idea? I'm sure he's like, wow, I should have done something differently. I'm sure he's thinking, oh, God, I could have done this a whole lot better way. Maybe I just let them all float down the river 20, 30 feet. And then I look where they were. I mean, th this is, guys, this is where you have to use your common sense in life. You know, you're, you're scuba diving around like, oh, I gotta look for this knife. I'm gonna plow through this fucking group of people. Common sense, like, what would you do? Like, maybe I'll let him go by, and then I'll look. Or say, hey, guys, have you seen a phone? Because then some people are saying he was looking for a phone, so obviously he was, and people knew. Now this group of drunk kids are like, oh, he's a pedophile. It's like, Assholes collided. I guarantee you, assholes collided. I'm sure Nikolai don't take no shit from nobody. Well, this is what that gets you sometimes. So, you gotta use your mind. You gotta use your head here. You gotta fight with the gray. That's the big thing here, guys. I'm recapping what I just said. So, would I ever tell you you should get out of the way there? No, but don't go looking for a fucking problem. Use your Use your head. Use your head a little bit. Oh, there's people all around. Okay, like, you know, try to, like, navigate through them. Don't just, like, scuba dive through a group of fucking people when they're going downstream and you're going upstream. You, you've got to be smart. There's a million ways you could have done this that I'm sure Nikolai and me would have been like, yeah, I should have done this differently now. It's a, it's a fucking phone, too. It's gone. It's bricked. Let's be real. That phone's toast, most likely. So... And there's not really a rant. It's just being smart. It's just being smart about it. So. You know, Bush saying he doesn't have an like, obligation to do that. I want to talk to them either. Okay. And this is where you can make that decision. You can say, hey, guys, somebody in our group dropped the phone. Did anybody see it? I'm just trying to get through. I'm looking for a phone on the ground. You know what that does? Well, now they can't go screaming, oh, I didn't do pedophile, no pedophile, 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 pedophile. Like, none of that happens. And everybody goes, oh, the guy's looking for his fucking phone. Okay. 
And then what happens? Probably none of this shit happens. He doesn't sit in jail for two years. You know, yes, you don't have to talk to nobody and take no shit from nobody. But that's a fucking rough way to live life. I mean, you can live like live life like you're Chili DeCastro, but it's a lot easier every once in a while. It's like somebody asking a question. I don't answer questions. I don't answer you. you know, different than the police, but a regular person. Like, hey, man, what are you doing? You're snorkeling up through a group that's coming your way. And she's like, hey, I'm looking for something. Just thought. Just thought. So. Um, it's Trent brings up a good point. You know, even if you are convicted, you want to spend 250 G's defending yourself for this. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of the point here. Um, cheap little knives can do damage. Yep. A nice sharp knife will do a lot of damage. Even a gas station knife. Um, Duncan saying definitely seems like a dumb asshole, but legally it seems like it could have come down to if the jury likes him or not. Since both parties are stupid. It's probably going to come down to that. Who, who do they hate the most? But it sounds like the kids are a bunch of assholes. So, probably got that going for him. And then Trenton says he ran from the scene. That's not good for a self-defense claim. It's not, but you also, you want to stick around a whole group of people you just fucked up? You think they're going to let you stand there? No, they're going to attack you. I mean, also, maybe you didn't realize you didn't hurt them. I mean, a million different reasons. We'll probably get to that, but listen, let's listen to the defense first before we get too far. Okay. Nick Mew standing in the river with 13 strangers. 13 drunk, angry strangers. 13 against one. Yes, he's they got yelled, Corey Shirafisi. And they screamed in order to attract a crowd. They got a crowd. They told lies to make the crowd angry. He's looking for little girls. He's looking for little girls. They layered their lies. They made them louder to make the crowd more angry. He's a predator. He's a predator. They chanted. They pulled on him. They closed the space around him. They got up in his face and they pushed him. Somebody else pushed him and they pointed and they pushed and they pushed and they pushed. And when he put up his left hand, when he put up his left hand to block and protect himself as they're in his space, in his face, he puts up his left hand to protect himself. And then they got violent. They got violent. They knocked a grown man, punched him, knocked him into the water. And when he's down in the water, they come up on him and they hit him again when he's down in the water. When he tries to get up, out of the water, they attack him from the front, smack him across the front of the face, while somebody else comes from behind and starts pushing him down. In that moment, he feared for his life. And he responded in self-defense. Let me show you what they did. Dante Carlson, who had earlier come over into that group, Right? His dad had sent him over to help Nick. But the crowd got Dante going, and he was, it didn't matter. He was going to hit him. And when the opportunity arose, as Dante Carlson told you, will tell you, he laid him out. Knocks a grown man back off of his feet, where it's not just his butt. You'll see on the video, it's his shoulder, it's his head. He goes into the water. He didn't have a measuring stick. He wasn't figuring out what the height of the water is. He went in the water, because they hit him into the water. 
And when he's down, you'll see he's down in the water. And Dante Carlson, who punched him with his right hand, right? He was so confident. He was so confident. Had his beer in his left hand. And then he's given a beat down with his right hand. He then runs around him as, Don, as Nick is falling into the water. And he's in the water. He runs around him with the beer in his hand because he knows he's got his group around him. And then he comes around and he smacks him again. You can see in the first photo, you can see the shadow of Dante's arm coming across. And you can see it hits him across the face and across the ear. That's not just a slap. That's a full hand. You'll watch the video. It knocks him down. And then when he's down, he's down in the water, you'll see A.J. Carlson, who you'll hear tells you that he came over there to mediate. But for whatever reason, maybe it's because of a crowd, maybe it's because of a mob, maybe it's some other mentality. But when this happens, he sees this old man down on the ground. He doesn't go to help him. He goes to push him from behind. And while he's pushing him from behind, look in the upper corner there. That's Dante's arm. You can see in the middle slide, that's Dante's head, hand, smacking Mew across the front of his head. And then you'll see on the third slide, that's where he's extending through. So confident, he's going to beat this old man down that he keeps the drink in his hand. That's the close-up that you can see through there. Dante Carlson hitting Nick Mew in the face while his friend attacks him from behind. You're going to need to make some choices in this case, right? Some, make some decisions. Some of the things that maybe that might help you to do. Let me just take a step right back, all right? Who is Nick Mew? Who's the man that they wanted to beat down on the river? We're going to tell you about that. How did he get there? What made him be in the river on that day, as we see, saw here earlier? And we'll tell you that story. And then lastly, why did this angry mob, this pack of players, why did they attack him? And we're going to tell you that. First, who is Nick, right? Nick's 54 years old, lives in Prior Lake. He's married, right? You see a photo of, you'll hear from his wife, Sandy, right? She's going to be a witness. She was there with him that day. Him and a bunch of other 50-year-olds went to go have a peaceful day on the river. Right? Nick grew up in Romania. Right? And when he was about 15 or 16, he immigrated over here. We're not going to get really into it. Romania was not a good place to be in the 80s. Communist dictator, all kinds of other bad Nikolai stuff. Nikolai Ceausescu, Nick's one of the dad, worst. Like a lot of people in the world, wanted to have a better place for his family to grow up. So they, as political refugees, were accepted by a church in Minnesota, and they came over. To Minnesota. When Nick was growing up, his first language was a Nick at Romanian. a church in Minnesota. Oh no, chat! But he lived in this communist dictatorship. He also needed to learn Russian because he was in Europe. He also learned to speak French because he's a pretty pretty smart guy. He also learned Latin. So when he was 15 and 16, he comes over to the United States and then he picks up English as his fifth language. He can speak fluent English. He's fine. But I think it's important for you to know that's not his first language. When he, he graduates from high school in Minnesota, he decides he wants to go on and further his education. And he goes to school in South Dakota. He becomes a mechanical engineer. And he works. He's worked as a mechanical engineer for years and years. A bit of a handyman, as I imagine a lot of engineers are, right? I don't think of myself as a, as a handyman. He's a handyman, good with tools. Hangs out with he's tools. a man of a man. And you'll hear from other people how he's used tools in the past. He's very handsy. And you'll hear, that he, as you'll hear on the tape, as he tells the police, you know, living a peaceful, quiet life in Minnesota. Never been in trouble before. Him and some of his work friends, as all of us sometimes as adults, our circle of friends tends to be people that we work with. He has a group of friends, Amanda and Ernesto. They've been down the Apple River before. In fact, they've invited him before, and he's been down the river one time before, several, several years earlier. So they make a plan with all of those, the group of people that we saw, right? Oh, I forgot one thing here. Nick, like a lot of people, 
maybe as they get older, isn't of the best health. In 2020, he had a heart attack. And he needed to have quadruple bypass open heart surgery. So these are the photos of him recovering from that. And it took him some time. And he'll tell you how that still makes him feel fragile. Right? He doesn't feel as fit as he was when he was 18 or 22. So he decides to get out on the river with his friends. These are some of the friends. And as you'll see in photos, right? He's in the water that day. It's warm that day. Sometimes he's wearing his sunglasses. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's got a hat on. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he has his shirt on. Sometimes he doesn't. This is the photo of the start, which is pretty much the exact same thing Wake he was wearing at the end. Um, his friends Amanda and Ernesto uh, asked him to come along. There's a lot of other adults that are coming, right? There's none of these, there's no 20-somethings, no teenagers. They pack food and coolers. Sure, they have a couple of beers, but it's really just a time to get together with their other adults and float peacefully down the river. Nick, Nick likes to snorkel, right? So he brought his goggles and his snorkel, right? That's just kind of who Nick is. He's a bit of an explorer, a bit of a curious mind, and he would brought his goggles and snorkel. And you'll see a video of him prior to this where he's just kind of laying up. Well, he kind of floats there with the goggles and the snorkel, and he's looking at the bottom of the water. Probably not a lot of exciting things at the bottom of the water in Apple River, but he was there to see it if there was something there. Before he leaves, he gets a call from his friend Ernesto, because Ernesto knows Nick and knows that Nick's a bit of a handyman, and is like, hey, remember last time we had all those strings? We got all those strings. You got to cut up stuff. You got to do this. Can you bring that little pocket knife that you've got, that utility knife? I've seen you use it at my house. You've used it as a tool. Make sure you bring that, because we need to cut up some of the strings. So he does. Gets, gets back, packs that up, brings it along. And sure enough, when they get there, they have uh, their provided strings. And then people, you'll see, they tie up tubes, they tie up coolers, they tie up everything else. And he uses the, uh, his pocket knife to sometimes cut things up, right? You'll also see as he's going through on the river that day that his shoes kind of fall apart. Right? And you'll see that pictures of his shoes, he's got strings, and he's tied them up, and he continues to cut with the little pocket knife that he has to make sure that his shoes, footwear, are something that he can have. So they float down the river. All right, this is the group. You saw that photo already with uh, Mr. Anderson showed that to them, right? And again, here, here he has the hat on. Here he's got the hat off. Uh, you'll see later, not surprisingly, when he goes to snorkel, he doesn't have his sunglasses on. And sometimes when he snorkeled, he had a shirt on. Other times he took it off. Here's another picture of him on the river with the group. Again, has the hat back on, depending upon what the sun is like. So. How did he get there, right? Well, as we talked about, Ariel, his friend, loses his phone. Right? And whether they wanted to look for it or didn't want to look for it, I don't know how that's relevant. I don't know how his wanting to go help his friend look for his phone is anyway important. You'll get to decide that. But we know at the end of the day is it's uncontested. His friend lost his phone. And as you saw in some of those photos, they have these little bags that they put them on, and they didn't know if it was going to float or if it was going to sink. But the water between him and the other two groups was downstream. So if something went into the water, it would float towards where those other two groups were. So Nick used his head and walked where he thought the, the, snor or the uh, phone was going to float to, and he goes looking for it, right? And then while he's looking for it, he runs into another group, right? And this is the group that, that we're going to talk about, two different groups, right? The first group he runs into is this group of high school, right? And you're going to hear that they're drunk. You're going to hear that they were smoking stuff. The one piece of evidence that we know for sure is that at the time of the autopsy, Isaac Schumann's blood alcohol concentration was 0.219. And if you ask his friends, his friends are going to say he was the most sober one in the group. So we have this group. They're drunk. They're loud. There's six of them. They're football players. They've run as a pack together before. And you're going to hear some videos. They're a quite confident group, right? And they see this man, this man that maybe others are going to judge upon his appearance. This group of six see him, and they start making judgments about him based upon what he looks like. He's an old man in the river with goggles, and they don't like it. 
So they start calling him names. Right? And there's a video, you're going to hear it, because they, they start harassing him, they start heckling him, they're basically trying to humiliate him. And Mr. Cockfield, one of the football players, he grabs his phone out and he thinks it's funny enough that he's going to record it. And you'll see that recording just before this, where he says, grown man looking for little girls. And he thinks it's really funny. And then he screams out, raper. He doesn't scream that out for his benefit of his five football friends that are with him. He screams it out to draw a crowd, get other people involved. Now, Mr. Mew may or may not have heard that exact thing, but he hears them yelling and he turns around and what does he see? He's looking for a phone, right? We know that. And when he turns around, he sees somebody holding up a phone. Maybe he's wrong, maybe he's mistaken about why they're holding up the phone, but he sees them holding up a phone so he turns around to approach him because he thinks that's the phone he's looking for. I'm looking for this phone. It floated down this way. These kids are yelling. And he starts jogging towards him. As you saw, as he jogs toward him, he's an unfit 260-pound man trying to move through the water. And he picks up his feet for about four steps. And then he reaches his hands out to grab their tubes. And when he does so, he puts the snorkel and the goggles in his mouth. Maybe they thought it was an act of aggression. I don't really think it was. You'll get to see it and watch it. But we know nothing happens after that. Because as soon as he goes and approaches, the goggles and the snorkel drop. He loses them, and he immediately starts looking for them. That's about five seconds into the video. He starts looking for them, and they start yelling at him, get away, get away, get away. So if this is the, this is the tubes, right? You as the jury, you're looking downstream this way, right? Nick is standing here in front of the tubes. He looks, he comes up, and then he walks to the other side of their tubes, He's now on this side of their tubes, downstream from them. He's downstream because that's where he thinks the goggles and the snorkels come. And did he tell the police officer that he thought they knocked the goggles and snorkels out of his hand? Yes, he did. Is that what he believed happened? Yes, it was. Is that what really happened? No, that's not what happened. And the great thing you're going to be able to see in this case is there's a video. There's a video that we can check everybody's testimony against. And you know what? Riley Madison got it wrong. Dante Carlson got it wrong. Madison Cohen got it wrong. Anthony Carlson got it wrong. Pretty much every witness, when you compare their human memory against the video, they got it wrong because we're humans. We can't get it as good as the video does. So he got that wrong, but he's still nevertheless looking for his goggles. His goggles are down in the water. He's looking for it, right? And he starts walking around there. There's nothing that prevents this group of football players who are screaming at him from just walking around. He's one man, maybe two feet wide. And you hear from there, they talk about him walking away, but they can just walk, just float on by and leave this man alone. But they stay to harass, they stay to heckle, they stay to humiliate. Because he starts walking away from them. And if you watch and you count, you watch it enough time, he takes about 10 steps away from them. And it's sometime during those 10 steps, it's sometime during those 10 steps when that group says, you've got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. That's what this group of drunk teenagers says to that old man. And he's walking away at that point. And then what you'll see when the video comes back, he walked away and followed. They followed. They didn't go around. They went right up to him where he had walked away. Now remember, as he's walking in this direction, his group is... 200 and some feet that way, 280 feet that way. This water is deeper. As he starts walking away, he gets into deeper water. He doesn't have his goggles, doesn't have a snorkel, still can't find the phone. He's getting farther away from this group. The drunken teenagers are yelling at him, and now they keep following. Now, this video, right? We're going to show some slides from the video. And it's super important, obviously. We're very thankful that we have it so that you will know exactly what happens. But what you've got to remember is the video was taken by Juwan Cockfield. It is from Juwan Cockfield's perspective. It's from his point of view, right? It makes it obvious. And so the person that we're watching oftentimes is Nick Mew, right? But you need to know which is obvious, that the video is not from Nick's perspective. We're not watching it from Nick's perspective, we're watching it from somebody else's perspective. And why is that important? 
because the judge is going to tell you, right? It's important because at the end of the case, you'll need to determine the reasonableness of his beliefs from his point of view. You'll need to determine the reasonableness of his beliefs, beliefs, not actions. You're here to determine his beliefs and the reasonableness from his point of view. So as you're watching that video, you're going to be asked at the end to be like, what would someone in Mew's position from that standpoint, what would they feel? What would they believe? Let me just quickly read to this, right? If I can, the law of self-defense. The, in determining reasonableness, a belief may be reasonable even though mistaken. In determining whether Nick Mew's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what a person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in Nick's position under the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. Not 30 seconds before, not a minute before, at the time of the alleged offense. The reasonableness of Nick's beliefs must be determined from the standpoint of Nick Mew at the time of his acts and not from the viewpoint of the jury now. So I say that to you just so you know when we're looking at the evidence what you're going to be asked to do at the end. So they, right, they get him into, the, him into this position, and this is 50 seconds into the video. He's walked 10 steps away. They come up to him and approach him and cut him off. So he walks away one time, they follow him. But Nick, right, sees, right, so he's here, he's got a group of people here, and he looks off to his left, and he sees a group of adults. There's two adults coming this way. Great, adults, not drunk teenagers. Adults are coming this way. He doesn't continue to engage with this. He gets and starts walking over here. He walks over to engage with the adults in the hope, as I think most of us do, when we see perhaps another adult and we're dealing with a group of drunk teenagers, maybe I can appeal to reason. These are adults. And when he walks over this way and the path down the river is wide open, those drunk teenagers follow him. Follow him over here where he then gets confronted by Madison Cohen. And Madison Cohen is not listening. She's not there for an appeal to reason. Her immediate words are to Nick Mew in his face, go, get the fuck out, go. And you'll see Nick's reaction is kind of like, as you heard from the, they have my goggles, like, why are you in my face? What's going on? And you can see, they'll call it a smirk. They'll call it a smile. Look, there's 4,819 frames in that video. 4,819 frames. I have no doubt that you can pause on one of those 4,819 frames and find a photo where somebody's mouth is making a particular shape of anything at any time. Is he smirking? Is he smiling? You watch. You decide. Because he looks perplexed. He's immediately confronted, and he starts to give an explanation, and Dante Carlson tells him, it doesn't matter. Right? Appeal to reason? Nope. We're not doing that. That's kicked out the door. There is no appeal to reason at all. And while this is going on, the Carlson group, right, who sent two people over, also has Quentin Carlson. And he's an older though. Madison Cohen, Dante Carlson, A.J. Martin, they're in their early 20s, which is fine. They're certainly adults, but that might be different than somebody in their 40s. Quentin Carlson, he sees what's going on. And what he says, I was worried about the group against one guy. I was worried that they were going to gang up on him and something bad was going to happen to the old guy. So I told my son Tony and Dante to go make sure they don't attack that old guy. That's not somebody looking at it from Nick's perspective, but that's somebody who can see maybe what Nick sees, hear what Nick hears, and his thought is, oh, something bad's going to happen to that old guy. So he sends over his kids. And when they come over, right? The high school group continues in what I think we now know, it's a new term, is the gaslight them. They just start making up lies in order to affect his perception of reality and everybody else's perception of reality. As soon as that group comes over, that high school group says, he's a predator. And then immediately they're like, he's looking for little girls, he's looking for little girls. There will be zero evidence that there were ever little girls even anywhere near on that river. Zero. There's going to be zero evidence that he was looking for the little girl. But they drum up, right? They get this crowd going. They've got the two people here, and they start yelling that. And then 
the crowd gets to be more, right? As this is going on, it's about 113, 115 into it where they start screaming at him. He's looking for little girls. And then you'll see as he's standing here, after he's walked away from that group, he walks over to the adults. He's kind of pointing at them like, I got my snorkel. And they confront him. And as he's standing there, he turns his back on her and them, and he just stands here. And as he's standing with his back turned, and the path down the river is wide open, instead of just walking on by, Madison Cohn decides she's going to put her hands on him, and she grabs him and starts pulling him. Pulling him, and you'll see he turns around and immediately looks to his hand and says, don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. They don't walk away. They stand right there. The crowd, the drunk high schoolers, continue to say he's looking for little girls. Somebody says, is that what he said? And then it changes to the next lie is, we've got it on camera. We've got it on camera. But you're going to see that they downloaded that phone. There ain't nothing like that on camera. There ain't nothing like that on the camera because that's not what happened. Because these drunk teenagers were gaslighting him and they're enticing a crowd. Nick stands there. He's now got people all around him, right? They're chanting at him. He's a predator. He's a predator. He's all alone. He's getting, it's getting louder. He raises his left hand to his group. Like, I mean, need some help here. Like something's going on, right? And when that happens, you'll see the camera. Juwan Cohen turns the camera to show where he's waving to. So the high school group has knowledge that Nick Mew, who's standing right here, doesn't want to go that way. Nick Mew, who's blocked right here, wants to go that way. Because that's where his group is, because that's where everybody looks. And you'll see on the camera, Madison Cohen, as she stands and he waves, she turns and looks and sees he's got some friends. So does Madison Cohen say, yeah, why don't you just go that way? She doesn't. What she does is she reaches to her friends and says, hey, get over here. She calls in more numbers. She calls in more numbers to confront him. Because at that point, it was eight against one, and she wanted more. So she brought over Riley. She brought over Janelle. She brought over Gabby. And then she calls for Anthony. And then she calls for AJ. And then it's those 13 people that surround him, right? And they're standing there, and you're going to see they're all around him. They are relentless in what they're yelling and screaming. From his standpoint, this is like, what is happening? What world did I just step into in which there's this group of drunk kids, drunk teenagers, who they want to say kids, I get it, but you saw those pictures. They're all bigger than Nick. Nick's smaller than he was then, right? But he hasn't grown any. He's just shrunk more, right? But he's not a big, fit guy, right? They're screaming. They're chanting, right? And at that point, yes, Nick outnumbered 13 to 1, reaches in his pocket, finds his pocket knife, opens it up, and stands there with it. He doesn't brandish it, no, but he doesn't hide it. He's standing there with it. His belief at that point is, I don't want to use this. I don't think showing it to him is going to help. But if something happens, I need to, I don't know what's going to happen. So he's standing there with the knife. And as he's standing there with the knife, Riley Madison is right in front of him, and she pushes on him. And you'll see that in the video. And then next to her, who's blocking him from his people, is Madison Cohn. She takes her right hand, and she pushes his left shoulder, and he has to go back. She pushes him back. And while all this is going on, the group of drunk teenagers are screaming, chanting, yelling. The numbers are getting bigger. They come over towards him. All right? They push him again. They block his path. And this is the, the same. That's what it looks like. You're mute. You're looking up river to see where your safety is. Behind you is deeper water. You've walked in that direction before. You appealed to reason, and they said it doesn't matter. They're up in his face, right? And Madison Cohen's pushing and pointing at him, right? And you stand in there. He's got the knife in his right hand. He doesn't use the knife. He's standing there while they're pushing and pointing at him, right? And when he does that, all of a sudden, that's when Dante Carlson gets violent, right? He's predisposed for violence, I submit to you. That's the entire purpose of the gaslighting, of getting the crowd there, of yelling with the crowd, of getting it all jacked up, is Jawan Cohen. wanted to record a viral video in which some old man was getting beat down 
and he was going to get it on tape. He created that world. He put him in that world. I object a lot of this is argument, not summarizing. Stay, please focus on what you anticipate the evidence will show. That's what the evidence is going to show, right? Dante Carlson has told you before, and he'll say, it doesn't matter, right? At that moment, that's when Matt, or that's when Nick Mew raises his left hand to protect himself. He's raised it before to call for help. I think I missed it. He raised another time to call for help a second time, and now they're crowded around him in his face. He raises his hand to protect it, and that's when they get violent, right? It's a push, not a punch. It's a push to protect himself, not a punch. The evidence, you'll watch that video. You might watch it 20 times. It's not on the video. There's no punch on the video. She's standing there yelling, and when she's standing there yelling, there are two people between her and Nick Mew. He's got the knife in his right hand, right? It's not on the video. There's no physical evidence. She says he punches her with his right hand. He's got the knife in his right hand. There's not a mark on her. You're gonna see from John Schultz, his video. He spoke with her right then. He's right in her face. He's got a body cam. You'll get to see the body cam of her face and she, not a blemish on it, not a mark on it doesn't support that he punched her. Third thing, multiple evolving stories. Listen to what the witnesses say. Who really says is there a punch and what position were they in to say it? Because here's what they said before. Quentin Carlson, he told the police, she said he was punched, she said she, he punched her, but they said it was a slap. So everybody else initially said it was a slap. Gabby, one of the witnesses says, he smacked her with his left hand. She's consistent with he raised his left hand. Uh, Mr. V Alexander Vang, one of the high school kids, says he hit her with an open hand with his left hand. AJ, he says he saw him pull her hair, which nobody's going to say. That's just wrong. Nobody's going to say anything along those lines. Dante, the person who laid him out after he said that, spoke with the police. And initially what he said to the police is he saw, I saw... Mew make a swift motion to Riley Madison. Then he says, I saw Mew make a motion towards Riley Madison. Then he says, I saw Mew make a swift motion to Riley Madison. Then he says a fourth time, swift motion, Riley Madison. I don't know what he's going to say when he comes up there now, but what he said before isn't a punch, and it wasn't to Madison Cohen. That's when the violence begins. Right? They attracted the crowd. They moved in closer. Now, one of the things you're going to want to ask, and we will ask that, is when this happens, this group of 13 is around, and the old man gets knocked, and he's down in the ground. Listen to the video. Is there anybody in the group that says, whoa, this is out of hand? No. You'll hear when he gets knocked on the ground, the volume goes up. The cackling and the laughing goes up. And the videographer pushes people away to get in closer to document the beatdown as well as he can. This isn't somebody that's just taking a video on the side. And then again, we move around. Dante Carlson is confident enough to still have the beer in his hand while this happens. Mew's response is in self-defense, right? People come at him, and he makes a quick, short jab motion. He believes he has to use the knife because he's outnumbered. A.J. Martin, once. Riley Madison, once. Dante Carlson, twice, but he only has two stitches. Isaac Schumann, once. Dante Carlson, once. When they come at him, he gives a quick jab. They back up. He doesn't lunge for them. He doesn't follow them. He doesn't recklessly swing it around. They come at him after they gave him a beat down, and he jabs up. When even Brandy Hart, I think, you're going to hear from her, right? When Mr. Trough, as he asked her questions, when people attacked you, he responded. She agrees with that. So what happens is pretty much all on video, right? 
at the end, the judge is going to read you that jury instruction similar to what he did about credibility. And how much of credibility is going to play a part in this trial is going to be up to you. You guys are the finders of fact. You decide what happened. But I'd submit to you, it's all on video. Pretty much know what happened because it's on video. All right? So we can talk about credibility. Nick spoke with the police, right? He told them he was afraid. He told them he feared for his life. He told them he was acting in self-defense. He also told them, I don't really remember anything. And he lied to the police about the knife. He did. He lied about the knife. It was his knife. He brought it. He was outnumbered. He believed he needed to use it. The truth is, he used it because he was surrounded by that angry mob and he was afraid, right? They gave him every reason to be afraid. When their attacks stopped, he walked away. When they stopped, kept coming at him and every one of them coming at him, right? Away. He responded like a victim of trauma response. You'll hear from witnesses in his group who will say he looked like he was in shock. He was white as a ghost. From his perspective, right? He had just been attacked by an angry mob who was trying to kill him, and he, he, got his way, he got out of there. So as he walks back, he still has fear, right? It's not something that just goes away. That fear is deep inside of him at that point. And as he walks away, he wants nothing to do with the group that just attacked him. He wants nothing to do with the knife, and he tosses it up onto the shore. Maybe not the best decision. Maybe not how he should have responded. But he was suffering from serious shock and trauma at that time. That's what he did. It's not going to be a contested fact. He looks back to his group, right? And they'll say that he's wide-eyed, he's white as a ghost. Um, remember, he'd just been repeatedly hit in the head, pushed down into the water. His body continued to respond in that way. When he walked away, he knew he'd done some quick jab motions. He didn't know the extent of anyone's injuries. Did he hear them yelling? Sure. They'd been yelling for two minutes, screaming and yelling at him. He had been in trauma at that point. He didn't know what the yelling was about. He didn't know that anyone had died. Maybe he should have. Okay, fair enough. But in that situation, would you expect him who'd just been attacked and responded in just short, quick jab motions to know the extent of everyone's injuries? They go back, and everyone's like, Waiting, waiting, waiting. Traffic on the river pretty much shuts down, and they wait there. When the police come by and kind of basically move everybody along, his group moves along to the exit. He's got his hat and his sunglasses and his shirt on, just like he did at the start of the trip. Right? He's been in shock. He'll tell you he was cold. So there's really, these are the three things that you need to think about, right? One. What? I don't think it's going to be a big mystery. It's on video. And I hope that that's helpful to you. Because the facts, I don't think, are going to be very contested. Two, you are going to be asked, what did Nick believe? Right? He told the police, and he'll tell you, he feared for his life. In that moment, against that group who were violent with him and knocked him down, he feared for his life. Right? The video evidence supports this, right? And I'd ask you rhetorically, what other reason is there? What other reason could there be? They came at him. He, he was in fear. He responded. The last question, were his beliefs reasonable? I don't want to get belabor the point about the law. Right? Can't find it right away. But it's from his viewpoint, right? From his standpoint. The belief may be reasonable even though mistaken. In determining whether Nick New's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what a person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in Nick New's position under the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. So what do we know that might help you to decide that, right? We know we walked away and they followed. 
We know he tried explaining to them, and they said, it doesn't matter. We know they told lies about him to incite the crowd. We know he knows that those were lies, and he was watching as this crowd gets louder and more intense and bigger. We know they cut him off from where he wanted to go back up to his wife and his friends. We know that somebody else that was watching, who is kind of like Nick, a little bit younger, about the same fitness level though, and when that person, Quentin Carlson, sees what's going on, his first thought is, there's something bad that's gonna happen to that old guy. We know he was surrounded, we know he was outnumbered, and we know that this environment was white for violence. That's the, violence, that's the environment they carry. And we know that Nick is fragile. He believed he was fragile. This is somebody who went through open heart surgery within a couple of years. He didn't have fitness. They attacked him, kept attacking him, and they gave him every reason to believe they weren't going to stop. Were his beliefs reasonable? This is Isaac Schumann. I'm sure he is a wonderful man, wonderful human being. We're going to hear a lot about him. But in this moment, on this day, on that river, when he was drunk, he tried to strangle Nick. That, his hands that, were on his throat. A picture's worth a thousand words, chat. There you go. Pushing up against Nick Mew, and Nick reaches out as he's falling back. That is what Nick did. His belief at the time, when he's being strangled after being constantly attacked, was he needed to get out of there. And the only way that he could do that was with his knife. He believed his life was in danger. And we submit to you under those circumstances. That's what The end of the trial. We're going to come back up here, right? We'll be back up here and we're going to ask you to return a verdict of not guilty on all counts. The judge will tell you on that last day, he'll tell you the law. If you can reconcile the evidence upon any reasonable hypotheses consistent with Nick's innocence, you must return a verdict not guilty. Again, just one more time. The judge will tell you, if you can reconcile the evidence on any reasonable hypothesis consistent with Nick's innocence, you must do so. You must return a verdict not guilty. Only reasonable hypothesis in this case he feared for his life. And that belief was not unreasonable. They created that world to get that environment. In that world, he believed it in that moment. And that's reasonable, because anyone in that situation would believe the same. So at the end, we'll ask you, your duty. In a moment, we will hear from the state's first witness, uh, members of the jury, members of the gallery. If you want to st stand and stretch, you may. We are not going to take a recess. I'll give the attorneys a moment or two to reorganize their tables. Yeah, just push it up against them. Oh, yes. Oh, can somebody move the um, easel out of the way? Right, is everyone ready? 
All right, members of the jury, we are going to start the evidence. Uh, if you would like to take notes, you may take out your notepads. Uh, please don't allow the note taking to distract you from carefully listening to the evidence, however. Mr. Anderson, who is the first witness? State uh, calls Stephen Kaufman. Can you spell the last name? K-A-U-F-M-A-N. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, please come forward. And stop right there, face the clerk, raise your right hand, she will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Stephen Kaufman. And how do you spell your last name? K-A-U-F-M-A-N. And um, do you usually go by Steve or Stephen? Steve. Steve, what do you do for a living? I'm the owner of River's Edge Campground. What is River's Edge? River's Edge is a campground and, and tubing, you know, wedding reception facility. Okay. And where is it at? Uh, the exact address? No, just is it in uh, Somerset, the township? Uh, we're in New Richmond. Okay. And um, permission to approach? Yes. I'm handing it to Mark to 25. Does that appear to be a map of the route tubers take from your campground? Yes. And permission to publish, Judge? Any Wait. objection? Objection. All right, you may. You need to admit also. Any, Any objection? objection? No. 25 is received. Yes, I <laughs> So the, the arrow on the top right is that where your campground is located that is correct and is that about where it's pointing where campers or i mean tubers sorry enter the river just it'd be just to the right or upstream of that arrow so the arrow would point about where um our bridge is and so just to the right more in this map it it shows a little island there it'd be right next to that island okay do you want to actually just come circling down here Okay, thank you. And, uh, you see the arrow marking Hideaway? What's that? Uh, that is another campground and tubing facility. Is that a common place where tubers will stop if they leave from your place? Yes. And is there, what's there for, like, why do tubers kind of stop there? Is there each bar? Um, they have a bar there, yes. Okay. And then uh, is the exit where tubers get off of the river identified on that map? It is. And is that about where that arrow is, a little off? Um, no, that's about correct. Okay. And that, you see where that arrow is that says incident location? Yes. Are you familiar with that location of the river also? I am. And does that bridge, that 35 bridge, have another name that people call it? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Have you heard it referred to as the Sunrise Bridge or no? I have, okay. because there's that. a, well, there's a campground that used to be called Sunrise Park, and okay. so um, that's why they call it that. All right. And um, and then the, the exit is the Village Park exit? Correct. This whole river route, is that in St. Croix County, Wisconsin? It is. If you know, how many tubers about would you get on a typical nice weather Saturday in the summer back in 2022? River's Edge that day we had approximately 12 to 1,500. Oh, on, on July 30th, 2022? Um, that particular day, I thought your question was on a nice oh. weather Saturday. Okay. But I don't know the exact number for that day, but I, I'm believing it was in the 1,000 range. Okay. And when they, when tubers rent, do they rent tubes from you? They do. 
And do you norm, do you, would you normally see families, is it known to be kind of a party scene, family scene, mix? A little mixed. Okay. River's Edge really strives for the, to get as many families as possible, but yeah, we get mixed. Okay. And um, do, when groups tube together, they, do they often tie their tubes together? Correct. Do you guys sell pre-cut string for tubers to do that? We do. And you did back in July of 22 also? Correct. About how long does it take to tube from the start to the exit? It takes about two to two and a half hours on a normal day. Of course, that can fluctuate with river levels and the speed of the water. Um, and that would be without stopping. Okay. So it depends on how fast the current is. Correct. And then it depends on how long and how often people stop. Correct. And do you happen to know about how long it takes to tube from the 35 bridge to the exit? It's about 30 minutes. Okay. And how about from the hideaway bar to the 35 bridge? You have similar time. It is, you can see on the map it's about similar distance as well. So say 30 to 45 minutes for both of those. And were you working on July 30th, 2022? Yes, I was. And at some point, did you get word of an incident on the river? I did. Do you remember what you were doing? I was uh, on my way to the exit just to check on my staff and check on... Um, you know, we uh, collect the tubes from the tubers and just do a normal check-in. And um, Mike Cappers happened to be there at his bus stop and, and told me about it. And so you guys, for both, and Mike Cappers is the old owner of Hideaway? Correct. And so you guys would both, tubers would go down through the river, either through your place or through the Hideaway, and then both, all of you would pick up at the village park? Correct. You have buses going back and forth? Yes. And um, where did you go then once you heard about it? I went to where he told me the, the incident had happened. And so I was on my little moped scooter and I drove to the incident. What was the scene like when you got there? Uh, there were a large police presence and an ambulance. And um, calm, orderly, chaotic. Um, I wouldn't say it was chaotic. Um, people were moving at a rapid speed, but it was it was seemed organized. Did were tubers still coming through? Um, no, we had directed everyone to get off at the hideaway location. At that by the time I got there, we had already had people uh, directing people off of the river. And is that something law enforcement asked you to do, or did you just? figure you should, if you remember. Um, I think it was a little of both. Okay. And at some point, um, did you get a description of the person who had stabbed people? Um, I did. Um, when I got to the scene, um, I um, ran into a, a, a couple who I assumed were husband and wife and asked them what what happened what was going on and they said they were tubing with their children a little upstream from them they heard some uh, shouting and by the time they got there this had happened and they don't know exactly what had happened there's a gentleman that they said was you know middle-aged man that, that left the scene at some point did you get a photo of the person who was alleged to have been done the stabbings that was going around? I did then, so maybe 15 to so minutes, 10 minutes later, then um, Mr. Cappers texted me a photo that had, I don't know where he got it from or how he got it, but said this is a, this, a picture of the person. Did you forward that photo on to um, your staff? I did, yes. And did you also have a friend with you that day? 
Um, I did. I was, he wasn't with me, but um, he was at this uh, location when I got there. So we what were, was his name? Carl Schilling. And then did you either give or show him a photo, the photo? Uh, at that time, no. Because we didn't have it yet. I had left, okay. left before I got the photo. Did you send it to him at some point, if you remember? I don't remember. Okay. You might have, you might not. Might, you're right. Your friend's name was Carl Schilling, the one that was in the area? Yes. Okay. Are you aware that whether Carl or a staff member later alerted law enforcement to somebody matching the description at the Village Park exit? I am. Was that Carl and one of your employees? Uh, correct. And, and I should have clarified, Carl and an employee, two different people. Correct. Because Carl's a friend, not an employee. Yes. Okay. Do you guys, um, I forgot to ask this before, do you rent tubes for just people and also for like cooler tubes? We do um, rent a, a cooler tube. It's just another tube with a, a basket or a space for people to float. Okay. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Carl Schilling, I want to ask you some questions about him, okay? Yes. Was he the guy with the baseball bat that went hunting for Nick Mew? Uh, I wasn't with him, so. Okay, but you heard about that. You're what? That he grabbed a bat and went hunting for Nick, right? Uh, I heard that he had a, a bat, yes. Okay. And that at some point, while oh, holding that boy. bat, he confronted Nick Mew. No That's wonder Nick Mew tried to run away. Head, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I want to ask some other questions just about the riverway, okay? Yes. Um, the, you own some property, uh, correct? Yes. But the river itself, that's public space, agreed? Agreed. Um, everyone, oh, Jesus. If, if once you're on the river, anyone can use it, correct? Of course. No one has more right to be on a, the river than anybody else, right? No, sir. You agree? I agree. Um, and certainly no one has more claim to a particular space than anyone else, agreed? Agreed. Um, You've heard the expression, stay in your lane, I would imagine? Yes. Um, and roads have designated lanes, is that right? Yes. Um, and you would agree that there are there's certain responsibilities to do certain things in a particular lane, right? Sure, yes. Um, the river, there's no designated lanes, are there? No. Um, sometimes it's, everyone's going in the same direction, hopefully. Correct. But uh, as far as lanes and designated hmm. spaces, it's a bit of a free-for-all, right? It is a natural river. And it's a water. It's a water. river. Okay. There's no rules. The water will guide you where you need to go. Sure. But the people that are on the river and have the ability to move amongst themselves on the river, they're free to go wherever they want on the river, right? Yes. And um, sometimes there might be some groups that are more dominant than other groups on the river, right? That happens? Um, Checked on relevance and speculation. Is it staying on form? It's vague. Can you be more specific? Sure. Are there, you rent tubes to lots of different groups, right? We do. Uh, you, as you said, uh, some are uh, perhaps younger teenagers, young adults? Yes? From six to 106, yes. Yep. And some are uh, grown adults in their 40s or 50s, correct? Of course. Sometimes you rent to a group of two people, right? Yes. Sometimes you rent to a group of six people. Correct. Or 10 people. Yes. Um, and it all depends upon, there's, so there's different sizes of different groups, correct? Yes, sir. And in your experience, have sometimes there have been some groups that have been larger and lou louder than other groups? Sure. <laughs> um, and sometimes there's other groups that might be quieter than other groups, right? Sure. Maybe depending on the group that you're at, you might have different goals or objectives for the day, correct? Correct. I'm sure, again, and you're not encouraging you, but you're aware that there might be some groups that their goal and objective is to go there and get drunk, right? Sure. You're aware of that, right? I am. 
And then there might be other people that are just there to enjoy a peaceful day with their friends, right? Yes. And sometimes these groups interact, correct? Correct. Um, you would agree that the larger and the louder groups don't have any more right to be in a particular place than the quiet groups, do they? No. Um, do you give any messages that to the renters of your tubes to say like, look, if you see a loud and uh, a large loud group, you need to back away and give them distance right away. No. Somebody, individuals have the right to be there just as much as everybody else, right? Correct. So on the river, it is simple as does Mike make right? If you're just larger and louder, you get a right to that spot or not? I wouldn't think so, no. Yeah. Those are the only questions, thank you. Mr. Anderson, do you have anything else? Since we're asking hypotheticals, I guess. If some, nobody owns any of the river, it's public. Correct. You, you also wouldn't want somebody harassing another group. Don't sound like a condescending prick like that. It doesn't sound, that's not, that doesn't sound good. You know, I guess I'm asking you kind of any question. Bro. Tubers? No. Nothing else. Mr. Nelson? Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. You're free to leave. Is he still under subpoena? Real quick, guys, we're gonna stop because we just got we got to break in the witnesses here. But uh, Duncan Idaho says sometimes everyone's gotta take a beating. Sometimes, you know, yeah, channeling back our uh, channeling back our Kyle Rittenhouse. And does he have a Rittenhouse attorney? Yes, Corey Sherfisi, the bald guy that helped Mark Richards. Uh, he was second chair. Is in this case as well. The Duncan Idaho says, uh, Isaac Schulman, the 2022 winner of the 2024 uh, FAFO Awards. Very true. And then uh, Duncan says, everybody's got to take a strangling now and then, right? Yeah, I know. Just got to let them strangle you. It's what happens. And then Debbie J for $49.99. Let's go, chat. Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. So glad you are streaming. I'm only on day four, which is ahead of you, but this trial is so intense. I know. And guys, um, so what's going to happen is we've got this today. We're going to do like day two, three, and whatever on uh, the weekend here. We're going to catch up with this. Um, we've got George Kelly too, though. And um, we can watch George Kelly tomorrow. Uh, I've got access to the AM and PM courtroom feeds. Um, the courtroom is actually recording this trial they just don't have the bandwidth to stream it, which I think is weird because they could just put it up on YouTube. But whatever, um, it's like it's it's like it's like uh, it's like 4K quality. It's really good. I looked at it, so we'll be looking at that um, tomorrow because they don't put up the end of the day until the day's over. So we won't be able to watch today until at the afterwards. So, um, but we will be taking care of that. Just wanted to let you guys know. So thank you again, though, Debbie, and we're gonna keep chugging along here, guys. Um, I forgot to mention at five o'clock I have to step away. I have a uh, phone call with a uh, with uh, uh, locals is calling me or r Rumble, so I got to take that real quick. But I'll be I'll be here running the stream. So just want to let you guys know you might not see me right around five. Let's keep rolling here. Yes, sorry, I was yes. He's really yes. yes. All right, thank you. <clears throat> This is just a blown up version. Do you want me to just write 13 on it or put a separate sticker on it? So just, the 8 by 11 is 25? Or 25, I'm sorry, yes. Make, mark the blow up as 25A. Yeah, we, we can take care of that <clears throat> perhaps later. All right, who is the next witness? Uh, so he calls Ryan Nelson. Uh, Mr. Nelson, please come forward. Stop right there. <laughs> Take a little closer. Uh, turn, face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Judge, before we begin, we have an agreement on a couple exhibits. Okay, what's the agreement? The agreement is that exhibit two, the video that, of the, the main video would be admitted as well as the individual frames, which is marked exhibit three. Is that correct, Mr. Trophy? 
Yes. All right, so exhibits two and three will be received. And then um, we have an agreement that now, before we start taking testimony, we'll publish exhibit two of the video. You're going to play the video? Yes. All right. Uh, members of the jury, you're about to see the video that they have been referring to. Um, please uh, pay attention. Please listen carefully. Here we go, chat. The money shot already. Uh, parts of it may be difficult to hear. Uh, the video that you're about to see is evidence. So you may consider this along with the other evidence during the struggle. Mr. Can we just a little bit? Yeah, we've just turned down a bank or two over the monitor. Okay. Did you, nothing happened. It's up. Did the lights go down? No. Uh, they did over there, maybe. Oh, no, try a different bank. How's that? Okay. Everybody see? Okay, I think that'll that'll do it. What is he on? Oh, we're gonna slow this down, chat. We gotta slow this down to our speed. What is he on? Whoa! 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 <laughs> what? Get away from us! What? What's going on with He's on camera. Guys, let's go. Yo, your new iPhone got that good quality. What do you say? You got that good quality. Yeah, yeah, Now they now it's clear 
They were completely fucking with that guy. Oh, he the lady comes up. What's going on? He said he's looking for girls. He's a pedophile. He a pedophile. Pedophile. You know, um, they thought this was a fun and games fucking with a guy. Then they wanted to fight. And then listen to ah, listen to the squeaky squealed voice of that. This isn't real. This is this real. This is real. This is real. Yeah, they're not stopping to help anybody. They're just squealing like little girls. I mean, let's let's go back to that. Like this is yeah. Is this real? Yes, this is real fucking life. You played fuck fuck games and somebody fucked you back. Just listen to this. Like, not guilty. Not guilty. I didn't know how bad this was. Not guilty. Not guilty, chat. I love how the prosecution painted this, and now you just hear these guys acting like fucking assholes. Like, not guilty. Hey, that's not bark! That's not bark! That's not bark! That's not bark! Man, we know Isaac Leak, Isaac bleed real good, like. We do know that. No, I'm not Isaac! There's Isaac in the water. Spreading out. Oh my god! Oh my god! This isn't real! This isn't real! Pussies. Not blood, re! Yes, no stalker child. It is your blood in the water. Enjoy the coroner's office. Mr. Anderson, or Mr. Smestad, I'm sorry. How embarrassing. Can you say your name for the record, please? Ryan Nelson. And how old are you, Ryan? 18. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in the trades. Oh, I didn't say he's a bro. Are you a drywall installer or something? On yeah, the drywall finisher. Um, where do you live? Oh, still water. You're too white to be a drywall installer, man. You're stealing jobs from some Mexicans out there. That's not cool. Were you familiar with the person named Isaac Schumann? Yes. How did you know him? Uh, he was one of my best friends. How long uh, were you best friends with Isaac? Uh, since middle school. Uh, do you recall uh, the day of July 30th of 2022? Yes. Were you with Isaac on that day? Yes. Were you with him when he was killed? Yes. How old were you back on uh, July 30th of 2022? 17. Had you finished high school yet? No. What grade were you in? Uh, summer going into senior year. On July 30th of 2022, had you made some plans to uh, spend time with your friends that day on the Apple River and near Somerset? Yes. Um, what was the plan? How did the day start? Um, well, we texted the night before and made plans to meet up and I'll go tubing on the Apple River. Where did you meet up at? Uh, Stillwater High School. Um, who was in your group that day? Uh, me, Isaac, Owen, Jawan, Landon, Alex. Judge, if I can approach the witness. Yes. All right, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 62. Recognize that? Yes. Can you tell us what it is? Um, it's a picture of every, all my friends over there. Uh, fair to say it's a composite picture? Yes. Uh, are those pictures of you folks from the river on July 30th of 2022? Yes. <clears throat> are those photos from after the incident with Mr. Mew? Yes. Does that explain the looks on your faces? Yes. Your Honor, permission to publish to the jury, I have a blow up. Any objection to 62? No. All right, 62 is received. Go ahead and publish. The other side might be easier because it doesn't have the paper. Uh, 
uh, when you got to Stillwater High School that day, was the plan to all ride together over to the Apple River? Yes. Who drove? Uh, Alex Hang. I'm going to have you look at Exhibit 62 there, uh, picture holding on to. Can you identify the folks in the picture for the jury? Um, from left to from left to right. Alex Vang, Juwan Carfield, Owen Pelquin, uh, me, Ryan Nelson, Landon Wire, and then Isaac Schumann. That's Isaac in the, the hat on the right? Yes. Is that what you uh, were all wearing on the river that day? Yes. You may have already answered this, but who drove from Stillwater over to the Apple River? Uh, Alex Vang. Uh, and you all went in his vehicle? Yep. Uh, where did you go first? Um, um, we went right up to park where we got the tubes. Uh, River's Edge, I think it's called. Uh, you rented tubes there? Yeah. You remember how many tubes you rented? Um, one for each of us and then one more for our stuff, I believe. All right. Um, when they give you the tubes, are they connected together or do you connect them together there? Uh, you had to get a, a wire, like a twine to connect them together. Did you do that? Yes. Did you make sort of one big raft out of your tubes? Yes. <clears throat> um, after you rented the tubes, did you get on the river right away or were you hanging out in the park? Uh, no, we went right straight to the river. All right. Do you know what time it was when you got on the river? Uh, not exactly. Probably roughly around noon. Um, Judge, if I can approach the witness again. Yes. Tubes. Do you remember who paid for them? Uh, no. All right. Um, do you remember getting a receipt? No, uh, no, I don't. All right. I'm showing you that's marked as exhibit 27B. You take a look at that, and specifically look at the back side. Whose name's at the top? Uh, Alex Vang. Uh, who's who's that? Uh, he's one of my friends. He's on the river. All right. Um, at the bottom, there's a time for when. You rented your tubes. Can you tell us what that is? Uh, 1239. All right. You didn't see this that day at all? No. I don't remember. <clears throat> Your Honor, I'll move to admit that exhibit. I don't know if there's any objection to it. Any objection? Well, there's no foundation, Judge. Sustained. We'll, we'll wait till. That's fine. <clears throat> Once you got on the river, uh, did you folks bring drinks with you? Uh, yes. And a cooler of some sort? Yes. Um, what were you drinking? Um, beers and seltzers. All right. You were 17 at the time? Yes. Um, do you remember how many beers you had? Um, I personally had about three to four. Um, were you or other folks in your group? Um, Smoking marijuana? Yes. <clears throat> Was Isaac Schumann smoking any marijuana? Um, I don't think so, no. Um, as you're going down the river, did you eventually have contact with the defendant, Mr. Mew? Yes. Do you know where it was when you first saw him? Um, where the incident happened. Sure. Were you near any landmarks that you can remember? Uh, a bridge. Uh, what was he doing when you first approached him? Um, well, he first approached us. He was snorkeling by our tubes. Did he... Did you ask him what he was doing? Uh, yes, multiple times. And what did he tell you? Uh, he didn't say anything. Did he ever tell you he was looking for a phone? No. Do you remember, ever remember hearing him saying anything about looking for little girls? Uh, no, not me personally. All right. Um, ultimately, did you approach your group? Yes. You were here um, when we played the video in the court right before your testimony? Yes. Um, the first part of that video, uh, did you see Mr. Mew running up towards your group? Yes. Um, is that 
the legs of a couple of your friends in that video, the first few seconds of that video? Yes. That's that's your raft of tubes? Yes. Um, as Mr. Mew is running up uh, on your group, did he say anything about why he was running towards you? No. Did he say why he was grabbing onto your tubes? No. Um, were you able to see on the video that he was reaching towards where the legs were of the two people and the tubes that you can see in the video? Yes. Um, did he make physical contact with those folks? Um, he didn't make physical contact with me. So I know. Did everybody bail out of their tubes once he ran up? Yes. <clears throat> did you have some concern uh, when you saw him running up and grabbing onto your tubes? Yeah, a lot. Did he say anything at all after he grabbed onto your tubes? No. Uh, were you sitting or standing uh, in your tube when he ran up? Uh, sitting. Did you get up? Yes. Why? Uh, I was scared. Do you want to, were you trying to get away from him? Yes. <clears throat> Did you say anything to him? Uh, yes, we asked him what he was doing and we told him to leave multiple times. All right. Uh, fair to say you were raising your voice and yelling at him? Yeah. Like we saw in the video? Mm -hmm. Uh, did you threaten him in any fashion? No, not at all. Did you hear Isaac Schumann um, threaten Mr. Mew in any fashion? No. Did you yourself have any kind of knife? No. Did you see anybody in your group with any kind of knife? No. Is it fair to say you're calling him some names? Yeah. Why are you doing that? Um, we had no idea of his intentions, and we asked him, and he never, ever stated them. At some point, were you yelling uh, for him to get away? Yes. Did uh, another group on the river come over to investigate what was going on? Yes. Did you know any of those people? No. Did you see where they came from? Uh, just the other side of the river. Uh, were they adults or were they kids? Uh, young adults. Older than your group? Yeah. Once this other group came over, uh, was it women or men, if you remember? Um, I believe two girls uh, approached first. All right. And what did they do when they approached? Uh, also told them to leave. All right. Did he leave? No. <clears throat> um, once these other folks came over to uh, tell him to leave, did that change your level of concern with what he was doing? Uh, yeah. In what way? Um, it was a little confusing and also concerning why he wasn't leaving. He could have just removed himself from the situation like everyone asked him to. Did, did he ever tell you why he wanted to stay near your group? No. Was it fair to say that at some point you and your friends uh, were laughing at him? Yeah. And why were you doing that? Uh, we thought he was just really weird, to be honest. Do you remember how many folks were in the group that came over to help you guys? Uh, no. <clears throat> do, you, do you know how many times you told uh, Mr. Mew or you and your group told Mr. Mew to leave, leave you alone? More than I can count. All right. Your Honor, we're going to show st uh, still 1219 from exhibit three. Exhibit three. <clears throat> Guard for two dollars saying he found out. Yes, he did. And then Debbie. Sorry. Squizzard for two dollars. He found out. The Debbie for forty nine ninety nine. Oh. Let's go, chat. Thank you, Debbie, so very much. Thank you, really. I truly do mean it. Thank you so much. Um, his response is not normal. I'm guessing he was impaired, and while the taunting was not right, his response wasn't either. And and the the issue is, I think ultimately it wasn't the taunting, but now he's like, I'm trying to find my phone. These kids are acting like assholes. Looks like one of them's holding it. Now they stole my goggles and stuff. So now I got to fight to get that all back. And it's like, yes, had Nikolai been a little more straightforward, like, hey, here's what I'm doing. Cool. Had those kids not been fucking dickheads, then I'm like, oh yeah, here you go, sir. Nope, that's our phone. I don't. That's not yours. You know that that's. Kind of how it goes. A bunch of assholes collided that day. 
So let's keep going, chat. Are we going back to the the stabbing? Yeah, we are. Oh, we're going to slow this down. Hi, right, Ryan. Do you see the picture that's on the screen in front of you? Yes. That's still, still number 1219 from the video. Can you tell us who's in this picture? Um, Isaac Owen. And then uh, I can't quite tell who that guy on the left is. All right. Um, is Isaac, which one is Isaac? Uh, purple shorts. Uh, is he wearing a hat or not wearing a hat? Wearing a hat. What is Isaac doing in this picture? Um, holding Owen. It looks like uh, arm towards Owen and looking at Mr. Mew, maybe. Uh, the person on the right, who's that? Owen Pelican. Uh, he was also in your group? Yes. Uh, what's he doing at that point? Um, it looks like saying something to Mr. Mew. All right. Um, where were you when that, if you remember, where were you in location to this picture or in relation to this picture? Um, I believe I was near Juwan and Landon. Back behind the tubes? Yep. Juwan's the person taking the video? Yes. Now we're going to show still number 1279. All right, Brian, this is uh, still frame 1279 from the video. Um, what does this uh, picture show? Um, Isaac with his hands raised. All right, does he have anything in his hands? I uh, know. Um, who's that in front of Isaac? Uh, Mr. Mew. Isaac's hands open or closed in fists? Uh, open. Can you tell or do you remember what he was doing with his hands at that point? Uh, no, it just looks like he has his hands raised. I'm going to show you now still 1297 from the video. Uh, who was in this picture? Uh, me. That's you on the left? Yep. Holding onto the tubes? Yes. Uh, Mr. Me on the right? Yes. Is that Isaac, uh, part, part of Isaac's arm in that photo? Uh, yes, looks like it. All right, do you have anything in your hand in this photo? Uh, no. You're there, uh, referring to your right hand, your left hand you can't see, right? Yeah, I didn't have anything in my left hand either, though. All right. Showing you still frame 2596 uh, from the video. Can you tell us uh, what that is? Uh, me. All right, and uh, on the right, who's that, if you know? Uh, I don't recognize her. Is that one of the folks that came over to uh, yeah. help These you out? These kids are all fairly Do you have anything in your hands there? In decent no. shape. Um, at that point, uh, you appear to be smiling? Yeah. While you were having this argument with Mr. Mew and trying to figure out what he was doing, um, were you able to see his face? Uh, yeah. Did he look to be frightened? Uh, no. What smiling. kind of facial expression did he have? Let me rephrase he was in very good shape. Um, while you were having this, this argument with him, did he, were you able to tell whether he had anything in his hands? No. Uh, did you ever see him holding a knife? No. Fair to say the video shows that the incident happened pretty fast. Yeah. Um, while the two women are talking to Mr. Mew, um, what happened next? What did he do? Um, he punched one of the girls in the face. You remember which one it was? Um, I believe the blonde one. I'm not 100% right. sure, though. And looking back at the photo that we have up, which is 2596, is that where you were standing when he punched the, the blonde woman in the face? Uh, relatively, yeah, yeah. So fairly close? Yeah. <clears throat> Prior to uh, Mr. Mew punching the blonde woman, had you seen anybody strike him in any fashion? No. You didn't see anybody punch him? No. Uh, when you say he punched the lady, is it possible that he was flailing his arms to protect himself or something along no. those lines? It was looked like he struck her definitively with his right hand.
after the blonde uh, woman was punched, uh, what happened next? Did someone... um, I believe her friends tried to come to her rescue and pushed Mr. Mew to the ground and hit him and pushed him again. You saw that? Yeah. Uh, did you see him in the water? Yes. Um, do you remember how many times he was hit when he was in the water? Um, two or three maybe, I believe. All right. Um, at some point, uh, did he get on his hands and knees? Uh, yeah. Uh, what happened next? Um, he got up swinging his knife and stabbing everyone. All right. At that point, did you know that he had a knife in his hand? Um, yeah, well, once I saw, I didn't know until I saw the person standing next to me who had his whole stomach cut open. And Yeah. The person who got his whole stomach cut open, was he holding any kind of knife? No. Was anybody, did you see anybody in the, the group that came over to help you um, have any kind of weapons? No. Did you, what did you do after you realized that uh, one gentleman had hit, had his uh, belly slit open? Um, I was in shock. I didn't really know what to do. I tried to, to tell my friends because I'd make sure they were seeing what I was seeing. And then I went and stood in our tubes. You left the, the general area? Yeah. Um, were you aware that uh, Isaac had been stabbed? Um, not for like a minute. Eventually, did you realize that, that Isaac was down? Yes. Did you see him in the water? Yes. Did you see a wound on his body? Yes. Uh, where was it? Um, his upper chest. Was he bleeding? Uh, yes. Um, ultimately, did you um, and then the rest of your group or, or attempts made to help Isaac get to shore? Yes. Who did that? Um, Owen and Alex. All right. And where were you at that point? Um, I was still standing in the tubes. Were you injured at all? No. Did you ever lay a hand on Mr. Mew? No. After you realized that folks had been stabbed, did you see what Mr. Mew did? Uh, no. Did you see where he went? Mm-mm. Is that a no? Yeah, no. Sorry. We're going to show you uh, still frame 3177. Uh, can you tell us who's in this picture? Exactly. That you know of? So scared. Um, uh, the only person I recognize is myself. All right, you're in the blue trunks in the middle. Yes. Is this the point to where uh, Mr. Mew had punched uh, the blonde woman? Yes. Did you take a step forward? Uh, yes. Uh, why'd you do that? Uh, in her defense, to help protect her. All right. Did you end up doing anything to help protect her? No. Um, I think you already testified some other gentleman took care of that. Yes. <clears throat> Whereabouts on her body did uh, Mr. Mew punch the blonde woman? Um, I believe in her face. <coughs> Say that again. In her face, I believe. At some point then, um, did you go to the area where um, Isaac was being uh, laid on the, the shore of the river? Yes. Did you, the rest of your group also end up there? Yes. Um, did anybody call 911 if you know? Uh, yes. Do you know who did that? Uh, not, I think a lot of people did. I don't know who specifically. Were there some folks that stopped to render aid to Isaac? Yes. Was one of them a nurse? Yes. Uh, what kind of aid did she give Isaac? Um, I wasn't over there. I'm not sure. All right. Did you see anybody doing CPR on him? Uh, I wasn't close enough. All right. <clears throat> At some point, did the police arrive on the river? Yes. They waded through the water to get to where you folks were? Yes. Did you speak to the police officers? Uh, after, yes. Up on the shore? Yep. Um, at some point, uh, was Isaac taken off the river? Yes. Um, was he ultimately put in an ambulance and taken to a hospital? Yes. Did you follow? Yes. Um, you know, do you remember which hospital they brought him to? Uh, is it Lakeview? 
Mr. Right. Water? When you were at Lakeview Hospital, did you speak with an officer there as well? Yes. Even though this incident happened uh, almost two years ago, uh, do you still remember the face of the person who did this? Yes. Do you see him in the courtroom here? Yes. Can you point him out and say what he's wearing? He's wearing a black suit, black pants, brown shoes. Your Honor, ask the record to reflect the identification of the defendant. Next question, please. please. Nothing further. Mr. Senator Officer. That wasn't very thick. Judge, the nine second that, video is on exhibit two also, which I, the state also moves to admit. I don't know like why they had that guy testify that did not Proceed. help him at all. Go ahead. Look at okay there. Um can you break? I just don't want it on the can you yeah. well, that was right. jury shouldn't see my screen. Okay. It's weird. So Mr. Nelson, you um provided an interview uh, with a clear. Monitors off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, with an investigator, uh, Dittman, do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And to start with, one of the things that uh, Officer Dittman was interested in was how much alcohol you had consumed that day. Do you remember yes. that? Mm hmm Okay. And uh, you told him you weren't going to get in any trouble for anything. He just wanted the truth, right? Yes. Okay. And you indicated to him, uh, well, he initially asked you, if you guys were drinking any uh, any hard alcohol, right? Yep. And you said that you weren't. Yep. That's a lie, right? Uh, no, I myself was not drinking hard alcohol. You guys brought Tito's vodka and water bottles and were doing shots on the river? Uh, I wasn't, but other my friends were. Just... Okay. And you were asked um, about Isaac drinking that day, yes. right? And you had told Officer Dittman that you think you had three or four drinks. Yes. And you said, I think Isaac had about the same. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that Isaac's alcohol level was a point, almost a point two two? Object, Your Honor. Hold on. What? Now, guys, this this is Corey Shirafasi. This is the guy, same guy from Cal Rittenhouse. If you recognize him, and uh, yeah, this is yeah, a point two two. So these guys were sloppy drunk and pretty belligerent. Sounds like. Come on up. You know what? Fine. Did you know he was extremely intoxicated? You could you can get around this other ways. I know I know why you brought the point two two. You're showing that he, look, guys, he was drunk AF. How would this kid know his friend's alcohol level? It, he doesn't, but he, he does know that his friend was completely fucking blitz. And he can bring that up and say, Well, do you know your friend was trashed? Well, no, no, no. Corey Chirafasi's trying to get in the whole point two two thing because the jurors know, wow, that's drunk. It's a smart way of doing it. Sneaky. I like it. And not really sneaky, just good. Ruled, uh, Mr. Chirafasi. Ooh. Mr. Nelson, are you... That got over... I'm surprised that got overruled. Well, all to be fair, though, did you know X? No. They could argue he has no knowledge of it. Well, then it's his job to say, I don't know. If he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Maybe he does know. Are you aware that um, Isaac uh, Mr. Uh, blood alcohol concentration was a point two one nine? Uh, no, I was not aware. Okay. But you say that you guys were about the same, right, in alcohol. Well, I, I was just a guess. He asked me to provide an estimate. Oh, and I did. I wasn't that's... I track of other people's drinks. That's, see, now that's where he gets it. That's a good job. Right, but you provided that your estimate and yeah. his, your drinking and his drinking were pretty close. Yes. So you were impaired, yes? Um, slightly, yes. Okay. And yeah, you were asked uh, and whoops. gave some answers regarding your initial contact with Mr. Mew. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, and you had said, if I have it right, uh, he snorkeled by us and didn't say anything. Yep. Okay. 
your interview with Detective or Investigator Dittman, you indicated, yeah, so this weird guy, he was wearing a snorkel at first, came up to us and was kind of like talking to us, and we were a little weirded out, right? Yep. So which one's true? Um, I don't remember him saying anything. Okay, so this, when did you give the statement to Investigator Dittman? Um, was that the one at the bank or the hospital? How many interviews did you give? Two. When did you give them, if you remember? Um, one was on the bank after the incident, and then one was at the hospital. Is your memory better back then about what happened, or is it better today? Um, I'm not sure. Well, do you remember things that happened closer in time to the event, or as more time goes by? Um, I think I remember. See, that makes you sound like a dumb... Well... He is an idiot, and this this is just helping reinforcing he's a moron. Remember them both the same. Now he sounds like an idiot. Now he sounds like he's definitely an idiot. So if something happened two years ago, you would remember it the same as if you were giving that statement a day or two after. Uh, yeah, I would try. Okay. So you don't recall him saying anything to you guys, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. But you all were saying something to him, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. You didn't tell that to Investigator Dittman, did you? Um, I don't remember. You left out the fact that you guys started taunting him and tormenting him. Right? After we told him to leave, yes. Well, talking about... You just said you remember everything. No, you don't remember. The first time. Not the second time that we've seen the video. The first time we haven't seen the video for yet. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that incident? Yes. Okay. You don't tell investigator Dittman about what you guys were doing to Mr. Mew at that point, do you? Uh, no. Why not? I just didn't think it was relevant. You didn't think it was relevant and this person that you're saying uh, did all these things to your friends wasn't relevant that you had contact with him earlier in that day? It was the, It was like minutes, seconds before. It wasn't like earlier in the day. It was around the same time. Right, and you didn't think it was relevant that you would inform him that you were taunting, you guys were taunting Mr. Mew and calling him names, right? Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number two. I'm going to play you a short video and tell, ask you if you remember the video. Okay. okay. I'm going to keep the screens blank until you tell us you're ready. Does that mean you're ready or you're yeah, sorry? <laughs> yes, we're ready, Judge. I apologize. Uh, the nine-second video on Exhibit 2. Trying to. Grown man trying to have sex little girls! What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so he's, he's walking by you guys. He's not right on top of you there, is he? Uh... He was previously, but not that in that moment. No, he's not. So, your friend Pretty just didn't distance. get that on video? No, we started taking a video once he was being weird towards us. We wouldn't have videoed him just out of the blue. So when he was just walking by there, and your friend just started saying, you can't have sex with little girls, right? Uh, that was after he was snorkeling under our tubes without saying anything. Where do you tell... Officer Investigator Dittman that he was snorkeling underneath your tubes. By our tubes. Oh, so by your tubes, not underneath your tubes. I misspoke. I apologize. Okay. So he's snorkeling by your tubes. Ah, he's and, getting up. And you guys start calling him. Oh, hit fucking Agent 47 showing back up. Dusting it off, getting ready to put the screws to him. The, the, I'm sure this kid thinks he's smart and knows what's up. He is, he is walking into a trap. Names. No, we asked what he was doing and who he was, why he was there. Because we found it a little weird that he was not in a tube like everyone else, but he was snorkeling right by our tubes. And so we asked him what he was doing. He never said anything. So then uh, we started calling him names, yeah. Okay. And the purpose of calling... You don't know him, do you? No. The purpose of calling a grown man that you've never meant a raper. That wasn't me. Okay. The purpose of 
Um, do you know why that was said? I uh, know. It's so weird. To your knowledge, so had Mr. Cockfield ever met Mr. Mew before? You know, Chad, no. it's so, f- okay. so weird. You think it was funny? It's so funny and weird. Uh, no. Did you ever tell him to stop? No. Okay. And shortly after this is when yeah. Mr. Mew moves toward your tubes. Is that right? Yeah, when he runs at us. Okay. And your statement to... Um, Investigator Dittman is that Mr. Mew was standing over your tubes. You guys mm-hmm. just don't, you gotta understand yes. the social okay. cues. Do you know why he came? Chat, you just don't understand the social cues here. Come on now. Came up to your tubes? Uh, no. Was Juwan Cockfield holding a camera at that time? Uh, yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. And to your knowledge, Mr. Mew walks. He comes up to your tubes, then he walks around the tubes and actually starts to walk away from you guys, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're saying, your group is saying, get away, go, and he's doing that, right? Uh, not really. You just said he was walking away. But he didn't leave. He didn't walk away. He just walked a couple of steps and then stayed near. And you guys follow? No. You don't, you don't advance toward him? Your group doesn't advance we toward him? We stayed by our tubes. We're as you saw in the still frames. I'm standing right next to our tubes. You showed us the still frame, or you we saw the still frame involving mm-hmm. Isaac Schumann, right? Yeah. When he's got his arms up in the air like this, right? Yes. He's not standing next to his tube, is he? Um, I, I don't know. He might be. I, he might be able to see the tubes in the picture. I can't remember. He's confronting Mr. Mew, isn't he? No, he was, had his hands up, raised. He was telling him to leave also. There's no confrontation at that point i guess what i'm trying to ask you here mr nelson is yeah you guys told him to leave so he moves away from you then your group moves toward him that's true right um i don't think we really he left i i you keep saying he leaves and i don't sure he never really left can you just bring it i'd rather just see the video I'm going to show you, I'm just going to play for you a really short portion of the video that you've already seen. Okay. Okay? And I want you to tell me, when you watch it, if it appears to you that Mr. Mew is walking away from your group. Okay. Okay? I'll wait. Keep it out until he's ready. Hold on a second. Yeah. All right, guys, I got to step away. I'll see you guys in a little while. Yes, we're ready. So at 27 seconds, Mr. Nelson, I want you to yep. watch this video first for a brief moment. On camera, guys. What do you say? So he he's walking away from where your tubes are. Is yeah. Is that true? Yeah, but at the end of the video, you can see him turn his body back towards us, and then I assume he walked back towards us. You don't know if he did. We could watch the rest of the video and find out. Well, we will, but your group walks toward him, right? You keep saying that you yeah. don't, and it's clear they're moving in his direction, yes? Yes. Okay. And you're doing, you're moving in his direction because you've testified that you're scared, right? We, our tubes, we're all still right around our tubes. That's our property, we're not, like... How come you don't go around him? You're, you've said that he could... What do you mean? Hold on. You said he could leave, right? Yeah. You could have walked away. You could have walked away, right? Yeah. You didn't walk away either, did you? No. And and that river, you don't, anybody can use that river for being honest with one another, true? Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't have any more responsibility to walk away than you guys do, does he? No. Nope. Okay. And if I said to you that at some point, this other group starts coming over, is that right? Yes. Okay. 
And at that point, are you guys calling him a pedophile? Uh, I think, yeah, we were previously. You were previously calling him a pedophile? Like, in the, yeah, we were shouting it, and that's, I think, why they came over. Okay. And I'm sorry, you said you believe that's why they came over? They heard us shouting, so I sure. believe, yeah. And certainly, to you, shouting pedophile could be something that would draw people's attention, right? Yes. So, you don't have any information that he was looking for small children, do you? No. Okay. Um, you'd agree, calling somebody well, a pedophile isn't the um, same thing as calling somebody sorry, a, hi, Vivian, can you hear me? a jerk or a hole or something like that, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. That's like, you're, you're, you're telling somebody... You're telling people this guy's now? looking to have sex okay, with small children. Okay, sorry, I couldn't hear you for a second. My apologies. Right? I didn't say that. Um, wait, That's what a pedophile um, is, though. You know, right? Yeah. Okay. And you guys, so, to a man you've never met before, no, I can't. have no information about, people in your group are hold yelling on, on the on river that he's a pedophile. Yes? Yes. Audio. Okay. And by your own admission, you believe that draws the attention of another group of people um, to come over. Yes. Okay. And do you remember okay, I can independently, hear, I, can. I know you've seen the video now, mm -hmm. do you remember independently, um, he walks away from you guys kind of over to her, doesn't he, like mm -hmm. walking toward you? Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And she, to your recollection, immediately tells him, go, get your fucking ass, go. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. So, in terms of what you can see, she doesn't wait to find out what's actually happening either, does she? Uh, no. Right? Yep. She just, she jumps into this and is yelling him for, yelling for Mr. Mew to go without knowing anything about what had happened based on the contact you had. Yes. Okay. And you describe her to police as, quote, getting in his face. Is yes. that fair? Yep. What do you mean by that? Uh, she was yelling at him to leave. Well, you could yell at me to leave from here, right? Yeah. She was right. She was close to him, right in front of him. Okay, so I won't, I won't invade your space, but yeah. what you're, in your definition of getting in someone's face is getting close to them? Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And is it in part based on the volume of her voice, too? Yeah. Okay. So if I said to you what you observed is this woman, her name is Madison Cohen, okay. but she is close to his face yelling at him. Is that yes. fair? Yes? Yep. Okay. And at that point, he's alone, to your knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that, that's a yes. That's yes. Right. Sorry. And initially, there's six guys in your group. Yep. And you say that two females come over. Yes. Okay. More people come over as this continues on, is that true? Correct. Okay. So at one point, it's at least, if you know, it's at least 10, 12 versus one, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And do you, see, well, can I ask you this? Would, do you believe that the situation was getting, that the temperature was rising in terms of the situation as time was passing? Um, maybe a little, yeah. Okay, so it started out maybe here, and as time is going, the blonde shows up, it starts getting more and more heated, is that fair? A little, yeah. Okay. So in a situation where it's getting more and more heated, would you agree that a physically putting your hands on another person in that situation could be a show of aggression? I don't object, Your Honor, that calls for a conclusion. Sustained. Did you see Madison Cohen, the blonde girl, mm -hmm. put her hands on Nick Mew? No. Did you see her at any point move him or redirect him with her hands? No. Okay. So you had said um, that him, his presence here made you afraid. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to show you, do you recall ever saying personally mm -hmm. in your contact, you got 10 No, I don't remember saying that. So you're not saying that you said it? I don't remember saying that, no. Okay. Do you recall other people in your group? Do you remember hearing that being said? No. Okay. To you is a statement, if I said to you, you got 10 seconds. Is that something that you would take as a show of aggression? Objection, Your Honor. It's the same objection. It's what? It's the same objection. It's called it's Can you play the video? So I need you to listen to this, okay. um, Mr. Nelson, and it might take more than once, but I want you to listen to hear if you hear someone in your group saying that, okay? I'm going to play from the 35 second mark to the 45 second mark. I think it happens at the 39 second. Or the Please tell us when you're ready for the video. Ready. What do you say? Did you hear that? No. Okay. Can you play it at least one more time? What do you say? So you hear somebody say you got 10 seconds, right? Yeah. Okay. And that, based on, that's not Mr. Mew talking, right? No. Okay, so somebody in your group is saying you've got 10 seconds. Uh, yeah. Okay. And at that point, are you still frightened? Uh, just more weirded out now. Okay, so it goes from frightened to weirded out. Yeah, he moved away from us a little bit, so it was more it was more scared when he ran at us and grabbed our tubes, and then it became more like, who's this guy? I'm more weirded out. Okay, did it go from then weirded out to not really afraid at all? Yeah. Right. Um, there comes a point that you've seen on here where your group has kind of surrounded Mr. Mew and you're all taunting and pointing at him, is that right? I want to object, Your Honor, to the, the term surrounded. I think it's a mischaracterization. Come on up. <laughs> Objections overruled. Mr. Shroff, so you would agree that your group had moved around him, and you watched the video, you're all pointing at him, taunting him, calling him a predator, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So is it fair to say at that point the fear has left you? Um, yeah. Okay. And are you, do you personally feel more confident because the other group has come over? Um, maybe a little. Okay. So, fair if I said strength in numbers. The more people that are around, the more confident you're becoming. Is that fair? Um, I just, I guess I lost fear that he was going to do something weird to us, yeah. Okay, and the other people coming over helped you lose that fear? Uh, yeah, we could, we didn't, yeah. Because you had a lot of people around, right? Yeah. Now, can I ask you, um... I don't want to get too close to you, but you say that, if this is fair, Madison Cohen, blonde girl, yep. is, is she in his face when she gets punched? Um, I would say she's at the same distance she was the whole time, so yeah. Okay, so she's in his face, right? Sure, yeah. Would you say that's in his personal space? Um, maybe. Okay. So, based on your recollection, she... He may be standing in his personal space yelling at him, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, you, can you tell me, you said on direct examination that Mr. Mew punches her in the face with his right hand. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. You believe that to be true? I believe he struck her with his right hand, yes. Okay. Are you aware that at the time that he would have struck her, he was holding onto a knife? Uh, no, I was not aware. 
Okay? If I told you that fact is true, would that change your opinion? No. You would still say a man who's holding a knife struck her in the face with his fist. Uh, yeah. His, the knife is not in front of his fist. Okay, so you think this is how, you think that the knife is in his hand and he comes across and punches her in the face? Yes. Okay. And do you remember, if, would he have hit her on the left or the right side? Uh, the right side, I believe. She fell down to the, towards the left. Or... Okay, so you I, believe... This, sorry, I'm getting confused. I, left side, I guess. Okay, so you believe he's holding a knife in his hand and he punches her in the left side of her face. Yeah. Okay. Do you see any marks on her? Uh, no, I didn't. I don't think they had time to be marks or really check before everything happened. Okay, but you don't, my question is, you don't see her have any marks on her face, true? No, I didn't check okay. for marks. Okay. And you say that she goes down, <coughs> is that right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to show you, okay, do you have an JPEG or that? 2644, the, the photo of it, okay? Okay. So now, at 2644, you're, I think you've testified you're moving forward. Yes. Okay. So we've gone from 2644 to 2653, right? Mm -hmm. That blonde is the girl that you said was punched in the face and went down, right? Yeah. Okay. Would you agree she's holding on to her drink? See that? Uh, yes. And can you go one or two more, Aaron? Looks like she's got a cell phone tucked in her yeah. phone trunks on the top. Yes? Yes. Okay. You'd agree she doesn't go down, right? Um, if that was the woman that was punched, then... Well, she's the blonde, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you'd agree now looking at this, she doesn't go down? Yeah. Okay. You believed that she did go down, though? Uh, yeah, maybe it was just a stumble on... I guess I'm not sure. My attention was quickly averted to Mr. Mew after that. Okay. All right. Um... You had provided information or a statement to Officer Didman. Um, he had asked you about any contact um, that Isaac may have had with yeah. Mr. Mew. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And I think you had indicated that you never saw that happen. You never saw Isaac make physical contact with Mr. Mew. Yes. Okay. Um, have you seen, you watched the video, right? Yes. So now you're aware that Isaac has his hands around Mr. Mew's throat? I didn't know that he had his hands around his throat, no. You didn't see that? No. Okay. Is that something that you saw? No. That, he was, he was, uh, that was pretty late. That was, I think Isaac was the last one stabbed on video. And so by that time I was focused on the guy next to me who was, I just lost him cut open. Okay, but I guess my point is, initially you say you didn't see Isaac make contact with yep. him. You see on that video somebody with their hands around Mr. Mew's throat, right? Yeah. And you don't know if that's Isaac or not? Uh, no. We can watch it again and I can tell you what I think, but I don't... Is he wearing a bracelet, like a gold bracelet on his wrist? I don't remember. Okay. Now, um... Can I ask you this? No, you'd agree with this. On that video, nobody is stabbed until Mr. Mew is punched in the face and knocked in the water, right? You'd After, agree yeah. Okay. And it, so you would agree that the people that are injured with the knife, that all happens after Mr. Mew has been knocked in the water, punched, 
slap, push, right? Yeah. Okay. And you don't, um, you don't attack, Mr. Mew, do you? No. Okay. And he doesn't do anything to you, does he? No. So, Ryan, the, the prophecy is asking you about Mr. Mew walking away from your group of tube, your group of tubes after he had run up on you. Yes. Did he walk down river or up river? Um, back up towards that other group that. Yeah. When he, I'm asking about when he first stepped away. Down river. All right, and is that the direction your tubes were going? Yeah. Uh, so he was between you and the exit? Yes. <clears throat> um, you had indicated that you took, you were holding on to the tubes. You didn't want to lose the tubes, obviously. Yes. You, um, you paid money for them. Mm -hmm. um, was the natural flow of the river carrying your tubes towards him? Yes. <clears throat> A lot of questions about your memory. Um, you, you do recall giving your statements to the police, right? Yes. And would it be fair to say that this has been so long now that your statements to police were given when your memory was probably a little fresher than it is right now? Objection leading. Sustained. Is your memory better now? Mr. Tropicy had asked you if your memory is better now than it was back then. Yes. All right. would it, do you think that you remember things better when you first talked to the police or now or the same? I think you said the same. Um, probably right? the same, yeah. All right. Uh, do you recall uh, talking to the officers about the names that you'd called Mr. Mew? Um, no. All right. You might have done that? Maybe. <sighs> But it refresh your memory to uh, see a portion or hear a portion of what you told the officers with regard to calling him a pedophile? Sure. And the point is, Mr. Trop, he asked you why you left out the fact that you called him a pedophile. Do you remember yeah. that? Uh, in fact, you didn't leave that out? Your Honor, can I approach the witness to show him a digital copy of the transcript of this interview with Investigator Dittman? Sir, the transcript that was provided by Mr. Nelson. Okay. For what purpose? To refresh his memory as to what he told Investigator Dittman about what they were calling him, calling Mr. Mew at the time. You say I had trouble remembering? I lost him. You did. Mr. Tropicy indicated that Mr. Nelson, Ryan Nelson, did not tell police that they were calling him a pedophile, uh, which I intend to refresh his memory to show that he did tell the police that at the time, immediately after the, the incident. Any objection? If he needs his memory refreshed, he can do that. I, I, Judge, I don't know if I missed it either, so. Yeah, I'm not hearing the magic orders is, I guess, what I'm driving at. This is going to help him refresh his memory. It's two sentences. I think you're missing the point. All right. I'll move on, Your Honor. Uh, Did, is it possible that you told Officer Dittman or Investigator Dittman something back then that you don't remember now? Yes. And it would being able to uh, see a transcript of what you said refresh your memory as to what you told him? Yes. How can I do it, Your Honor? Um, on what issue? I don't know. Sustained. Oh, Objection sustained. Can we approach, Judge? Yes. <laughs> Continue. Mr. Ryan, do you remember telling an officer uh, what kind of names you were telling, calling Mr. Mew at the time? Uh, no. All right. And if um, I approach on him, he's indicated he doesn't remember. You have to ask him what will help him remember. But do you, if you saw a transcript of your interview with the investigator Dittman, would that help you remember? Oh, yes. Now you can approach. <laughs> Show your digital copy of the transcript and just read. Portion. So no, you all read it yourself. That help you uh, remember what you told the investigator, didn't it? Yes. What did you tell him about the names you were calling investigator? I said we were all calling him a pedophile and saying this is weird and he needs to get out of here. So that wasn't inf was that information you were trying to keep from the police? No. <clears throat> At 
At that point, were you aware that there had been a video made by John Cockfield of the incident? Yes. Were you aware that the police had it? Yes. At the time that uh, Mr. Mew ran up and grabbed onto your tubes, um, did he grab them in an area where some of your friends had their legs positioned? Objection yes. Sustained. Where did he grab your, the, your tubes? Um, where we were sitting. Um, was that, were there people in those areas? Yes. What parts of their bodies, uh, if any, were close to where he grabbed? Uh, legs. Did you know whether or not he was trying to grab onto their legs? Objection. No. Mm -hmm. Sustained. Mr. Chirafasi had asked you about someone in your group saying you got 10 seconds. Do you know who that was directed at? No. You know who said it? No. Uh, you heard, did you hear it on the video when he played it for you twice? Uh, yes. Did you hear Mr. Mew being described as the person who had 10 seconds? No. <clears throat> Mr. Chirafasi had asked you about whether you had less fear of Mr. Mew once uh, the other folks came up. Uh, Why did you have less fear? Um, I believe they were going to help us and help us get him away. Were these other folks kids or adults? Young adults. After uh, the blonde woman, Madison Cohen, is punched, uh, did you take the time to check to see if she had any injuries to her face? No. Uh, you have seen the video of the of the incident here today? Yes. You had indicated earlier, I think, that everything sort of happened right after that, right? Yes. Did you see where Madison Cohen ended up, where she ended up going no. after she was punched? No. You did? Did you, um, you indicated that you, you thought she fell down and then on cross-examination you said that she may have just stumbled backwards. Do you, do you remember specifically whether she fell or stumbled backwards? No. But as you sit here today, is that what your impression of what happened was at the time? Yes. Uh, Mr. Trofsky had asked you about uh, Madison Cohen, the blonde woman, being in Mr. Mew's face. I'm going to show you a slide. Still, it is number 2593. Tell us when you're ready. Ready. Uh, do you see that uh, still frame from the video? Yes. Is this what you were referring to? Yes. Is that where she was uh, located when he punched her? Um. I believe so. Do you remember where you were um, in relation to this photo off off screen uh, at that time? Um, to the left side of the women, the right side of Mr. Mew. Um, when she was punched, did you hear an impact? Yes. <clears throat> When you gave your two statements to the police, both one in the riverbank and one at the hospital, did you tell them that he had punched her? Yes. All right. Nothing further. Mr. Shoffsey? We would agree that when Mr. Mew moved over to go talk to Madison Cohen, you could have all just went right by. Yes. But you stayed, right? Yep. And you were asked about just the 10 seconds, right? You got 10 seconds. Yes. You didn't believe that was directed at you, did you? I didn't hear it. Okay. Would it make sense to you that it would be directed at Mr. Yu based on what was happening? I'm not sure. I don't know who said it. Okay. And you said that your fear was reduced once more people came. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So um, tell me if this is fair. When it was the six of you, you had, according to you, some level of fear. When it became 13, you didn't have any fear. I had less fear, yes. Okay. And you knew th through this whole thing he was alone, right? Yes. Okay. So at one point you know it's 13 versus 1, yes? Yes. Okay. Now, you said that you remember Ms. Cohen falling, and now you, you think that might be incorrect. Is that true? Uh, falling or stumbling. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That you say she was punched and she fell. Some sort of falling or stumbling motion, yes. I believe that's true. Okay. You'd agree that she never drops her drink in that picture, right? Yeah. And her phone doesn't leave her body, right? 
Yeah. Mr. Nelson, I appreciate your time today. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. You can step down. Is he released from his subpoena? No. No? Okay. Is there a coordinator here that can assist him? All right. Uh, she'll give you further instructions about what to do and where to go. Please leave the exhibit with the attorney. All right. I'd move for the admission of 62. Any objection? No, sir. 62 is received. Are there other exhibits that need to be addressed? Uh, 25 plus 25 admitted? Yes. All right. Members of the jury, uh, it's 4.30, so we're going to break for the day. Um, in a moment, the bailiffs will take you out. Uh, I do have a few instructions for you before you leave. One, uh, no discussion about this case with others, not amongst yourselves, not with the lawyers, not with the members of the public, not with the media. Uh, do not talk about the case when you get home. I know it's going to be tough, but you have to decide this case only on the evidence presented at trial, and you cannot be influenced by others. Uh, second instruction, uh, no independent research or investigation. Uh, do not go to the Internet to look up things that you think may be helpful. Do not visit the site. Do not look at maps. Uh, again, the attorneys have to present the evidence for you to decide here in the courtroom. Uh, third, uh, do not watch or read any media reports or social media posts about the trial. Um, frankly, you're getting a front row, front row seat to this entire trial. Anything that you see on the Internet uh, could be misleading. Uh, the final instruction is come back tomorrow morning. We need you all at 8 o'clock before we can get started. The bailiff will give you uh, new directions about the entrance. You're not going to come in the main door. There's a new door that you're going to come in. Uh, he will give you the instructions about uh, where that door is. Uh, there's also special parking for you in the morning. Uh, please use it uh, so that you are uh, segregated from the rest of the public. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. Chris, could you move the easel out of the way? Well, guys, that kind of ended perfectly on time. So, um, neat thing. Wow. Holy cow, we got a whole bunch of party people here today. I'm here now, guys. We're outside the presence of the jury. Uh, the attorneys are present with Mr. Mew. Mr. Mew. Uh, is there anything for the record, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Um, tomorrow, there was a number of witnesses um, who were properly served out-of-state witnesses through the interstate subpoena process. They wouldn't, I think there's six that wouldn't meet with us. Um, so we expected them here at 8 a.m. today. They were not here today. So the victim witness reached out to them and essentially said, if you're not here tomorrow, there might be a warrant issued. So my understanding is most, if not all of them by now, have agreed to come here at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I don't think we're going to be ready for them by 8 a.m. tomorrow, but because they- That's a big us, indicator they don't to want to come to court. Sorry, my request would be rather than, I mean, Your Honor could tell them to just wait here every day or bring them in outside the presence of the jury, stress the importance of being here when either side asks for them to be here and inform them of the potential consequences if they don't. So tell me what you want me to do. Just, I'd, I'd like your honor. Tell I'd them, like them naughty, to hear naughty. Honor, that a subpoena is not discretionary, they have to be here. With all of our witnesses, we give them the courtesy of trying to plan when they're going to be here. Okay. These people refused to meet with us, so they didn't. So they should have been here yet today. They weren't. So I'd just like, Your Honor, to stress, if they're not here, when it, either side tells they them They don't have here, to meet with okay, So they're not going to that. testify tomorrow. No. They're going to be scheduled for a different day, and you want me to impress upon them the importance of honoring a subpoena? Yes. All right. Yeah. And expect them to come back on a different day? Yes. All right. I know specifically one of them is one we probably won't call, but I know defense will. Judge, would you consider, I, I don't care how you do it, um, making them sign a bail? I'd have to research it. I, I think you can do that. I'm mean, not telling you what to do, but I think you can do that. And my concern is if you impress upon them the seriousness of it and they don't come back. I don't think you can do that in Ohio. Are missing, um, some of which I want. Um, so I, I guess it's just an option. Yeah. I mean, what, what is it that you need before you can have them testify? And why not have them testify when they're here? It's, it's going to result in, I mean, we try to present a linear story to the jury. It's going to be it's heavily out of order. I frankly don't want to screw up, change how we present the case because witnesses who are supposed to be here aren't here. But it's your case. You present it how you want. Um, if you're not ready for them tomorrow and they're here, uh, I will do what I can within my power uh, to have them come back on a different day. But if they're not here, your options may be limited. Yes, understood. Same with you, Mr. Shroffesey. Un understood. I, I guess at that point I would ask that you issue material witness warrant. I, mean, I wouldn't be as forgiving um, 
So, all right. And, and, yeah, if I could yes. Kind of, at least Mr. Carlson, if he's here tomorrow, I'm going to serve him with our subpoena as well, and we're not going to release him. I have no reason to believe he's going to come back. So I'm done. I feel a little bit bad about it, but I'm going to work past that he stay here until I need him. I have the power to do that, and he's given me no reason to do anything other than that. He's a Minnesota resident. Yes, but once he's but he's been served by the state, right? And, but once he's here, I can serve him here in person. Which yes, crosses state lines. So right. both of those things crosses state lines. All right, so we'll uh, cross that bridge tomorrow. Right. Anything else? No. Okay. Mr. Trophacy? We can just uh, maybe off the record just who are the witnesses for tomorrow. We can do that in a moment when we go off the line here. Um, one thing I just want to comment on is obviously the video and the still frames are going to be an important part to both of your cases. Um, but I am concerned if every witness called is going to be commenting on what they see in the video. Oh, I see this. I see that. Um, the jury is the ones who ultimately get to decide what they see in the video. So to have other witnesses come in and comment strikes me as being more argumentative than anything else. Both of you did it today, but uh, I want that to desist. I want you to desist from doing so. Mr. Nelson. I see there's different ways to use it. Yes. You know, I, I see a manner in which we use it in the future to impeach them. They yes. say X happened and we want to show them the video is say not X. And so I would assume, I don't want to say free reign, but that's an appropriate use of Yes. Yes. And for example, one question that sticks out of my mind is, I think it was with Mr. Nelson, uh, do you see somebody else in the video holding up his hands? Do you see anything in his hands? I mean, the jury can see it as well as anybody else. Uh, so that's the type of question that I think is going to really slow us down and confuse the jury. If you need to use it for impeachment about their own testimony, that's fair game. If you want to question them about what they're doing and what is being depicted of them in the video, that's fine too. But for witnesses to be commenting on other things that they may happen to see in the video, apart from their recollection, uh, outside of the things I've just described, I think would be a misuse of our time. Your Honor, one of the issues with that is that that particular set of questions, that it's going to come up over and over. That's Isaac Schumann, and he can't testify, obviously. So that's why I asked Mr. Nelson if he had anything in his hands. I can't ask him that. I can't ask Mr. Schumann. I understand. Time. I understand. But we can all see it. All right. It's plain as day. I, I assume the same applies for law enforcement. We're not going to ask law enforcement what they see or saw in the video. Within the confines that I've talked about, right. Right. Because otherwise we're going to have, you know, 40, 50 witnesses providing their interpretation and their opinion about what they think happened. Well, those interpretations we'll get to those are personal to them, but they're not relevant to what the jury has to decide. So I just want to stick to the facts, uh, stick to the things that this jury is going to be tasked with doing. Okay. All right, uh, that's all. I'll be back tomorrow and ready to go at 8 a.m. Cheers. All right, Chattel. So, uh, yes, 224 people here watching and two on Twitch. Guys, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Sean, also known as Potentially Criminal. Uh, I am a defense attorney out in the Cleveland area, and we are trying to catch up with the Nikolai uh, Mew trial. And that's because the George Kelly trial, the guy down on the border who shot uh, a um, illegal immigrant, trying to, illegal alien trying to cross the border and mess around on the border, um, they're no longer covering that live. So um, kind of had to do an audible, so we're going to start this one up. Uh, if you guys have questions, please put them in here. I'd be happy to answer them. There's no such thing as a dumb question. And I did want to add, guys, if you are new here tonight, um, we do do a live show every uh, Thursday at 930, and today is no different. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, let's see here. What are we – I mean, some of the topics we're talking about. Carly Russell, the woman in Alabama who faked her abduction and got sentenced last week. Hannah Reed in the Russ trial um, had a bond hearing. Um, Alec Murdoch got sentenced federally. Um, there's a crooked DUI stop out of uh, Tallahassee, Florida that kind of exploded onto the internet. Um, Coinbase is looks like it's going to trial against the SEC, and that's going to be a little rough for Coinbase. Um, Trump has had his bond. He had a little bit of an issue with his bond out of New York for the uh, case involving Judge Engeron, but that looks like it's been fixed. Everybody was panicking and making fun of him, but it's like, it's a paperwork issue. But I'll just show you how easy the paperwork issue was. And then Trump's case out of Georgia, Judge McAfee did deny the dismissal motion that was argued last week. Um, in addition to that, Chili DeCastro did have his bond hearing, and we'll touch on that really quick as well. Um, there might be some other things we'll add to this, um, but that'll be a little bit later tonight at 930. So if you guys are around, I would really uh, recommend you join. I think it'll be a great time tonight. Uh, we do have a lot of questions, though. So, Hannah had a bond a bond hearing. 
So, yes, guys, I actually, and tonight, um, and for those of you who are new, we do an after show over on Locals, um, potentially criminal.locals.com. Uh, we do a show after the 930 show where we get to hang out and have a lot of fun. Um, I was just on with people from Rumble. They showed me a uh, new feature to use using Rumble and Locals together, kind of like a YouTube studio slash, like, it's like streaming on YouTube studio merged together. And it's for Rumble and Locals, so we're going to try that tonight. That's what I actually was uh, on the phone with them with. So, thankfully it wasn't, uh, thankfully it was not um, there. Now, as far as um, doing day two, guys, I actually have a client. Uh, I actually have to get on with a client and actually do like a real phone call. Um, I have a meeting with them tonight. I need to talk with them. So I'm not going to have time I, because we start day two. I mean, we could start day two right now, but it's 530. How long is day two here? Because that's the only issue I have a concern with. Um, we could do day two tonight if you guys want to. Um, I had not planned on it necessarily, but we can. Now, hold on one second. Yeah, we could do that till lunch. Um, why no more ranch trial? Is it because of the cartel? Supposedly people aren't interested. They aren't interested, I guess. But there's a bunch of chats here we need to get to real quick. Ghostry is saying, um, Isaac Schumann's blood alcohol level is 0.22. Does that equal drunk? That's almost three times the legal limit. He wouldn't be able to... None of those kids would be able to operate a, a car. I can tell you that much. Um, Swizgar says for $5, Corey Shiafasi is a Chad. And you guys remember, the bald guy... That's Cal Rittenhouse's attorney from his trial. Corey's a good dude. Um, Mr. Sniper says, uh, Touchy Criminal is telling him to chill because we have his back. No, no, I got it, guys. I got it. We got it all sorted out. Like I said, it was just on Locals. It wasn't the end of the world. I appreciate the concern, though. I, I really do appreciate the concern. Um, KJ gifted five memberships. And Aaron Hack gifted ten. Um, thank you guys both very much for your support. I appreciate it very much. And I knew whoever got uh, one of those memberships certainly is very appreciative as well. Um, now, we get to the ending part of day two. And I was listening in on that. Sure, Fossey did a great job. Made those guys look like idiots. Now, the, the idea about the subpoenas being optional. Subpoenas are not optional. Subpoenas are a court order for you to show up. Now, there are there is the ability to serve subpoenas interstate. Um, there is a, with civil cases, there's an interstate, um, subpoena and deposition. Uh, act where it works for criminal or I mean, civil cases. It works for civil cases. Um, you can also use it to secure it for um, criminal proceedings. So if you do get a subpoena, you need to respond to it. Now, if you don't, ultimately, what can happen? Well, as you heard them say, we might ask for a material witness warrant. And then there's a warrant out for your arrest, and they will go hunt you down and bring you in. And if you guys remember the Theodore Edgecombe trial, that guy sat for a whole week because the prosecutors thought he wasn't going to show up. So he sat in jail for about a week till they got to him. Now, that's, that becomes an issue of, well, if you show up and you cooperate, they won't necessarily do that. Um, and that's, that is where you need to look at the issues as far as what's going to happen and what might happen. These people apparently aren't showing up. Now, that says a lot of things. These are state's witnesses and they don't want to cooperate. I have a feeling they're not very sympathetic witnesses. They're, these witnesses might not be super helpful to the state, and yet they really, really want them. I mean, do they really know why they need them, I guess, is my concern. Um, Twitch chat, good day. Yeah, hi, everybody on Twitch. We got we to, gotta, oh, yeah, guys, we are just blowing up in numbers here. 
Um, the kid with his the kid with his gut spilling out got two stitches. Yeah, well, so. Um, Fat said he was pissed. I recall that witness flat out said I would have cooperated. Yeah. So um, they're probably afraid of incriminating themselves. Yeah, maybe. I, I just think they don't want to deal with it. I mean, these guys live in Minnesota. That's like in another state. I got to go like, I don't want to waste time dealing with it. I don't want to be on TV. I don't want to be in front of everybody. Um, But yeah, guys, we can do day two. Because the uh, George Kelly stuff is not out yet. It doesn't because they're still in trial. So we are not going to see that anytime soon. That's kind of the crappy part. Um, but I do have access to four, like almost 4K quality video. It'll be of the trial. So um, I can do that. Guys, give me one second here um, on that. Because we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and uh, do this. Because I, I, think it, I think it works. I think it's a, you know, if you guys want to see day two, we'll get as far as we can in day two. Maybe like up until you know, lunch and break it. And then we'll do it. Like, we'll catch up more. Instead of using StreamYard, I took a call from Rumble about how you use streaming software. Hey, they want to work with me. So yeah, why not? So you know what, guys, we are going to go right into day two then. Um, but yes, the idea with the subpoenas, you have to show up. Now, I mean, a lot of times you don't show up, whatever, nobody cares. But this case, they might, I mean, Corey Shirofasi's like, put him in jail, judge. I, The person they want, apparently, somebody they really fucking want. So Corey Shirofasi's like, throw him in jail. Um, the idea of having him execute a bond, that's interesting. I'll have to keep that one in mind for the future. Um, I'll keep that in my pocket. That's a neat idea. Can they execute, can, can the judge, can they be ordered to execute a bond where they promise to show up? That's, that's interesting way of doing it interesting way of doing it so uh that's an interesting way of handling that uh so it is very good so how do we get to see the kelly trial well tomorrow tomorrow afternoon we're going to start watching kelly so we'll be watching we'll be watching kelly tomorrow that's how we'll do it so and Nick says uh, subpoenas, lol. <laughs> yes. So we are going to get to see the Kelly trial. We're going to catch up on that. Don't worry. I promise. So, guys, um, we're going to start this up. I've got to go talk to – I'll be kind of AWOL for a bit. i got to talk to a client. So you won't see me or hear from me probably for a good 20, 30 minutes, all right? So um, I will be back in touch with you guys in a little bit. We'll start day two, though. Right meow. And uh, we'll get it going. If I hear any static or something, I'll jump in to try to – I'll try to save it for you guys, okay? So let's, uh. All right, here we go. No, no, I don't. Why does, why does, why do you suck sometimes, YouTube? I think that should alleviate that issue. Three of the witnesses are. Here we go. Uh, we are about to uh, resume the trial. Uh, there are a few administrative matters that uh, I have on my list. Uh, Mr. Nelson mentioned uh, something that he has. Why don't we take that one up first? I judge three things. Um... One is my understanding of the court's order is that when court is not in session, there's no photography, no filming. I just wanted to make sure that that is still the standing order. And if so, if you could remind the media of that. Two is I'm concerned. Uh, we don't have a lot of space here. Things have to, you know, modern age, we work on our computer. I understand people can look at it with their eyes, but I'm concerned if the media is taking photographs or even inadvertently showing my screen by raising up on my screen. So if your owner could make an order that says they A, do their best to try to not do that, and B, if they do accidentally, to just blur it out or something along those lines, I don't think that what's on my screen should be public. I think at least if it's on this desk, it should be work product and protected. Um, 
three is I'm worried about the microphones. I understand that they pick up even when I'm whispering things to my client. If possible, my preference would be that our microphone is on mute unless we are actively cross-examining a witness. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Smestad, anything on those topics? Yes, um, I think, frankly, I've gotten kind of the same feedback that whispering is being caught on the cameras. Um, we also, I think, the media room, the door is open, and we, we managed yesterday with witnesses who are sequestered by putting them in separate conference rooms. We don't want to put them together when they're sequestered. But on a day like today where we have several lined up, we might quickly run out of spaces to put them. So if they could either close the door or use headphones so that th the whole hallway isn't getting the audio from the trial. All right, please have your victim witness coordinator talk to my judicial assistant. Uh, they can speak with the folks in the media conference room to see what can be done about that. Um, as far as the microphones are concerned, I received the same feedback. Uh, I spoke to my staff. So what we plan to do is, is mic the tables uh, unless someone is speaking. Right now you're both speaking, so they're both active. But once we get into witness examination, only the examining table mic will be live. The other will be silent. Um, so that's the plan going forward. Um, I, I just will revisit the, the media expectations because we do have uh, pool uh, cameras and uh, a different videographer on each day. Um, so my rule allows cameras in the courtroom on the condition that there be no photography of the jury, uh, there be no photography of uh, certain victims who do not wish to be uh, photographed. Those will be identified before uh, they get up and speak. Uh, there's no recording uh, while court has adjourned. By adjourned, meaning we're in recess, the judge is off the bench and walks away. Uh, that's what I mean by adjourn. Uh, there may be inter interruptions in the proceedings. Uh, those do not constitute adjournments. So if I'm not wearing my robe and I'm not on the bench, we're uh, not going to be recording. Um, I believe also my media order restricted um, recording uh, what I would consider to be private conversations between the attorneys, uh, between um, the defense uh, lawyers and their client, uh, and conferences up at the bench. Uh, those are private conversations not to be uh, shared with the public. Uh, so there'll be no recording of those conversations either. All right. Um, Judge? Yes. Uh, maybe it wasn't I, the, regarding my computer screen and regarding still photography. Is there any response or is that just? Well, I consider that to be part of the what I just talked about. Okay. Communications at the table. Okay. So I just ask everybody to please be sensible and responsible uh, with their devices. You know, we're not here to pry and to uh, invade people's privacy. If there's problems, let me know and I can revisit the topic. If there's ways that you can um, mitigate uh, viewing of your screen, that might help. To the extent you can, um, there's probably 60, 70 people sitting behind you who have the same view as uh, photographers. Okay. Um, there was a request yesterday uh, during jury selection about um, preventing media access to certain exhibits. Um, Mr. Anderson, did you want to speak more on that? No, Judge, I, and I, I think the only authority is essentially Marcy's law, and it's pretty vague. It just victims' right to privacy. I recognize it's a public trial, so there's no defined definition of that in the case law that I'm aware of. All right. So yesterday, um, the state made a request to prohibit media access and uh, recording of certain exhibits uh, that might come into evidence, in particular autopsy photos. Uh, in my judgment, I have no authority to grant that request. Uh, in fact, I think the request infringes on First Amendment rights. Uh, this is a public trial, and the media have a First Amendment right to report what's happening in the courtroom. Uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court rule allows cameras to record events in the courtroom. Uh, the rules allow the judge to prohibit recording of the jury, as I explained, and prohibits a recording of victims uh, at their request. Uh, that exception, however, does not extend to physical exhibits that are offered and received into evidence. Uh, exhibits are open to the public. Uh, anyone may request a copy. Uh, no legal basis exists to seal uh, from the public the evidence presented in this trial. Uh, and even if it did, uh, the ceiling would apply to the entire public, not just members of the media or reporters. Uh, to tell media outlets that they cannot publish images of evidentiary exhibits from a public trial is, in my opinion, a clear example of what's called 
prior restraint, which is an infringement on First Amendment rights. So I understand people's interest in maintaining privacy. Uh, as a parent, as a human being, I would want the same thing. Uh, but as a judge, my decision must conform to the rule of law. So that's why I'm denying the request. Okay. Um, yesterday, at the end of the day, there was mention about some witnesses that might need to be spoken to. Yeah, um, I did. They're all here, I believe. So I spoke with Quentin Carlson. He assured me he'll be here any day he's told by either side. Um, I think he, he said he got confused because he knew his sons were supposed to come in today. So he thought he was supposed to come in today. Um, I think what we'll probably do is just call him today since he's here actually, although it's a little out of order. We plan to go. Um, so I think that should alleviate that issue. Three of the witnesses are Spanish speakers. I believe we have an interpreter that's available by Zoom. Yes. Um, so I'd ask the court to instruct them to be here Friday when we have that day allotted with a Spanish speaking interpreter. And then there are, uh, there may be, I don't know if there might be a fourth who prefers an interpreter. He was, gave his interview in English, but, and then there's another English speaker um, that was with Nick's group. So what you want me to do now is speak to the Spanish-speaking witnesses with the aid of an interpreter and have them come back Friday morning at 8 a.m.? Yes. Okay. Are they in the courtroom now? No, they're right outside. Okay. Mr. Shroffacy? I think that's reasonable. Okay. All right. Um, please bring the witnesses in. I'll bring the interpreter up on Zoom. Ms. Marine, uh, this is the judge speaking. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, would the witnesses please come forward? No, testigos, por favor, acérquense. All right. Uh, please administer the interpreter's oath. Please solemnly swear. Por favor, hágale prestar juramento a la intérprete. That you will make a true translation. Adjura solamente que hará una interpretación fiel. To the best of your ability. Según su saber y entender. Between the English language. Entre el inglés. And the Spanish language. Y el español. So I hope you die. Y que ampare Dios. Sí, lo juro. Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, please introduce the witnesses to me. So we have... Señor Anderson, por favor, presénteme a los testigos. Um, one second. Ariel, what's your last name? Ariel Chávez. Un momentito, ¿cuál es su apellido? Oh. Arel Chávez. Okay, just got to pull it up, Judge, sorry. So we have um, Ernesto Torres Chávez, and then we y have Alba Torres Chávez, and... Y tenemos también a Ernesto Torres Chávez y Alba Torres Chávez. Ariel Chavez Layet. Y Ariel Chavez. Uh, the interpreter was not able to hear the second last name. ¿Cuál es su segundo apellido, señor? Ariel Chavez. Chavez. Es Ariel Chavez Chavez. Chavez Layet. Layet. Chavez Layet. And then Amanda Torres. Y Amanda Torres. Good morning, everyone. Buenos días a todos. Good morning. Uh, each of you are witnesses in this trial. Cada uno de ustedes son testigos en este juicio. Uh, you have been summoned to appear in court to testify. Y se les ha citado para comparecer en el tribunal a dar su testimonio. By law, you are required to attend. Por ley, ustedes tienen la obligación de asistir. A failure to appear in court may result in penalties. Si ustedes no asisten al tribunal, pueden... Eh, Estar, eh, recibir penalizaciones. Mr. Anderson, uh, when would you like the witnesses to appear? Um, Señor Anderson, ¿cuándo quisiera usted que los testigos vengan a comparecer? For the Spanish-speaking witnesses, so Ariel, Alba, and um, Ernesto, Friday at 8 a.m. Lo, para eh, los testigos de habla hispana, el señor Adel, eh, Chávez y Ernesto, quiero que vengan el viernes por la mañana. And Amanda on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Y Amanda, quiero que venga el miércoles a la una de la tarde. 
You all understand when you need to return? Yes. Es, ¿Entienden cuándo es que tienen que regresar? Sí. 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 Yes. Excellent. Um, Your Honor, this is the interpreter. I just want to make sure that I heard correctly. Arel and Ernesto on Friday morning and Amanda Wednesday at 1 p.m.? Correct. This is the es la intérprete, solo quiero asegurarme que escuché correctamente. Arel y Ernesto, el viernes en la mañana, y Amanda, el miércoles a la una de la tarde. Do you have any questions? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? No. No. Mr. Anderson, do you need anything else? No, thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Trapasi, do you need Señor. Yes. Señor, señor Anderson, ¿necesita algo más? Uh, señor licenciado, ¿necesitan algo más? No, señor. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, you are Gracias a todos. Gracias a todos por venir aquí el día de hoy y se pueden retirar por hoy. Gracias. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. And Your Honor, I assume you need my services on Wednesday at 1? Uh, no. No, we do not. All right. We Thank you one, very much. We have one English-speaking witness. Uh, the three Spanish-speaking witnesses are all on Friday at 8 a.m. Oh, okay. Yes, Your Honor. And just to, for clarification, I didn't hear Ms. Al uh, Ms. Alva Torres being told. Uh, I didn't hear that she was asked to be back on Friday. That's Amanda, correct? No, Alba Amanda. Torres was the Al in the middle, or second from the right. So you need an Is interpreter Friday morning at 8 a.m., correct? Yes. Not Wednesday at 1. Correct. So We're all set then. All right, set. thank you very much. All right. Friday, thank, thank you. you. Bye now. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, is there anything else that we need to address outside the presence of the jury? Um, I have a couple things, Judge. Um, one, we've had a couple victims ask if they are allowed to watch the trial uh, via the streaming. Um, I know they have a constitutional right to be present. It's probably kind of a gray area if they can watch it streaming, um, but I'd make that request that they be able to watch it streaming. I know we often have a full courtroom in the yesterday and again today. So, um, Judge, I guess I understand they have a, a right to be present and watch this. Um, I guess what uh, Mr. Nelson and I are asking is if they're not going to be present so we would know if they're here and they're watching, um, if, if we can get, if they'll disclose what they watched, who they spoke to about it, if they spoke to anybody about it, um, then we, I don't have as big of an issue, um, if that's okay. Any objection? I think it'd be, I mean, we can certainly try to ask them, but I think they could ask on cross too, as long as it's clear that they were allowed to. Yeah. I'll allow it. Um, again, the, the purpose of the sequestration order was to prevent witnesses from conforming their evidence to something that they hear. Um, the statute allows an exception for victims who are allowed to sit through the entire court proceeding. So whether they see it in the courtroom or watch it at home, uh, it makes no difference. Uh, unlike jurors, uh, they're not prohibited from accessing uh, media reports and watching television and things like that. Um, but it is um, a basis for asking questions. Um, and it may go to their credibility if they're being influenced by uh, outside sources. So the request is granted along with the request to ask questions. Is there anything else? A couple other things, Judge. We've discussed, uh, Council and I, about body cam if it's needed, if we want to need to play body cam of a witness for impeachment or another permissible purpose that I think we're in agreement that we just play it without calling the officer to say, is this your body cam or showing it to the witness first and saying, is this your interview? We could just, the parties could just play it. I do not expect there to be an objection to foundation for any uh, law enforcement video. So if we should probably still mark it and indicate what the clip is, but we're not going to object because the videographer or recorder isn't here. All right. What else? Um, one other thing. So. Um, Deputy Raiolo, who is on the dive team looking for evidence, our plan is to get him in this week. Um, he would like to be excused from the second week. It's fine with the state if, it's, if it is with defense. And he's not on their witness list. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. I know uh, if there's something that comes up and he can't testify, but I think we previously talked about the information that that witness had maybe being offered or entered through another law enforcement witness, so I'm sure we can figure it out. Okay. I think that's all I had, Judge. And then um, I think counsel asked if we could just have maybe a really brief recess to talk about 
the first witness. Well, it's almost 8.30, so. Yeah, I guess we can do it on the record. I don't want to act like I'm sandbagging anybody. Um, I, I understand that uh, Isaac Schumann's mother is going to testify first. And the question that I was going to ask and just make sure is we're not getting into any 90404 evidence um, regarding uh, character of the victim. Um, there was no motion on that. Uh, and we've heard nothing of that. And I just want to make sure that when she testifies, we're not going into uh, an area where there would need to be presumably a motion filed. Mr. Anderson, were you intending to go into those areas? No, I specifically instructed her not to say that he's trustworthy or peaceful or anything like that. She's, I'm going to ask about her family. I'm going to ask her about Isaac, show the same photos I showed at opening, have her identify those. Just, I'm going to ask her one question about like what he did for hobbies, to, so he's not this abstract person that the jury has some understanding of who Isaac was, and then what happened on that day. Okay. Well, I'll just state so everyone knows what we're talking about. Character evidence is generally prohibited in trials. There's very few narrow exceptions, and I think the attorneys are trying to identify whether or not one of those exceptions is going to be discussed, either intentionally or inadvertently. I think we're all on the same page, so if something does come up, raise an objection, um, and I can deal with it. Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Mr. Anderson? No. All right. Mr. Strophacy? I have nothing to do. All right. We stand in recess. Let's bring the jury up. This will probably take a moment or two downstairs. It'll we'll probably take a few moments for them to come up. They're still recording. As I stand here right now, we'll do that. Yes. So. And like I said, if the judge is on the bench wearing his robe, we're in session. Okay. I, okay. I just want to make sure I know. You want me to leave? I'll leave. I do not, Judge. I didn't understand it. I was apologize. an email with the answer. <laughs> Again, Mr. Anderson, if there's, you have to tell us what witnesses are not going to be recorded. <laughs> so She has no issue with being recorded last we spoke.
it sounds like they're close by. <laughs> Thank you for being so prompt this morning and to be sworn. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name and spell your name's for record? Alina Hernandez, A-L-I-N-A-H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. Alina, where do you live? Stillwater. And how long have you lived there? Eight years. And do you work currently? No. What do you do? You, what do you do prior for? Um, I owned a salon and spa business for about twenty years. Now you're a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Um, who was in your family? Immediate family. Um, my husband, Danny Hernandez. Um, Alexis, she's twenty-seven. Jacob is twenty-one. And I suppose 17. So um, I want to ask you a little bit about Isaac. What did, what did Isaac like to do for fun? What kind of hobbies did he have? Um, Isaac had a lot of hobbies. He, um, he loved. He loved his family and traveling. We like we love to travel, and he um, he had his own business, and he I had recently started, and he detailed boats and cars. He worked out at the marinas and detailed boats. He started a mobile detailing business, and he loved to golf. He lived on the golf course, and he golfed almost every day. Um, he loved boating, fishing. What his the- friends, his girlfriend. And when Isaac was killed, he was the senior, before senior high school? Yes. Did he have plans for high school? Yes. He, well, he was an honor roll student, and he loved school, and he was going to go to school for engineering. Right, he was hoping Madison. Yes, ma'am. Well, and I'm showing you what's marked as exhibit one. It's three photos. Can you just... Go through them. Actually, first, what are? Can you just tell me what their photos are? <laughs> My son Isaac, his, his junior picture, and then his 17th birthday, his last birthday, and then this one is um, the day he got he bought a trailer for his mobile detailing business and. He texted me and said, Mom, come out and see my new trailer and the dog. And I ran out and he uses for his business. Any objection? What was the number? One is received. The morning of July 30th before he left. Did you know he was going to go tubing with friends? Yes. Um, how did you know that? Well, he originally told me in the morning that he was going to go golfing and with his friend, but his friend had to work. He ended up having to work, so they were going to golf later that evening. And so I was out on the deck having coffee with my sister in law, and he came out and said, Some of the guys are going tubing on the river and I think I'm going to do that until I, we can go golfing. And I said, okay. And the way I said okay wasn't like I was super excited about it. And I and he's like, why? And I said, well, I was going to ask you to pick that up from the airport and I got a flight home. 
And he said, I can pick that up. And I said, no, just go have fun with your friends on the river. Um, did you know who Isaac was going with? To yeah. He said they were meeting up at the high school and that Alex was driving. And I said, okay, don't forget your sunscreen. And I grabbed it and I put sunscreen on his ears. And at some point did you learn what happened? Yes, so then my sister-in-law and I went down and they had lunch downtown Stillwater. And then my husband had taken an Uber home from the airport and he was gonna meet us down there. And we were waiting for him, and I got a call from Owen's phone, and I thought, um, maybe Isaac's phone went dead, or he lost it or something, and so he was calling me from Owen's phone. But Owen called, screaming that Isaac had been stabbed. And he gave me the pin drop of, where to get to and my husband was just pulling up and I ran out of the restaurant and hopped in his car and we got there in, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. What happened when you got there? Well, we followed the ambulances and I just went running and I, I ran up into one of the ambulances thinking that it was Isaac sitting up in there and I started crawling into the ambulance and I realized it wasn't Isaac, it was one of the other kids. So then I climbed out and then I looked and I saw, I saw Isaac's hair laying on the river bank. I knew it was him. And they were trying to perform CPR on him. Did you go to Isaac? Yeah, I ran to Isaac. And when you got to Isaac, um, <laughs> was it clear he was already deceased? Yes. I don't have any other questions, Judge. Mr. Shroff, I have no questions for Mr. Thank you. You may step down. Thanks. Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? Juan Cockfield, Judge. Last name while we're waiting. Yes. C O C K F I E L D. Mr. Scottfield, please come forward. Uh, face the clerk, raise your right hand, she will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony of shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be that? I do. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smith's dad. Oh, will you please state your name for the record? Um, my name is Juwan Cockfield. How do you spell your last name? C-O-C-K-F-I-E-L-D. How do you spell your first name? J-A-W-A-H-N. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19 years old. Are you uh, Guys, this is going to be really good. Watch the cross on this. St. John's University. Uh, what kind of activities are you involved in at St. John's? I'm a member of the football team and the wrestling team, and I uh, study global business. That's your major field? Yeah. <clears throat> Are you familiar with the person named Isaac Schumann? Yeah. How did you know Isaac? Isaac's one of my best friends. How long did you know him? Uh, since middle school. Uh, were you uh, with Isaac uh, when he was killed? Yes, I was. Uh, were you uh, with the group of boys that were with Isaac on the uh, river on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Back on, on July 30th of 2022, how old were you? I was 17 years old. Had you finished high school at that point? Uh, no, I haven't started my senior year yet. Uh, was it the summer before your senior year? Yeah. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, folks all rode over with Alex Bank to the river? Yes, sir. Your auntie was at Ruby Nudge? Uh huh. Uh, yes? Yeah, sorry. Uh, did you get on the river? Say it again? Did you get on the river if you wanted to do Yes, sir. Uh, you uh, 
folks drinking alcohol? Yes, sir. Okay, I had a few beers. You already? Oh, probably like three or four. Were you drinking any hard liquor at all? Uh, not that I recall. Uh, did you use any other substances? Uh, yes. What kind of substances? Uh, we smoked some marijuana. Did you guys smoke any marijuana? No, he did not. <clears throat> Um, we've heard from other witnesses that your teams are all connected together. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Um, at some point, um, I'll start that. Did you end up taking some video recordings of some things that happened on the river that day? Yes, I did. How did you take those recordings? On uh, my cell phone. Um, did you specifically record the interactions that your group had uh, with Nikolai and you and the Yes, I did. Are those recordings the two? Uh, separate segments? Uh, yeah. Uh, one short, one long? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we're going to play the short nine second video here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was my mistake on the screen blacking out. Once you went to your oh. your desktop screen, I closed it. Yeah, I'm ask later, yeah. That's fine. It's my mistake. Grown man trying to ask a little girl. Who the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Mr. Cockfield, is that the uh, the first uh, video they recorded of Mr. Bean that day? Yes, sir. Is that your voice? Yep. Uh, um, at that point, uh, were you sitting in a tube? Yep. Uh, why did you start recording this? Because uh, he was just kind of looking suspicious from what I was seeing. All right, did, was he, uh, you saw in the video that he was standing away, is away from your group? Mm hmm So yes? Yeah. Okay, you get closer at some point when you started the video, video recording? Uh, not during that recording, though, no. right. like the first one. Okay. Um, did you hear yourself say he's he's a, a raper? Yeah. What was that all about? Uh, he had said like a weird comment, that's kind of why I started recording in the first place. Like, because he was having his snorkel, and it was like two feet deep water. So like, like, what are you doing? And then he just said like a weird comment, something about like some little girls. And did then, you have any girls with you in your group? No, I did not have any girls in my group. Did you see any other girls on the river here where you pulled? Uh, yeah, there were some girls on the river. Uh, Show child age girls? Or? Uh, not that I saw, no. Uh, did you know Mr. New at all? No. Did you know whether he was a pedophile or anything like that? No, I didn't. Did you make some conclusions based on what you saw him doing? Yeah. There's some leading. Sustained. Um, after you, you said he was a raper, did he uh, come closer to your group? Yeah. Uh, did you restart your recording? Yeah, because after I said that, I like looked away and was like, whoa, whoa, because he looks really scary when he looked at us. And then I, uh, like, we floated a little bit. And then, you said he looked real scary. Like, when I said that, I, you could see, like, his face look at me. And, like, you could see me go, like, oh. And then I got scared and stopped did recording. You, did you appear to be angry? That you yeah. Objections to the One at a time, please. Objection sustained. All right. Um, you saw him look on his face, did you start recording again? Yep. And the second video, was it how long after the first video? Did Probably like 10 seconds, we had just floated a little bit further. That was the second part of the video, your honor. No, no, just keep it off. You have to tell us when he wants to play, right. or display, rather. <laughs> What is he on? Whoa! 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 Uh, Mr. Cockfield, is that the, uh, the second video that you took that day? Yes, sir. Is that your leg in the screen? Yeah, well? it is. Now, for the record, the video is paused at the six second mark. Um, do you see Mr. Mew's hand grabbing onto your tube there? I do. Um, is he touching your leg? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Did that cause you concern? Most definitely. Did he say anything when he came running up and grabbed onto your tube and your, by your leg there? Uh, I guess I didn't hear him say anything specifically. All right. Do you recall who you were sitting next to in the tube? Yeah, I was sitting right next to Landon. Landon Wire. Landon Wire? Yeah. Uh, did you know whether he grabbed onto any of, uh, uh, or made contact with any of Landon's body parts? Yeah, definitely. You saw that? Yeah. Um, once he grabbed onto your tubes and was touching your legs, what did you do? I stood up. Were you concerned that he was reaching out for you? Yeah. 
Oh, were you able to get away? Uh, not really. Did you, did you stand up and walk away? Uh, no, I didn't walk away. Did you got out of your tube? Yeah, I just stood up in my tube so I didn't float away. Did he make any further physical contact with you after you were able to stand up? Uh, no. Did you know this person at all? No. Do you remember how long you've been on the river when he uh, ran up and... Uh, I guess I'd have to take an educated guess and say like an hour. Did you, when you first saw him, was he alone or was he with a group of people? He was alone. Alright, did he ever indicate that he was with other folks? No, not from what I saw. Did you say anything to him um, at the time that he grabbed onto the... Yeah, I was just saying like, what, what are you doing? Alright, is that on the radio? Yes, sir. Did you threaten him in any fashion? Oh, uh, no. Did you hear Isaac Schumann uh, say anything to, to the fellows from you? No. Did you call Sir Overall. He said again. Did you say anything to Mr. Hill at the time he ran up and grabbed up your tubes? No. <clears throat> um, did you and others start yelling at him to get away? Yeah. Do <clears throat> you remember the kind of language you were using? Yeah, we were just yelling, like, saying, like, what are you doing? Get out of here. Uh, were you calling him some names? Yeah, calling him like a pedophile. All right, why were you calling him a pedophile? Because he was running up on some kids, and he had said a weird comment earlier. Did Brad not to the, your, or touch your part of your leg? Yes, sir. Okay, I suspect you're uh, bleeding. Sustained. <clears throat> Uh, say you were, you and your friends are making a commotion at that point? Mm -hmm. Objection. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Sustained. I'm leading. Did somebody uh, else in the river come over to see what was going on? Yes. Did you know those folks? I uh, did not. Uh, do, you, do you remember how many folks initially came over to, to look check in on you guys? Uh, not like an exact number, but it was probably like six people. All right. Uh, the first two folks over, were they uh, males or females? First one was definitely a woman. All right. Did you see the woman uh, speaking to Mr. Neal? Yes. Uh, did you she pulled him? Yeah, she just told him, like, get away. I'm, like, pointing and, like, get away. Is that also recorded on the radio? Uh, yes. All right. So, we're, we're going to play another portion. Before that, I'm going to ask you, as you're recording this, were you using your, your cell phone? Yeah. Were you holding it close to your face or all your arms lying like you? I actually had it attached to my neck with, like, this, um, like, there's, like, a tourist thing, kind of, like, you just put it in the pouch or whatever. And, like, it's attached to my neck. It probably got, like, that far. All right. Uh, is it fair to say that your recording captured some things that you yourself didn't see at the time? Yes. Is it fair to say that you're recording, some of the things you're recording, you weren't looking in that direction? Yeah. All right. We're playing from the six seconds, Church. Tell us when you're ready. Ready. <laughs> On Wrong setting. Here we go. It's going to be playing from seven seconds. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh God. We up. up. We up. Hey, what are you talking about? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> 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 Get away from us! What? Wait, what What's going on with y'all, honey? He's on camera. Guys, let's it. <laughs> He's on 4K. Four K. Yo, them new iPhones got that good quality. What did he say? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. For the, for the for the culture! Who is that? For the culture! Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! 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 Doesn't matter. He said he was looking for a little girl! He said he was looking for a little girl! You're looking for a little girl? Yeah! That's exactly what he said. We're in the south. Put on camera. Did I? What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We trying to have fun. He's gonna claim you. He's gonna claim you. We're not on his own side. Not on camera. Not on camera. Oh God! 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 Oh Especially more of the videos you took that day. Mm -hmm. that is, yes, sir. Is that your voice sort of narrating what's going on? Yes. Uh, was that you saying uh, for the culture? Yes, sir. What does that mean? Uh, I guess it's kind of like for the greater good. It's like a new saying, I guess. Uh, sort of street slang? Yeah. Um, 
As you're recording that, did you see uh, Mr. Blue take a knife out of his pocket? I did not, with my own eyes. You've reviewed the video a few times? Mm -hmm. uh, yes? Yeah, oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, are you aware now that your video shows him? Yes. The knife? Yes. But you didn't see it at the time? No. John, is this a, a still frame from your video? Yes. Uh, you see Mr. View on the video? Yes. You see what he's got in his hands? Yes. What is it? Uh, it looks like his knife. Now, you didn't, with your testimony earlier, you didn't see him hold the knife or hold the knife? Like no. <clears throat> Did you, while you're recording, see him holding the knife up by his side with the blade facing up? No. Going back to the still judge, this is 2533. Right. Uh, Juan, is this also a picture from your video? Yes. Uh, will you see that from that uh, still? See him holding his knife. If you had seen him while you're recording the video holding that knife, what would you have done? Sustained. At this point in the video, uh, who's standing in front of Mr. Do you, if you remember? Um, I guess I don't really know her name, but her. Uh, not really. Men or women? Uh, it's a woman. All right. Was there one or two women standing in front of him? Oh, uh, there was two. All right. At some point, did you see Mr. Do do something in relation to the one of those women? Yes. What did you see? He punched her. Which one do you remember? I, I think it was the blonde one. Did. Well, you just watched the video, you were aware your video does not capture that punch. Yeah. Um, but you saw it yourself. Yes. Were you, were, you, were you looking in a different direction than the camera was? The camera was, yeah. friends kind of like start going towards him and I like, try to I guess fight him. All right and did the fight break out? Yes. Uh, did, did you know any of the names of these folks? No I did not. Um, did you see somebody strike Mr. Hugo? Yes. Mr. Hugo down? Yes. Did you at any point touch him in any, any way? No not once. Other than that did you touch your leg earlier you did not touch no, no I did not. <laughs> Looked down the line of people that were hurt. I saw the first person, like, that's not my friend, that's not my friend, that's not my friend. And the last person I looked at was my guy, Isaac Camp. Did, as the fight's going on, did you see people who came? Yes. At some point, did you realize what was happening? Yes. That I'm just not laughing? Yes. 
Mr. Edward, going back to the video, it'll be from the 206 mark to the end. Objection? Received. Once you got up off the river, did you speak to a police officer? Uh, yeah. Briefly? Yeah. So, you saw that happen? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, you eventually was already transported to the hospital? Yes. Did you follow? Yes. Did you speak to another officer at that? Yes, I did. Did you tell the officer what happened? Yes. <clears throat> in court uh, who you reported that day who did this? Yes, I do. What else did you wearing? He's wearing uh, navy and gray pants with some brown shoes. Mr. Trapasin. <clears throat> so, Mr. Hatfield, you are currently a two-sport college athlete, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. You play football and you wrestle yes. in college? Yes. Okay. What position in football do you play? I play defensive end. Defensive end? Yes, sir. Can I ask you, how big are you? I'm uh, about 5'11", or like 235. 5'11", 235 is what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that what you wrestle at, too? Heavyweight, yes. Back in uh, 2022, about the same size? I was a little bit smaller, yeah. Wrestle at heavyweight, still? Uh, 220 pounds, yeah, back then. <laughs> 
So you considered back in July of 2022, you considered yourself to be a uh, fit young adult, right? Uh, I guess I'd like to think that. Okay. And you, I'm going to ask you some questions initially about um, the interview that you gave with officers, okay? Okay. The interview that you gave with officers uh, at the hospital, you indicated that Mr. Mew told you that he was looking for a snorkel. Is that right? Uh, that is what I said. Okay. You never mentioned to officers that he told you anything about looking for little girls, correct? If that's what it says. Well, in a situation where you say he's looking for little girls, do you think it would be important that you would tell officers that he told you he was looking for little girls? Uh, yeah. But you never do that, do you? I guess I didn't. Did you think it was important? Uh, I guess there was more things that were more important, but that is important in the grand scheme, yes. Right, so more important was he was looking for a snorkel. Uh, not really. Okay, but you, but you mentioned that, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you say, if I have it right, um, you had three to four beers and were using marijuana. Yes. Okay. There was uh, vodka that had been brought in by your group. Okay. True? Uh, yes. In a Tito's and a wa in like water bottles. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Did you have any of that? No. Okay. So just the three or four beers and some marijuana. Yes. Okay. Now. <clears throat> You also, I guess to your credit, tell the police, you guys were antagonizing Mr. Mew, right? After the fact that he hit the woman, yes, we were. Well, you don't consider calling him a raper, antagonizing him? Uh, I mean, based on what he was doing, and it looked like that really, like, that made him chase after us afterwards, so who knows what he was really doing. My question to you is, do you believe telling him that he can't have sex with little girls and calling him a raper would be considered antagonizing? Uh, yes. And you were the one who was saying that, right? Yeah, but that's after he ran up on us and like was doing a bunch of weird stuff. Or like he looked weird, I guess I could say. Okay, so I'm saying that, yeah. This and you know he's alone, right? Uh, from what I see, he looks alone. Okay, so uh, and you know that he's, from what you see, he's kind of an older man. Yes. Not very fit. Yes. Okay, so you see an older, not very fit man walking alone, and you start calling him names. As I'm sitting on my tube. Like, I'm saying, like, what are you doing with the snorkel in two feet water? And then he said something weird after that. What business is it, is it of yours on the river, what he is doing? He's not bothering you, right? I mean, I was interacting with every single person we saw that day on the river. Okay. So like, at least most people. Joanne, my question remains, mm -hmm. what business is it of yours to bother a man who's not bothering you? I was just asking a question. What are you doing? What are you doing? And he tells you, I'm looking for a snorkel. At that point? Yeah. Or the snorkel was in his hand at that point. Well, you tell him that you tell the police that he told you he's looking for a snorkel. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you then say, "Grown man can't have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper, right?" Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Okay. You have no information as to what this older man is doing, do you? No. Okay. And. You say, after you call him a raper, he looks over at you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Or yes. Wouldn't you suspect somebody that you called a raper to kind of look over at you? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Are you surprised that he looked over at you? Uh, at the time, yes. When you were calling him names, you're surprised he glanced over at you? Objection, asked to answer. Cover you can answer. Yes. All right. Now, can I ask you a little bit about this um, thing, lanyard or whatever, that you were holding your phone in? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's around your neck. Yes. Okay. Can you can you tell the jury how long how long is it? Uh, it's not like that long. Like I said, I I could probably pull my phone out that much, and it's around my neck the whole time. So can I ask you in terms of when you're holding it about how? I know it's not up to your face, okay? But how far away from your face or your chest do you think it would be? Yes, I could say like seven inches, eight inches. Okay, so you're not able to hold it like I'm right now. My arm is extended. You're not able to do that, right? Not much. Okay, so and I, I won't get too close to you, but so you're holding it kind of like this. Yeah. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. And 
<clears throat> you indicate to police in your interview, they say to you, are you calling him any names? And your response to the police is, there were a couple of us guys calling him a weirdo, right? You told the police that? Yes. Okay. You don't tell the police that you're actually calling him a pedophile initially and a raper. I said on the thing that whatever else I said would be on the video. That's what I said. Okay. And that is such a bullshit answer. You don't. That's a way of not saying it. What he's doing walking over by where you're at, right? No. Okay. So a raper and saying he can't have sex with little girls. You're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. Whatever I said, I, guys, sorry, I'm back. I had to take that call. But this is just nonsense from this guy. Oh, I, I, whatever else I said is what I said in the video. That's his way of not having to own the words he said. It's a lie. And then, yes, this, this, I saw this, uh, bit of cross a couple days ago as a clip. This is Brilliant Cross by Sharafisi. Well, what other reason would you be calling him names when you don't know anything about what's happening? Just trying to figure out the situation. So the way that you're trying to figure out what's happening is by calling a grown man names. Yes? Yes. And you are yelling at some point, get away from us. Yes. Right? Okay. And that's after he comes up to your group, right? Yes. And when he comes up to your group, you're holding your phone kind of like this, are you not? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And he walks around your tubes and away from your group, does he not? After engaging with us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have to be happy. You wanted him to get away from you, and he is getting away from you, right? Not much. I mean, we're just standing there, and like, he barely walked past us at all, and like, pretty much in our path, we can't float past him. He's in our path. We can't okay, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. He walks past you guys, and you guys continue to move toward him, is that right? Not necessarily. Move towards him? Yeah, so what do you mean by that? If you're Mr. Mew. Okay. And at one point, he turns his back to you guys. Is that true? You saw that on the tape? Yes. Okay. So this this person that you want to get away. From. I know he. These kids have to understand. Oh my God, we set the we played an equal part in setting this in motion. My friend is dead now. My best friend is dead because I decided to get drunk and act like a dumbass. Yeah, that's a rough thing. That is a lot of weight on your shoulders to have, chat. So. Also, guys, thank you for being here. I apologize. I like I said, I had to step away. I had a phone call with the client, but now we're back. So let's uh let's get to this. from you is walked away from where you're standing and turned his back to you true walked out of our path like into our path from where we went from we passed him and then he ran up on us and then went in front of us you and your group move toward him like i'm moving toward you right no well, I, well, I mean like the way you're describing it isn't necessarily how i would feel like we were doing it moving towards him it's kind of just we were there yeah you were moving your group was moving closer to where he was standing after he had moved completely up to us I understand. Yes. You want him to get away from you. Uh -huh. He's moving. He's moved down river a little bit, and your group is moving in his direction. True? Yeah, the way the river goes, yes. That is his direction. Okay. Yes. And do you remember, Mr. Uh, Ryan Nelson testified, Mr. Okay. Do you remember someone yelling on you in your group? You've got 10 seconds. I don't recall that. Personally. Okay. It's at 38. I'm going to play it, and I just want you to listen. You don't have to watch. Okay. Just listen, okay? I run my own shop, homie. I appreciate it, So, though. Mr. Kyfield, if you just listen. What do you say? Oh, uh, could you play it again? I'm not sure if I did. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, the new iPhone got that good quality. What do you say? Oh, I actually did not hear it. Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, but you would agree right. at that point your group is moving in his direction, yes? 
That's the river would go. Yes. Right. You don't stop, but you you're walking with your tubes in his direction. True. Uh, yes. Okay. And you say that shortly thereafter, you were asked this. You're yelling for the culture, yes. for the culture, right? Yes. And you were asked what that meant, and your response was something like for the greater good. Yeah, along those lines. What is the greater good of you recording that? I mean, this guy was, like I said, ran up to our group as we were floating past him, and we were causing a scene, like, what is this guy doing? Get away from us. And people come over to help us, so that's for the culture, for the greater good. At that point, had the people come up? But when I said for the culture, that's when the people came up. So if that's not at the point where, well, yeah. Okay, and this is all. I said it, yeah. We Sorry. try to talk one at a time, okay? Sorry about that. It's okay. So. Nobody's buying this. This is something that you this want to record, shit. right? This incident, yeah. you want to record this, don't you? I mean, not really sure what type of question that is. Well, you don't stop. Hold on. You don't stop recording and yes, we were causing the scene. the situation. You just keep recording what's going on. True. Yeah. I mean, I, why I stop it? At that point, it looked like it was like a weird situation. I just recorded. I'm sorry. You said it looked like a weird situation. Yeah. Okay. And at this point, you see Mr. Mew walk over to this blind girl. Uh -huh. you know? Yes. He's cleared a path for you all to walk through, hasn't he? Yes. You, so you have to be excited. You wanted to get away from him. You said he was standing in your path. He's moved out of your path. So your group can just go right by. True? I mean, that group came over to help us, so why would we just leave them? I want you to listen to my question. Can I hear it? He moves over. So your group can go past. Is that why he moved over? I'm not asking you that. Okay. I'm asking you, you said you wanted, you were yelling for him to get away. Huh? You wanted him to get away. He got yes. away. You said he was standing in your path, right? Yes. He moves over out of your path. Yes. So your group, you have to be excited because your group now can go right by, right? And we could float by, yes. You could have floated by. Yes. But you didn't. Yes. You stayed. Yes. Okay. And you stayed as this other group comes over. Yes. Okay. And you, on tape, yelled to this blonde, he's looking for little girls. Yes. You don't have that information. He said that. I remember right. him saying that. So he said that. Said. Hold on. You don't have that on tape. Okay. True. True. It was not on my video. And you never told that to the police. True? True. Okay. He's when trying to save his over, ass now. And you choose to stay instead of actually moving on with your trip. You hear her yelling at him, right? Yes. Okay. And she's, Ryan Nelson described her as being in his face. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, and her name is Madison Cohen. Listen, listen to this nonsense. He's, he's been, he knows he's looking like a complete asshole. Otherwise, he's been made to look like a complete dickhead. That he's causing problems and fucking with a guy who wasn't causing any harm to anyone. And now he's like, well, I didn't know that he wasn't not, not being a pedophile. How was I supposed to not know? Like a 19-year-old punk trying to talk his way out of it and reason his way out of it. Okay, just so you know. So you would agree that Madison Cohen is in Mr. Mew's face, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And you would agree she appears to be angry, true? Uh, yes, or concerned at least. I'm sorry? Concerned at least, yes. You don't tell her what's going on. You just say he said he's looking for little girls, right? Yes. Okay. So instead of trying to explain the situation, you're just yelling at her, saying this is what he said. Right? Yelling to her what the situation is, which would be considered explaining, kind of. So what's the situation? He said he was looking for little girls. So I told them, like, that's the main concern of the situation. And then he ran after us. So, yeah. And it, he ran after you. And it, instead of passing, you stay and tell her that, right? Yes. OK. Now, initially, it's about it, it's the six of you and Mr. Mew. True? Yes. Okay. yes. You'd agree when this other group comes over, now there is more people involved. Yes. OK. And. It, Ultimately, an additional five people come over to assist. Yes. Okay. So now we're at least up to 11 or 12 people against Mr. Mew. Okay. Is yeah, that right? true. Okay. And during this entire interaction, up to the point we are right now where Ms. Cohen comes over, Mr. Mew's not saying anything aggressively to any of you, right? No. He's not physically doing anything to show his aggression toward you, right? No. Okay. 
And you're not afraid of him at that point, true? Because of the people that came to help, I was not afraid of him. At that right. Point. So strength in numbers, right? You could say that. So the more people that are coming over, is it fair to say, as the number of people increase, your fear level decreases? Is that fair? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And 11, 12, 13 against one, you're feeling pretty comfortable at that point, right? Yeah. And you, when I say you guys, your group, the young Stillwater people, you begin to taunt him, don't you? Uh, what do you mean by taunting? Kind of get in a circle around him and all start pointing at him that he's a pedophile. Yeah. Check to the characterization of being in a circle around him. That's not the evidence. I'll be up to the jury to decide objection over rules examination. Good job. Right. Can you say that again? Sure. You guys form kind of a circle around him, a really close to him at that point, pointing like I'm pointing, gesturing, pointing at him, yes, calling him a pedophile. Yes, make it scared about yes. the game. Okay. And because of the way your camera is it's like Russell Greer. You're pretty close to him as well, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. And the purpose of taunting him and calling him a pedophile and pointing at him in that situation is what? Uh, kind of just to let them know what he was doing. You already let them know what he was doing? Yeah, but I guess it was just still going on. What was still going on? What you just described. I know what you're doing. Okay. The question is, why are you doing it? I guess I don't know. It was two years ago. Were you doing it to taunt him and humiliate him? Not necessarily. So why are you doing it? So I, I guess I don't necessarily know. Any other explanation that you can think of as to why you would go around somebody pointing at him, taunting him, calling him names, other than to humiliate him? Oh. Yeah, that, that, that silence there, he's like, oh, well, no. Fucking neur those last neurons, those, those handful of neurons he had inside his head are finally smashing together, giving him a little bit of intelligence going, oh, I guess we were being dickheads. I guess I was a huge dickhead after all. I can go through now, you had mentioned that he had punched the blind girl, Madison Cohen. Yes. Okay. You agree that's not on tape? Yes. Are you saying that you saw it, though? I did. Okay. When, when you say that you saw him punch her, she's in his face, yes? Yes. Okay. And what happens, if you know, what happens to her? Like after he punched her? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Do you see how he punches her? I kind of just see like a hand come over towards her face or at her face, and then I just see like the follow through. I guess I didn't really see anything after that. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about that? And what I mean is, I don't want to mischaracterize what you're saying, okay? Do you know which hand he uses? <laughs> no, I can't really think about which hand he used. Okay, and when I think of a punch, maybe you and I think of it the same way, I think of a fist and somebody kind of putting their weight into it and punching somebody in the face. Is that how you think of it? I think there's a, I guess, a bunch of ways to punch people. Okay, so, yeah. how do you see it? Like a punch? How do you see this punch? Uh, just like, kind of like a hook. Okay, so you see, hook. Yeah. You see him, and you use your right arm, right? Yeah. In that situation. Yeah. So do you believe that he uses his right arm and throws kind of a hook across? I'm not sure which arm, but it kind of felt like I saw a hook. Yes, a hook. A hook. Okay. You don't see her go down, do you? Uh, not, no. Okay. And at that point, you see this group of people attack Mr. Moon, right? Yes. You see him get punched in the face and fall backwards into the river. Yes. You think that's funny, right? After he had hit a woman, I think he was sort of getting what he deserved, yes. So you thought it was funny? Uh, funny, yes. I guess I was laughing. Yeah. And in fact, you had moved up. You got your camera. You're kind of right up in his face with this now, aren't you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And as he's being attacked, you're laughing throughout that portion of the video, aren't you? Yes. Okay. When he gets pushed back in the water, you're still laughing after somebody had already been stabbed, right? Yeah, I didn't see it. But you're still laughing, true? True.
You agree that, from what you've seen, Mr. Mew doesn't stab anyone until he's attacked. True? After he had punched the girl and then was attacked, yes, then he started stabbing people. Okay. Before that, you'd agree, would you agree the temperature kind of and what's happening is going up and up and up? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. More people are showing up? Yeah. She's getting in his face? Yeah. Right? More, it's feeling more volatile to you? Yeah. And it's all your fault it got volatile. And you're feeling more comfortable because of the numbers, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he thought numbers were great because now he can start fucking with this guy and he wouldn't fuck back because he's got all his friends there. That's why he was calling him a pedophile, pedophile, pedophile because he knew the guy wasn't going to fight him because he had all his buddies with him. Yes, he was enjoying it. He was becoming part of a mob that was getting out of control. He was getting off on the idea they could fuck with this guy and he couldn't hurt them. Because, yeah, he was a bigger, older guy who probably would have... They were afraid of getting punched in the face. But now they don't have to worry about that because now they've got a bunch of people behind them. I mean, they're just letting the plot slip and you egged it on and created the entire environment. Brilliant work, buddy. Brilliant work. You really did get your friend killed. I hope you know that. Your friend is dead and took a knife to the chest because of you. You're one of the reasons. I was going to throw these away if I had a trash bin. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, my last couple questions, Mr. Cockfield. There's a point on that video that you say, I'm paraphrasing, but you hit a one. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's not at the point in the video when you believe he struck Madison Cohen, right? What do you mean? Well, there's two. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understood what you were saying. Fair you know there's two women involved in this. Right? Yes. Okay. When you say he struck a woman is when he makes contact with Riley Madison, not Madison Cohen. Do you know that? Say that again? Sure. You said he made contact with me. Yeah. There's two women, okay? Okay. If we're going to do this sequentially, you say he strikes Madison Cohen with a hook. Yeah. On that video, you don't say anything about him punching Madison Cohen. No. Right? No, I don't. Like, as it happens, I didn't. Right. You don't mention that on the video. Not right away. What you mention on the video is that at the time, sequentially, the video, he makes contact with Riley Madison. Then you say he hit a woman. Right? Wait, check, Your Honor. That's not, that's not the evidence. It's sustained. I don't have any other questions, Judge. Mr. Cockrell, thank you for your time. Mr. Mustang? Juan, you were asked about how big you are, that you're a football player and a wrestler. Do you ever touch Mr. Mew in any fashion? Not once. Did you ever cock a fist at him or anything like that? No. Nope. Did you ever tell him you were going to give him a beat down? No. Nope. <clears throat> you told uh, Mr. Tropicy that you told the police that at one point he said he was looking for a snorkel. Did he actually say that at some point? Mr. Mew, I mean? Um, I'm not sure at this point. Um, ah, when he ah, ran up ah, and grabbed ah. onto your tube and made contact with your leg, did he have his snorkel in yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like did to he drop it, it out? So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you were asked about um, whether so you heard someone say you got 10 seconds. Um, you indicated you didn't hear that. Did uh, you ever say that? I never said that. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever hear anybody in your group say that? Yeah, I did not. Overall. <laughs> Did you, ever, did you ever hear anybody in your group say that? No. <clears throat> Mr. Tropicy had asked you why you didn't uh, float by him and get away from him, and instead you continued recording. Um, did you have any idea that any of this was going to happen? No, I did not. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think would happen? No. As you sit here today, are you glad you recorded it? Yeah, there's no. you didn't think this was going to happen because you were screwing around. If you thought this could have happened, you wouldn't have done it. You were dicking around, buddy. Just admit it. Also, it looks like he's trying to do the Rick James thing there. It doesn't look good on him. Yes. I'm going to show uh, still frame number 2593. <clears throat> A 
already. Notice the prosecutor uses still frames, and the defense is using video. I made this argument before in court, and I've won with a jury. I'm showing you everything. They're only showing you parts. Why is that? Uh, do you see that, John? Yes, I do. Is that a still frame from your, your video? Yes. How many people are confronting Mr. Mew in that still frame? Two. Uh, males or females? Females. Do you see 11 or 13 other people encircling him in that in that photo? I do not. Do you see anybody behind him? No. Uh, what, do you, what do you see behind him? Uh, open. Looks open behind him. I'm going to scroll through some of the stills from after this picture. We'll start. This is... Uh, Starting at 2593. Yes, I, I'm a practicing attorney. Stopping at 2643. Uh, that sequence of stills, is that when you panned over to your group of yep. friends? Yep. Or your group of friends surrounding him? Yeah. And the, the, the photos you just watched, did you, was your group of friends surrounding Mr. Mew? Uh, no. No, I wasn't. What was your answer? No. Were you all standing in a line? Yeah. Sustained. How was your group standing in relation to Mr. Mew and these stills that you just watched? Uh, we were just standing kind of by our tubes. Fine. Okay. Uh, when you spoke to the police, um, you told them that he punched a woman? Yes. Did you sustain? What did you, what did you, when you spoke to police, please, what did you tell him uh, happened with uh, the woman? Uh, that he had hit her. And that was right after the incident? Yeah. Uh, nothing further. Mr. Trophy? You were asked, you're this kind of big guy, and did you touch Mr. Mew and you said that you had, right? He never touched you either, did he? Uh, besides the very beginning when I was sitting down on my tube. Right, but otherwise, in terms of being physically aggressive, you weren't physically aggressive toward him, and you weren't harmed in this at all, were you? No, I was not. Okay. And you were asked um, on redirect about, do you recall telling the police that you were looking for a snorkel, and you said you didn't really recall that, right? Uh, yeah. So right. why did you say it? No, I'm saying I didn't really recall telling the police that. But you believe that to be true, that he told you he was looking for a snorkel, right? I guess I don't recall that. Well, he didn't, he, my point is, if you don't believe that he told you that, why would you say it? Um, I don't know. The Trying picture that you. you were showing with the two females standing in front of Mr. Mew, you, you remember that? Yes. You'd agree there's approximately 11 people standing behind those, 12, those two people, right? <clears throat> At that very moment, I'm not sure. You'd agree that there's a group of people, two groups of people, your group of people, and the other group of people have come together, right? Not necessarily all together. They were like kind of on their way, I guess. Okay, but there's your group, and then I think you testified, plus at least five or six others that come over. Yes. Okay. So overall, at that point on that video, that still that you were shown, it's 12 on one, right? In that still frame, no, it wasn't. There weren't 12 people standing there? In that still frame, it was two standing next to him, if that's what you're asking me. With 10 right behind him, right? I'm about right behind him. Well, you saw the video, or you saw the still of you and your group moving forward once you say that Madison Cohen was punched, right? Yeah. You're all right there? Like, they're right here, and then he's right here. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, you were asked, well, it's open behind him, right? Yeah. There's a point in the video where you pan back. Do you see where Mr. Mew's group actually is? No. You don't know if he was by himself or with other people, right? No. You don't know if your group or the group that had come over had cut him off from getting back to his people, right? I don't know. Yes, he doesn't know he feel if he didn't have breakfast exactly. ask you a couple questions about things you were asked on redirect. I'm going to show you a picture or still 2623. Okay. okay. And that's a picture of uh, your friend Alex Vang and a picture of Isaac, right? Yes. Okay. Are you looking at them 
when you're running this camera? At this point, I, I'm just like panning around and like looking all around, I guess. What I'm interested in is, is your head, your face, your eyes, looking at where your camera's looking? No. Okay, so. I guess I don't recall technically exactly where my eyes were looking while I was panning around right at that, this still frame. Okay, but you'd agree that at this point, Mr. Mew and Ms. Cohen, there would be to, I'm looking at it, they're to the right yeah. of this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and your cameras, you're holding it like this, right? Uh, yeah. Like this. Yeah. And do you know at that point, in order to see what's going on over there, you're holding the camera straight and you're turning your head, like I'm turning my head to the right, yes? Can you say that again? Sorry. What you, what you testified to was that your eyes aren't necessarily in the same place. Yes. As the camera. Yes. Okay. What I'm asking you is, you're holding the camera, showing Mr. Bang and Mr. Schumer. Yes. Okay. You're not looking at the camera. You're not looking where your camera is being pointed. Is that what you're saying? Not at every second. No. I understand. There are points that you're. Yeah. Moving around. Yes. Right. But your head, in order to see what's going on with Mr. Mew. Your head is turned in this direction in order to see this confrontation that's going on. Yes. Right? Yeah. While you're keeping your camera here. Yeah, like I guess I can move my camera, move my head, everything can move. Thank you. You may step down. Is he released? No. All right. Uh, please see the coordinator. Uh, she'll give you further instructions. Judge, in case I didn't already ask, I'm moving for admission of 38. I think we might have already done that. Uh, 38 has been received. Well, that was a disaster. Right. We are going to take state. a short recess. We'll come back at 10 o'clock. Please take the jury out. All right. The jury. <laughs> All right, guys. So yeah, this is uh, not not not. Uh, Mom was brought in to be there was a victim to put a face to the name, show the zeal for life, the zest for life. That's going on right now. And not asking any questions for her. No point. There's no point in asking questions. We already know the kids are assholes. We know her kid was drunk as hell. So there was no point in it was it was very well done. Well wait, did he just walk in the back with him? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on here. Oh, I was gonna say that's gotta be a court deputy or something. Yeah. Cause that's not that's not part of the defense team. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, that's a court deputy or some prison or jail staff. They're dressed up. That's nice they're doing that. Um and it's also nice they're not shackling them up because other cases they've been shackling people up left and right to move them. Because Mew's been in custody the whole time. Now um, yeah, not having mom testify and cross, that was good. But this kid, they, they, he got fucked harder than the other guy did. He got fucked harder than the white guy did. How much do you think this is way in the eyes of the jury? Well, I mean, all these witnesses are going to be like, uh, duh, uh, duh, uh, duh. That weighs after a while. That definitely weighs after a while. Um, so yes, I wanted to say hello to people here. Um, son of, Ma son of Mario. Uh, I think you're new here. I just want to say yes. My name's Sean, also as potentially criminal. I'm an attorney in Cleveland, Ohio, in the Cleveland area. And I practice criminal defense work, among other things. And, uh, yeah, I was on the phone taking care of us something. So, uh, yes, I do. Thank you. Now, I'm not sure if that is a Nick or Kata joke or you didn't know I practiced. Either way, um, pleasure to have you here. Casey says, do I need any new attorneys uh, in my office? Looking to make sure I can find a gig when, if, no, 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 no when you pass the bar no ifs when 
It's one of those few times you gotta fit you gotta you gotta mentally manifest that. Positive thinking of that shit, homie. You got it, blood. You got it. Uh, but no, I do not. No, I do not. Sorry. Um, Walter Malone says, um, for 199, saying he wants to talk. You could sense it. Yes. Yes. Um, and Zero says, uh, yes, he definitely doesn't know how he'd feel if he had bre- if he didn't have breakfast in the morning. Yes. That, is, that guy is not exactly a road, rock, uh, not exactly a road scholar. So... Yes. So, um, Sleazy says, so what are the chances the state, if he gets let free, the state just pursues the assault charges against this other dude? What do you mean? Like, they pursue charges against the other parties, like the party where the victim was in? They aren't going to do anything. That This is it. This is it. This is it. If he, if he gets acquitted, that's it. So he are says it's fucked up. He's been in custody all this time. Well, his bond got reduced really low, but from what I understand, he told his wife, take the money, go do your thing. But they're also using a lot of this money to pay for Sheriff Easy and Sheriff Ossie and all the other people. So, yeah, not really that big a deal. Um, Cindy Lou Who says, uh, yesterday marked 50 years since the 74 tornado in Xenia, Ohio. Yes. Were you around during that time? I was not I was not alive for another eleven years. I was born in nineteen eighty five. This don't let this fool you. Don't let that fool you. I'm only thirty eight. See Souter Souter saying is there any old people on the jury? Don't know. Don't know. Ariel's saying there's a ninety year old on the jury. There we go. Ron says you have to pass a bar in Washington, and I think that's not a good thing necessarily. Well you know we, Will you offer an internship walking Clyde? No, because I need to walk Clyde. I need to do walking, so no. That's stealing work from me. Uh, Let's see here. Yes, Nikolai escaped communist Romania in the 80s. He escaped the Ceausescu's, which if you guys don't know about Nikolai Ceausescu and his wife, uh... They got the very based treatment at the end of the day. They became very good communists at the end. Uh, they, they Christmas Day, nineteen eighty nine. They got drug out into a courtyard and dusted by Romanian soldiers. And there's very good footage of it. You can watch them get killed. So. Do I need an intern to walk you? No. Squizgar says, holy shit, you're younger than me. Yeah. Well, like I said, this has been been on there. Cosmo says, I'm from Romania. Well, yes, I'm sure you guys do nothing more than spit on Ceausescu's grave, too, if it's even there. So, yep. Ceausescu's wife, that's not... You're missing some A's. But yes, they were on Christmas Day, just... With a couple of AKs, just a rat a tat tat tat. So, um, I can't believe the state asked for a bond of five hundred thousand because they, you're the bad guy. You committed murder. You're a bad man. We only charge bad people. They think you're a murdering psychopath. They're not letting you out. I'm from Targovice, where Ceausescu was executed. Ooh, God, I bet that's a pretty base spot. I I go hang out there and drink beer. I go there drink. I drink a beer, and then take a leak on the spot where Ceausescu got executed. So, yes, there's a video of uh, yes Ceausescu's wife at the National Library as they had their they were they were given a summary court martial by the military, and they're drug off, and she's screaming, "No, you can't do this!" And they fucking did it. <laughs> they fucking did it. Yes, guys, he's facing first-degree murder along with four counts of attempted first-degree murder. So he's looking at life. This is this is for all the marbles for him. This is for all the marbles. So let's skip ahead here, guys. We're going to keep going. We're going to try to chug along through this the best we can. Um, I did want to mention real quick, in case you guys were wondering if anybody's new here, 
Um, tonight is Thursday. We do a live show at 9 30. Um, we got a lot to talk about tonight. So if you guys are interested, please stick around. It is a very fun time. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing this. Uh, we'll probably go right up to about 8 45, 9 o'clock or so, as far as we can get. So uh, yeah, just wanted to keep that in mind for you guys. But yes, back on the day two. I'll take a look for it, Sweezy. <laughs> All right, so guys, here we go. Uh, trial, there are certain witnesses that uh, prefer not to be recorded, either by video or audio. Um, Supreme Court rules allow me to instruct uh, that the audio and video recording cease. So I'm doing so now. So everyone's going to go offline. Absolute horse shit. This should not be allowed. This is not a Jew. Like, are they minors? Because that's the only protection that should be afforded. You are, everybody in that courtroom can watch them. I didn't know about this. That is absolutely disgusting. Absolute horseshit. It should not be legal. I don't want people to see me. Everybody's going to see you. I bet your picture gets taken. That's part is dumb fast forward. Well, we could... Well, you guys don't want to go through the blackness at 1.25 1, 1, 1. speed? <laughs> oh, this is just garbage. I I wish it fucking recorded. We find out who these worms are. So we're time traveling, shadow. Oh, we're back. We're back. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, lad, we're back. Okay, from having been having been a. Uh, Please have a seat in the witness chair. From from having been 19 years old and been a been a lurch of a human being myself, you can tell this kid's like 19, 18, 19 years old. He's like, oh, do, 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 do. but I've been there, done that. I used to be that skinny too. Ah, oh, those were the days. <laughs> Mr. Smith's dad. I'm going to say your name for the record, please. What's your last name? My name is Alex Vang. V-A-N-G. How old are you, Alex? I'm 19 years old. Um, do you go to school? Do you work? Uh, I'm a student at St. John's University. Uh, what's your, what are you studying? Uh, global business leadership. Um, what year are you at St. John's? I'm a first year. Um, uh, were you familiar with a person named Isaac Schumann? I was. How did you know him? Uh, he's my best friend. How many years were you best friends with Isaac? Seventh grade, I first met him. Like, <clears throat> like St. John's, like the St. John's? Like, like we're talking about the St. John's, like, in Queens? Or is it like, is it like St. John's, Minnesota? I'm assuming Minnesota, because, like, these guys are not, these guys are not making me think they're St. John's, like, New York City material. Just, I'm, I'm just, I, if you guys are new, I'm like Ed Sheeran. I'm always thinking out loud. Um, he's Asian, so maybe, yeah. His parents are disappointed. He's not a doctor. Okay, so it's in Minnesota. Okay, yeah, I had to Google it to see if there was one near there. He already sounds like he's doing the fake cry shit, too. So let's see. Let's see him cry. Were you with um, Isaac Schumann on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Um, were you part of a group of your friends that uh, took down the Apple River near Somerset, Wisconsin? Yes. <clears throat> uh, were you with Ab uh, Isaac when he was stabbed and killed that day? Yes, I was. Um, it's my understanding from other testimony that you were the driver and drove everybody to the river? Correct. Um, did you rent tubes at River's Edge? Yep. <clears throat> Do you remember if you got a receipt for the, the tubes? Um, I don't think so, no. Do you remember what time you got on the river? 
estimate maybe around one, one thirty. Um, was your group together? because they were hung over from in, the night the before? Tubes? Yes. Were your tubes connected together? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, what, what's, what's the plan to float down to uh, yeah, Village Park in Somerset? If that's at the end, yes. Your tubes are tied. Um, do you have plans for a return trip back to River's Edge? Let's say again. Did you have plans on how to get back from Village Park up to River's Edge? Yeah, we were going to either probably gonna find a ride. Okay. <clears throat> um, while you were tubing the river, um, were you drinking alcohol? Yes, I was. What kind of alcohol did you have? Just some beers, some uh, Michelob Goldens, maybe some... Uh, um, the like ultras or something, whatever they're called. Did you have any hard liquor? I did not. Uh, do you know if anybody in your wait, group was drinking wait, hard wait, liquor? Wait, 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 wait. Did you? Um, These kids are drinking Michelobes. These are some bougie kids. I mean, like when I was like in high school, still we got a hold of some natty. We were like that was the normal. We got a hold like Bud Light. We were living high on the hog. Kids drinking Michelob. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we went tubing because we couldn't. Our yachts were in the dry dock today. <laughs> it's what I hear. Holy cow. Use any other drugs that day? Uh, yeah, I smoked some weed. All right. I weed, you mean marijuana? Yes, please. Or, yes. All right. Um, as you were floating or down the river. Light, yeah. Drink kinks. Did you eventually have contact with the defendant? You're damn right I'm jealous. Yes, I, I had to drink awful beers as a kid. Uh, do you know whereabouts you were in the river when you first saw him? I don't recall. I just know we were a uh, little bit away from a, from a bridge. Had you been on the river before? I have. How many times? Just the uh, year previous. Um, when you first saw Mr. Mew, what was he doing? Um, he was just uh, looking in the water with some snorkeling gear. All right, did you... Ask him Thanks. What he was Thank doing. you. I did. Thank you. What did you say? He said, um, I appreciate it. Uh, you're snorkeling in some uh, pretty short water. Like, what are you looking for? And how did he answer? He said something along the lines of, he responded with, uh, looking for little girls or something like that. All right. Are you aware that, um, I'll strike that. Did you record any part of your, your interaction with I did not. Yeah, let me finish my question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is this your first time testifying? It is. Are you a little nervous? Yes. All right. Did you yourself record any part of the incident on the river? No, I did not. All right. Are you aware that somebody else in your group was? Yes. Who was that? Joan Cockfield. Have you had a chance to review that video? Yep, I watched it once. And are you, have you seen yourself in the video? Yes. Um, at the time that you asked Mr. Neal what he was doing and you responded like that, is any of that on the video? Uh, no. At some point, um, Mr. Yu brought up on your group? He did. Uh, I got you concerned? Yes, I was very scared. Did you fail out of your tube? I did. <clears throat> and what did he do when he ran up? Um, from what I remember, he ran up to us and grabbed our tubes and stopped us from carrying on. All right, were you floating at that time? Yes, we were. Did he stop you from floating? Yes. <clears throat> I want to show you a, a still frame from the video. Put on the screen. Alex, I'm showing you uh, frame 0156 of Juwan's video. Um, are you in that picture? That's me, yes. Um, does this describe when this picture was taken? I mean, what, what, what's going on when, when you're in the water there? Um, this must have been when he was running towards our tubes and um, was just about grabbing our tubes, and I was just, I, I was off the tubes at that moment. Uh, whose leg is in the, the foreground of the picture? Um, I'd assume at the very bottom, that's Jawan's. All right. <clears throat> at that point, had you separated yourself away from your raft of tubes? Yes, I did. Why? Um, I was concerned for my safety. Um, I didn't know what his intentions were running up on our tubes. All right. It's fair to say that prior to him running up, uh, Jawan called him some names. Yes. All right. Um, were you involved in calling many names before he ran up on the group? Yes. Do you know whether he was alone or with the group? From what I saw, he was just by himself. 
Did he have a tool? No, not that I saw. When he ran up on you, were you able to see whether he had anything in his pocket? No. Uh, at any point during this interaction with him, did you know he had a knife? No. Did you know Mr. Mew at all? I did not. Do you remember how long you've been on the river by the time you had this run in with him? Mm, I'd estimate maybe an hour, hour and a half. When he ran up and grabbed onto your raft of tubes, did he say anything that you heard? I don't recall. Did he, I know from the still we just looked at that you got off your tubes, did he make any physical contact with you at all? Not me, no. At any time during this incident, did he ever have any physical contact with you? No. <clears throat> As he's grabbing onto your tubes, did you say anything to him? Um, I don't recall. Did you threaten him in any fashion? No. Did you tell him he had 10 seconds to, to leave or anything like that? No. Um, you did call him some names? Yes, I did. What kind of names did you call him? Um, pedophile, predator. Uh, maybe a dumb question, but you don't seem to be proud of that? No, sir. <clears throat> Do you agree that um, you boys probably weren't very kind to him? Yeah, I agree. In the context of what happened, though, do you know what his intentions were? No. Eventually, did you and your friends uh, start yelling at him to get away? Yes, we did. Are we using raised voices? Yes. Um, you've seen that all on the video? Yes. Um, at some point, did uh, other folks come over to, to see what was going on? They did. Do you recall who was the, or can you describe the first person that showed up to? Um, the first person um, I saw come up was uh, maybe a small white lady. All right. Um, what did she do? Um, she pretty much just confronted him um, face to face, saying to leave these kids alone. Um, you, you, you could leave right now, just leave these guys alone. Did you swear at him? Um, I don't recall. All right. Uh, was she, did she have dark hair or blonde hair? Um, I don't recall, but my best estimate would be blonde. Right. At some point, did you see two women from another group confronting him? Yeah. And what was the other woman doing, the second woman? Um, from what I remember, she was just uh, next to the other lady. Um, I don't recall what she was really doing. Right. Did you hear her tell him to leave at all? Uh, a lot of people were telling him to leave. Right. Including you? Yes. At some point, um, as you reviewed the video, do you realize you guys are laughing at him? Yes. Um, why was that, if you know? Um, you know, I, I, he felt like um, it was kind of those situations where, like, you know, um, yeah, we, like, caught someone doing something wrong, and, you know, it's something like that. Uh, Did you think that he was getting in trouble from this other group? Yes, I was thinking that he was uh, finally about to leave and stop all the commotion that's going on. Were you feeling relieved? Sustained. <clears throat> Uh, say again. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If there's an objection. I have to rule. Sustain means don't answer. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So so next question. Is Mr. Mews talking to these the two women that are were they, were they standing in front of him, behind him? Where were they? Uh, the two women. Yes. They're in front of him. Did you ever hear him say, you know, get out of my way, let me go? I did not. Did you ever hear him call out for help? No. <clears throat> did you and your group of friends surround him? That's not good from you. Um. I want to play that. I mean, encircle him. I'm going to object. I'm going to ask him to answer the question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that all. I didn't I'm going to let him answer the question. He was trying to answer the question, and he was interrupted. Well, it's his witness. I'll let him interrupt his own witness. Did you encircle Mr. Mew Ooh. before any of the fight started? Um, I wouldn't say circle. I would say we were standing near to him. Um, we weren't. I wouldn't, yeah. All right. Uh, if we can go to slide 2593. Turn it on. All right, Alex, I'm showing you a still frame 2593 from Jawan's video. Um, is this what you saw when you described the two women standing in front of him? Correct. Were any of your friends behind him? No. 
um, in, in relation to this picture, where were your where was your group of friends located? I would say um, maybe uh, to the back and to the left. All right. Were you within arm's reach of him? Um, from this picture, no, I wasn't. Um, was anybody else in your group at this point within arm's reach of him? No. All right, so as he's being uh, yeah. scolded by these women, what did uh, you see Mr. Mew do? Um, say again? What did, what did he do? What, once this frame is up, once these women are standing in front of him, did you see him do something? Yeah, from what I remember, these two women were confronting him, and he uh, decided to punch one of the ladies, which I remember being the blonde one right in the face. You saw him do that? Yeah. Did you know that lady at all? No, I did not. Did you ever met her before in your life? No, I did not. Did you even did talk to her? Did she No. She was a complete stranger to you? Complete stranger? Yes. Um, what part of her body did he punch? The face. Do you remember, and I know this was two years ago, but do you remember which hand he used? The right hand. At that point, were you, do you know whether he used a closed fist or an open hand? I don't recall, but I know he striked her in the face. Right. And how did she react bodily? Um, well, I mean, a lot happened when, when that first happened, but from what I remember, she reacted how anyone else would react to getting hit in the face, is uh, maybe holding the, holding the part where she got hit. Did she, did she go down? I don't recall. Um, after Mr. Mew punched the blonde lady in the face, uh, did her friends react? They did. What happened? Um, well, after, after he punched her in the face, um, um, their friends hopped on him, uh, trying to pretty much retaliate from him hitting her in the face. Uh, was Mr. Mew struck in, likewise struck in the face? Um, if he saw? I don't recall. I knew he was getting hit. Uh, did you see him go down? Yes, I did. At any time while this fight had started, did you see him holding the uh, knife in his hand at all? No. Uh, did he eventually get back up? Yes, he did. Um, at that point, did you notice that there were some folks that were injured? Um, I'd say within five seconds, I realized that there were people stabbed. All right. <clears throat> Do you remember who, who the first person was that you saw stabbed? Um, I saw the blonde white lady get stabbed first. Not the same one who got punched, or the same one that got punched? Mm, I don't recall. I just do remember seeing a blonde white lady stabbed first. I can't tell you if it was the same one, but... Okay. I'm gonna, we're going to click at a still frame here. Um, still 2944. As you had watched the video and saw yourself laughing, at some point, was there a, a point in the video where your expression changes? Yes. Show a sequence of uh, slides. Start at 29:15. All right, Alex. Uh, this is uh, slide 2915 from the video. Uh, do you see yourself in that video? Yes, I do. Uh, is that you in the back center? Yep. Um, you're looking off to your right. Yes. Do have object? Kind of question, actually. Okay. Uh, which direction are you looking? Um, from where I'm, uh, from my point of view to my right, or a bit, pretty much like a, around like this direction. And we're gonna go through it here. Looking at slide 2944, you see yourself in that uh, still as well? Yep. What's the expression on your face? Um, completely shocked. Is What had you seen at that point that made you have that expression on your face? Um, I'd seen I'd seen a stab wound. Soy um, jack in it. That was actively bleeding and it was uh, nothing. Man or a woman? A uh, woman. Is that the, the, the woman that you testified earlier that you had seen get stabbed? Um, I would need to see again, but um, I don't completely recall. Um, were you injured in any way? No. 
Did Mr. Yu do anything to you? No, he didn't do anything to me. All right, um, did you ever lay a hand on him? No. <clears throat> At some point, did you realize that um, Isaac Schumann had been stabbed? Yes. Uh, did you actually see that happen? I didn't see the action of him getting stabbed, no. Uh, when did you first realize that he had been stabbed? Um, I noticed he got stabbed when he fell into the water. Right, were you near him when that happened? Uh, I was close. I was uh, a couple feet away from him. Um, what did you see um, on Isaac as he Oh, fell come on! He hard. Um, yeah, so when he, uh, when he fell into the water, I knew he was holding um, the left side of his chest, and so when I picked him up, I noticed he had a huge gash in his chest that was bleeding out. I'll play a portion of the video starting at the 2.15 mark. Ooh, we're actually going to watch the video here, Chad. Um, did you, once you realized that Isaac was injured, did you go to him? Yeah, I immediately grabbed him, uh, saw that he was injured and wasn't able to completely move, and um, that's when I decided uh, I needed to hold pressure onto the wound and, dra <laughs> and, and drag him to the shore. Did you do that? I did. Yeah, it's got to be really tough knowing you guys were acting like dickheads and your friend paid the price for it. And you created an environment when he felt egged on enough to get in the middle of a fist fight with a grown man. It's got to suck carrying that weight. It's got to eat at you. At some point, did some folks stop to help you care for Isaac? Yeah, some adults came by and helped us out. Did you, um, were you present while they were trying to render aid to Isaac? Yes, I was. Um, eventually, did um, EMTs and police arrive on the river? They did. Did you see them take Isaac off the river? Yes. Did you follow? Um, yeah, my uh, my sister my sister and my brother-in-law picked me up and uh, drove me to the uh, hospital where he was getting sent to. Um, while you were at the hospital uh, where they brought Isaac, uh, did you speak to police? Yes, I did. Uh, do you remember if you spoke to police on the side of the river as well? Yep. Did you tell them what happened? Yes. All right, we can go to the, the screen. We're playing the video starting at 2.15. Alex, I'm going to ask you to review this. I know it's going to be difficult. The beginning of the video, was that you running towards where Isaac was in the water? Yes. Did anyone else um, run towards Isaac um, besides for you? Yeah. Who else? Owen Pelquin. Was he in your group that day? Yes, he was. I know it's been almost two years, but do you remember the face of the person who did this? Yes, I do. Uh, do you see him in the courtroom here? Yeah. You point him out, say what he's wearing? It's right there. What's he wearing? Um, suit jacket, dress pants, brown shoes. Far left of the table from your perspective? Correct. Um, while you were at the hospital, um, is that when you and your friends were informed that I was No record reflect away? identifies yes. the defendant? What? I don't have any questions. God, Sharafasi's Sh like, Sharafasi must just sign up to be like, look, I'll do all the asshole work. Sharafasi's like, I'm gonna fuck with each one of these kids. Here we go. Here we go, chat. Also, 263 people watching on YouTube. Thank you guys for being here. Yes, he doesn't think he did anything wrong and he thinks he's the villain, yes. <clears throat> oh, Bella, I, I agree. These kids have been traumatized. 
these kids have been traumatized. I understand, but he's being traumatized. He's traumatized because, and he doesn't, he doesn't comprehend it yet. They all got drunk and we're fucking around. Well, that's why it's like the Johnny Cash song says, don't take your guns to town. Don't get liquored up and fuck around in public. Sometimes this happens. Yep, the same attorney. Yep, the same attorney. Guy who broke down Gage Groyskrutz. <clears throat> and Bella, that's all I'm trying to say, though. You know, I'm pretty sure he realizes that. I don't know if he fully comprehends. He's so mad. He, he was so mad staring. It's like... Yeah. Well. And Brewberries for five, five Australian dollary doodles. Says drinking, stabbing, and praying around with shirt off. His parents are probably so disappointed and told him, I told you your friends were no good. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. And, uh, so here we are. Thank you so much for the super chat. But let's, let's, uh, let's get at it. Let's let Age of 47 do his thing. Mr. Bank, you're a you're a student at St. John's. Correct. Okay. Um, you go to school with um, Joanne Cockfield. I do. Okay. Are you guys roommates or anything? No. Just just friends. Yes. Okay. And you um, acknowledge that you provided an interview to police in this case. Is that right? Yes. And that interview was given um, the day of. The incident is that true? It was. Okay. Is your memory better on the day of the incident, or is it better 21 months later? I would say it's just about the same. Okay. Um, oh, this is going to agree that in your interview that you gave on the day of the incident to police, you never mentioned to them that you had a conversation or heard Mr. Mew talking about little girls in any way, right? Yes. You never told him that, do you? I didn't. I was um, I was still in shock. Uh, there was a lot of little details that uh, could have explained. That sounds like some witness tampering. Your witnesses are colluding. Interesting, isn't it? Kind of funny how that works. You're, you're at school with your bro, and you're like, yeah, yeah, whoopsie doodle. Another whoopsie doodle. That's guys. We just got whoopsie doodles everywhere. But there was still just whoopsie doodles. Whoopsie doodles. So, yeah. So, here we go. A lot going through my head, and I, I couldn't possibly process every single little detail that happened, but I tried to give them the best I could at that moment. Well, the good news is we've had 21 months since then. In those 21 months, did you ever follow up with them and say, you know, I left something out. He told me he was looking for little girls. Did you ever do that? Um, I made sure to tell my team that um, a couple weeks before this happened, when we were talking. You told the prosecution a couple weeks before this happened, before this testimony? Yes. That that had happened? Yes. Okay. You never tell the police that? Right? That could become a discovery violation if he, submit, if he says, I told the prosecutor. He says, my team. If he said that and the prosecutors are like, no, he didn't. And because that means like if he did and that's not in any notes or anything that they talk about with him, where his testimony deviates from the reports, I'm not sure that came up like that. Mm. Uh oh. No, not at those moments, no. Okay. And you never follow up with them. And You're the them. rat, right. chat. No, I didn't. You're the rat. What you tell them is. You see a guy snorkeling by himself, and we're just saying, oh, he's snorkeling by himself, right? That's what you tell police. Yes. Is that true? Um, yeah, he looked like he was about to do some snorkeling activities, yeah. Okay. And then you just say he was chirping back at us, and we were chirping at him, right? Yeah, I made a little joke, like, um, the water's super short, you know, like, what you're looking for, maybe just a little, just a little chirping, like, yeah, the water's short, you know, maybe it's not, maybe, like, I don't know, I don't know anything about snorkeling, it was a little joke. Okay. And does he respond to you? Yes, he did. What does he say? I asked him what he was doing, uh, looking in the water, he said he was some, along the lines of, I'm looking for little girls or something. Okay. 
He never said that. Right? It's yeah. not. And Juwan Cockfield has testified, and he agreed that your your group was antagonizing Mr. Mew. Did you agree with that? Yeah. Would you agree that, at least on tape, the loudest antagonizer is Juwan Cockfield? Do you agree with that? Mm, he was the close to the phone. I mean, you can hear his voice the most. Yes. Right? And do you recall... Um, Juwan Cockfield on video saying grown men cannot have sex with little girls and calling him a raper. Remember that? I don't recall. If you could just listen to this, um, Mr. Ring, you can watch it too, obviously, but listen. Now, before we start, can you bring it up? Yep, these are teenagers thinking they're smart. Is that you? That is. Okay. Sorry, I pulled up the wrong video. Can you turn it around? Apologize. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Bangs. You see any little girls around there? I did not. Okay. Are, there, are there any little girls underwater? Are there any little girls in the water? Is that you, Mr. Bang? Yes. Okay. Grown man, put out sex with little girl. Who the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You remember that now? Yes. Okay. And at that point, Mr. Mew's not bothering you guys at all, is he? No, he's walking away. Okay. Walking away, and you guys, uh, at least Mr. Cockfield, um, starts calling him a raper. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you tell police that you, you say, we almost started calling him a predator and a pedophile, right? You didn't almost, you did, right? Yes. So you have no idea why he's there, right? No. And you guys take to just humiliating this man, true? He wouldn't say what we said if he didn't say what he said. I know, but as we've already established, you don't tell that to the police and it's not on the video, right? Say again? We've already established, you don't tell the police that he said that, and it's not in any video that was recorded. Oh, objection, Your Honor. That's been asked and answered. It has been. We're plowing the same ground. Okay. So, do you, when he walks up to your tubes, um, you said that you were, if I have it right, you were very scared. Is that right? Yes, I would say he, um, he ran up to us, and I was scared. Okay. Did your fear dissipate as time went on? Or did you remain very scared throughout the incident? I was still internally as scared as I was. He walks around your tubes and starts walking away from your group, is that right? Maybe a few steps. 
He turns his back to your group. He turns his back to your group, yes? Yes. Okay. And at that point, you just want to get by? You just want to be able to get past him? Is that fair? Yeah, we were floating down still. Um, from where he was, it would just be like this. Like, you know, we were just moving along the river, going with the flow, until he ran up to our tubes and stopped us. I'm gonna need you to listen to my question. My question was, what you're hoping for is that you're able to get past him. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And there comes a point where this blonde woman that you've mentioned, she's testified, Madison Cohen, where she starts to come over, right? Yes. And he moves from where you guys are over to her, doesn't he? Yes. Okay. He gives you that path that you're looking for to float on by, right? Yes. You don't take it, though, do you? He already stopped us. That's not my question. My question is, you've admitted he gives you a path and you don't take it, right? Yes. You stay, right? Yes. You stay, don't they? Yes. Okay. And you guys, who have the ability to go past him, you, do you hear this woman yelling at him? I do. Okay. And she never tells you guys to go past, does she? I don't recall. Okay. Um, do you hear Joanne Cockfield tell her he's looking for little girls? I don't recall. Okay. Ryan Nelson describes her as getting, and Joanne did too, by the way, as getting the blonde girl, as getting in Mr. Mew's face. Did you agree with that? Yeah, she was face to face with him. Okay. Ryan Nelson said that she was in his personal space. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. I've asked some of uh, your group to listen. I don't, you can watch, but you need to listen. To hear if you can hear on this video someone say the words, you've got 10 seconds, okay? So I just want you to listen to it and tell me if you hear it. You can gotcha. hear it twice if you can. I'm going to object you to let him answer the, the first question about well, someone did. in his group said that. Sustained. Can you ask? Sure. Go back and just clean up. Do you say that? I do not. Okay. You hear someone's, on this recording, you hear someone say it, right? On the video, yes. Okay. <clears throat> You'd agree that you don't believe it's Juwan Cockfield because he's holding the camera, right? No. So, fair to say it's someone else in your group, yes? I don't recall if it was our group. Okay. The other group wasn't over there at that point, right? I, I didn't know where that point of the video was. Okay. Um, um, as the blonde girl comes over, she comes over with a couple other people, is that right? Yes. Okay, so, and at that point you believe that Mr. Mew is a wall. True. Yes. So, uh, when she comes over, she brings a couple people with her, so it's, and you have six, so at that point it's at least eight, nine people versus one, right? Is that fair? Yep. Um, Ryan Nelson said that changed his, his fear level, that the more people that showed up, 
when Wes hit his, his fear decreased and so did Juwan Cockfield. Is that how you felt? Um, yeah, I would say it slightly got better, but I mean, there was still commotion in front of us. I mean, it, it helped that a different group came to help us out, but um, I mean, the threat level was still there from what I saw. You don't see Mr. Mew with a knife, right? I don't. Okay, so the threat level, you have nine people around you, he's by himself, and you felt the threat level was high. Yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you um, number 442440, four, 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 okay? Is that you? Yes. Is that you? Are, are you in this picture? Do you appear to be concerned or afraid in that picture? No. Okay. And is it fair to say that you're not afraid or concerned because the numbers of people have increased in part? Say again? You initially said that you were very afraid and very scared, right? You just said on that photo that you don't appear, appear to be very afraid or very scared. True? Uh, yeah. My question to you is, is that because the number of people that have shown up has increased? Yeah. Yes? So the number, the more people that show up to assist, the less afraid you're becoming. Yes. You are, right? Okay. And you would agree that Mr. Me is not doing anything in terms of being, at that point, being physically aggressive to anyone, right? Yep. He's not, he's not saying anything aggressive either, is he? I don't recall. If you would have said anything aggressive, do you think you would have, I know you didn't remember everything, but do you think you might have put it in your statement? Uh, possibly, I don't know, I don't completely remember what's going on through my head when I was getting my statements. It's... Did you ever ask to maybe do it another time when you felt a little better? i uh, not. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you agree there comes a point when you and your group come around to Mr. Mew and are pointing at him and calling him a predator, right? Yes. Okay. And you're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Uh, I'd phrase it as calling him out. Calling him out. That's, that's why you were doing it? Yes. Okay. And in terms of the blonde girl that you say um, you see get hit, um, I want to make sure I got it right. You said right hand? Yes. Okay. And today, I don't want to misquote your testimony, punch or slap? Uh, let's say, I'd say punch, but I completely, I, I don't know all the way. I, I'd say I'd estimate a punch. Okay. So, <clears throat> fair to say that if he hits her with his right hand, he hits her on the left side of her face. Right? Yep. So he, he hits her on this side of her face. This side, yes. Yeah, okay. There's been various statements on how it happened. Uh, Juwan Cockfield referred to it as a hook. Is that how you would refer to it? Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty good punch. Okay, so pretty good punch with his right hand, punching her in the left side of her face. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that he was holding a knife in his right hand? After the video, I did, yes. Okay. So your testimony under oath today is that he, and he would have had to punch her, right? He couldn't slap her. How would you slap her holding a knife, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So with a knife in his hand, with a closed fist, he makes a, a hook motion. Got and him! In the face. That's your testimony? Yes. Okay. You told police that he slapped her in the face, didn't you? Yeah. So, under oath today, you're changing your testimony. So after I, uh, yeah. Because your memory's better today than it was 21 months ago. Say it's about the same or a little better. Okay. So, he's holding the knife, comes across her like this, and punches her in the face. That's your testimony. Yes? Yes. Okay. And... You agree you told police... He slapped her to the ground, right? Yes. You're saying that's that, that's a lie? Well, I've seen the video. But I mean, to, according to my statement, that's just from what I remembered when, when the moment happened. So are you, are you tailoring your testimony today based on what you've seen on that video? No. 
But from what I remember is that she, she didn't fall, but she did get hit in the face. Right, but it's much different than what you, what you told the police that day, right? Once again, I was in a lot of shock, and there was a lot of details that I completely didn't process at the moment. I apologize, a lot of processing but failures. that was the best I could have gave at that moment at that time. And I think you told police when you see um, Mr. Mew get hit, you believe that he's, quote, almost knocked out, right? Yeah, he fell to the floor. Okay. But in your opinion on that day, he's hit to the point that you believe that he might be knocked unconscious. Yes, yeah, so when I see someone fall to the floor after they get, I can assume that they might, they might have fell unconscious or they might have gone dazed. Okay. And certainly falling into the water unconscious, that would be dangerous, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. And he's a big guy, isn't he? Like on that day, he was a big guy. Yes. All right. So um, when you see a, 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 a man the size of Mr. Mew get punched in the face, knocked in the water, you believe uh, potentially unconscious, uh, he's getting his butt kicked, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I'll say he got, he got hit, yep. I mean, he's getting his butt kicked, right? There's multiple people hitting him. Objection to the term multiple. Multiple. Okay. Overruled. You can agree or disagree with the characterization. It's cross-examination. Can you uh, give me the characterization again? He's getting hit multiple times. You'd agree with that? Yes. He's getting uh, hit, knocked on the ground, and then hit again across the face. You'd agree with that? Yes. Right? You see on the video him getting pushed from behind, right? Uh, I don't recall if that was on the video or not. Okay. And my question to you was, do you believe he's getting his butt kicked? Right? Yes. Okay. And you were asked if he did anything to you. And you said no, right? No. Nope. You didn't do anything to him either, did you? Correct. This is what he's saying, and whoever got hurt deserved it. One question. You agree that when he gets knocked into the ground, when he gets knocked on the ground in the water, you'd agree at that point he's surrounded by people. You'd agree with that. People have moved around him at that point, right? Yeah. He doesn't have a place to go at that point. True? True. Nothing else. Mr. Said? Um, Alex, uh, Mr. Trops, he'd asked you about Mr. Mew getting his butt kicked. Um, when he stood up out of the river, did you see any did you see him bleeding anywhere? No. Did you see any marks anywhere? No. His face looked swollen at all? Not that I recall. In contrast, did you see other folks bleeding? Yes. you remember how many? At that point when he... From what I remember, I saw the lady who got stabbed, um, the man with the stomach open, and my friend Isaac. But there was blood all over the water. Did any of those people who were stabbed at any point have a knife in their hands? No. Nothing further. Mr. Trofson. Thank you, Mr. Fang. You may step down. Is he excused? No. All right. Please see the witness coordinator on your way out. She'll give you additional instructions. Uh, I understand lunch uh, has arrived, uh, so I think this will be a great place to break. Um, before you go downstairs, members of the jury, uh, do not begin your deliberations over the lunch hour. You may talk with one another, but you cannot talk about Charlie here set up his own trap, uh, yes. Do not interact with the attorneys, with the media, uh, parties, members of the public. Uh, do not conduct any independent research. Um, and do not uh, attempt to conduct any investigation. We will reconvene in one hour, so that'll be 12.45. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. This is Patty Collins. No, those are. Screamer says Bronca disagrees. Why? I'm going to take my cord back. Please be seated. Guys, what does Bronca Before say? I haven't listened lunch, to him. Um, is there anything that needs to be put on the record outside the presence of the jury? Not from the state. From the state. No, sir. All right. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you in an hour. Yes, 1245. So, 
Okay, guys, we're going to keep going. What does Bronca say? Because I haven't heard his take on this. If you guys have listened to him say so, because I don't know what's there. Um, He's sitting there thinking I should just play World of Warcraft. Yeah. <laughs> so he can't throw a punch yet. This is, uh, yeah, this is just... Bronca says total self-defense. I mean, it's good, but there's a lot of issues still. This still is optically not the best thing. I mean, there's some things that don't work right here. I mean, on its face, he looks like a loon. Remember, like I said, this is not 100% shut and closed, but it's going to help. Yeah, I mean, I'm very pro-defense, but this is not a... Uh, this, ain't, this ain't money in the bank yet, chat. Anybody who tells you it's money in the bank is not playing you straight. Let's see here. Uh, oh, just about an hour and... Oh, wow, they actually got a deep... Oh, they got a good lunch break. They got over an hour and 45 minutes almost on this. Wait, do they... Okay, yeah, that's what I about to say. I'm like, that's where we ended. They got about an hour and a little extra. Here we go. Oh, we got to hit play. He's have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smith, or uh, Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Quentin Carlson. And you spell last name? C-A-R-L-S-O-N. Can you go by the name sometimes? Q. And how old are you? 50, 50, sorry. And are you, can you look over at that board there? Uh, I can't see it, I'm sorry. Well, here, actually, I'll hand it to you. Are you in the yellow shirt there? I am. Okay. And so you were two being with these folks on July 30, 2022? Yeah, my birthday. Was it your was that your actual birthday? Yes, sir. Was two is was two being on the river kind of a tradition for your birthday? It it was. Or something you, my wife had started before she passed, and so it was our sixth year going down the river. And had you tubed down that river before? I had, but not in years. Normally we went down the Namakagan, but due to some issues we had there, we changed the venue. And while you were tubing, at some point did something catch your or your group's attention? Yes. What was that? Um, we had come around to Ben and noticed uh, a group of teens that were calling and beckoning, beckoning us to come help them. Um, at that point, um, I had told my boys to stop our tubes and I observed for a minute. And uh, at that point, I saw Mr. Mew charge their tubes and stop the tubes from progressing down the river. I saw him acting in an aggressive and, and drunken manner, um, and I just thought that it probably was going to end badly if it didn't de-escalate. Uh, I asked my two boys to go over there and uh, make sure nothing happened. I never dreamed it would turn into what it did. And what was your... Did you have a specific fear regarding escalating, whether that was Mew or the boys, both, one or the other? Um, at, the, at that time, the boys were all sitting in their tubes, but the way he was acting and the way he was 
um, you know, he was st literally standing, the tubes had kind of wrapped around his legs, and he was stopping the tubes from going down the river. And I thought at some point, you know, the boys at that point were still calling out for us to come help him, but I thought if those boys get off their tubes, they're going to beat the brakes off of this guy. And he's drunk and, uh, you know, obviously wasn't making good decisions. So um, we own a bar, and uh, my boys are good at de-escalating fights and calming people down. And so I told Tony to go over there, and I told Dante to follow him. Um, the girls were the first off their tubes and had run over there ahead of it. But uh, it was Tony and Dante that I had asked to go over there. And did you, at some point, did the incident turn physical? Um, it did. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I was still across the river. Uh, the river was very rocky at that point, and uh, I, I don't walk so well. Um, and uh, but Maddie had come running to me. He punched me. He punched me. And the next thing I knew, I had a string of boys running at me. You know, first my son Tony, and then Dante yelling, "Dad, he stabbed me." And I just remember thinking, "Stab you? Stab you with what?" You know. I, I mean, I just no way in I, hell I am I canceling. And, did I just you didn't realize what was going on until I saw AJ literally disemboweled? Um, and at that point, it just erupted into chaos, and we tried to get the kids to the riverbank. And uh, Dante went running up river for help. I mean, it really just it was a matter of seconds, and it, the whole thing had changed. So. And today you used um, Nikolai Muse, I think you called him Mew, but fair, you didn't know his name at the time. No, no, I had no idea who he was. You didn't know the other group of tubers either? No. So you, did you, were you kind of over by your tube still? I was still on my tube until Maddie came running over. It was after she said that he punched me, he punched me, and I started looking at her face, and um, and then literally within seconds, you know, the boys were coming at me, and I was trying to assess their injuries and trying to make sense of it all, you know, in mere moments. Did you see anything on Maddie's face of injury? Yeah, I mean, her eye was red and swollen. Like so, skin around the eye, or what do you mean? I mean, her cheek was all puffed out. I mean, it was clear that she had been struck. Given how far away you are, you didn't actually see any of the stabbings or the... No, I saw Dante strike Mr. Mew, um, and I had yelled out, you know, to stop, because I didn't know what was going on at that point. Uh, that was prior to knowing that he had hit Maddie, and, and prior to uh, um, prior to knowing that anyone had been stabbed. Um, Did you see where Nikolai went? I didn't. I honestly was, I was worried about my kids. I, I wasn't paying attention to where he went. I, I, I almost, you know, I, I was looking at my kids, not looking up river, not looking at what was going on. Um, AJ's injuries were so severe, and I hate to admit it, but I was worried about my son Tony, and my son Tony was taking care of AJ, and there was nothing going to pull Tony off of AJ, and so. Um, I, I really was just very focused on, on Tony. I know I had sent Sheena and a couple others, uh, Sheena and uh, Janelle, upriver to after Dante to make sure he was okay and to try and get us some help. You know, um, there I knew that shortly downriver there was a uh, sheriff's stand where they monitored the river. I just didn't know how far it was. I'd actually thought it was closer than it was, and so I hoped that they were able to get a hold of the sheriff there. Um, Nothing else, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Mr. Carlson? Hey. I want to ask you some questions about your birthday, okay? Sure. Um, it wasn't just your birthday, it was also celebration of Madison Cohen's birthday as well, correct? Um, no, that, not that I'm aware. Would it surprise you if Madison Cohen testified that it was a celebration of her birthday? No, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. I mean, do you know her very well? 
Through my kids. Okay. I've, I've gotten to know her much better since this incident. Sure. Um, on that day, though, fair to say it was you and your friends. There was a, including you, there was like eleven of you. Is that right? I mean, I can count it for you. It was two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of us. Yeah. Um, and the eleven of you were celebrating, correct? Correct. And part of that celebration involved consuming alcohol. <sighs> I get where you're going with that, but the reason we went to the Apple River, I put a limit on how much alcohol the kids could bring because we'd had a problem with drinking on the Namakog, and, and I didn't want a bunch of drunken people at my birthday that year. Sure, understood. But in the past, you... Uh, I wasn't drinking at all, so... Understood. Um, a couple of things there. So you said that in the past you had trouble with people maybe in your group drinking too much when they were on the river. Absolutely. Okay. And when people were drinking too much on the river, in your experience, that caused problems, for lack of a better term? Well, we had the group size had grown to 50, 60 people in the past, and so we wanted to keep it a small, controlled group. Uh, and I'm asking about the previous time. I'm going to get back to July 30th, but you sure. mentioned something about the Namakog, and so I want to ask you some about that. Make sure. sense? That experience of yours was when... It goes to his credibility about what he's saying about today and his impressions. It was raised indirect. I'll let, <clears throat> give you a little bit of latitude to explore it. Your experience uh, on the Namakagan was that when people on the river tubing drink too much, it causes problems. Yes. Okay. So now back to July 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that day, you're with your 11 people and everyone's celebrating, correct? Okay. Yes? I wasn't there. I'm trying to gather facts. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know what you mean by celebrating. We were quietly floating down the river until we were called upon. Lots of different ways to celebrate, correct? Sure. Sometimes it's just you celebrate with your words, right? Sure. Sometimes people consume alcohol as part of that celebration, correct? Absolutely. Sounds like you weren't doing that, right? That's correct. But other people in your group were, correct? Yes. And in fact, there's a photo that you have in front of you which they're actually consuming alcohol in the photo, correct? That is correct. Is part of that photo in order to document not only the celebration, but the consumption of alcohol on that day on the river? I don't think anyone was trying to document the consumption of alcohol. It's just a coincidence that of the people in that photo, four of the people are actually consuming alcoholic beverages while the photo's taken? Yeah, I, I guess I don't think it was, I don't know that there was any exact intent in that. Um, you know, they were having fun. Sure, and part of having fun was for them to drink alcohol, right? I, I, I think you're putting a lot of emphasis on it when the emphasis wasn't there. I appreciate that maybe the emphasis wasn't. I'm just trying to gather the fact. They were drinking alcohol, yes? Uh, yes, we've stated that a couple times. Okay. Um, now, as you know, there's a, a couple of videos involving what we're here to talk about in this trial. Is that right? Yes. Have you seen any of the videos regarding what I happened? I have not seen it yet. Okay. Um, so there's some things that you've said that are maybe in the video, and so I'm trying to put things into context with you, even though you haven't seen the video, if that makes sense, okay? Sure. Um, what I gather from you is you were watching, and at some point you see Nikolai Mew approach uh, this group of six teenagers. Is that right? Charge, yeah. Okay. You use the word charge. Whether there's a video on it, we'd get to decide that, correct? But that's what you remember, correct? Yes. Okay. And as he goes towards them, he's coming from upstream, walking downstream. Is that right? Um, no, he would have been downstream coming upstream. Yeah, sending his sons okay. into our coolers. So your memory is he's coming. He was in front of them and walked, ran back up river at them. Okay, that's what your memory is. Well, that's what happened. It may or may not have been what happened, but that's what your memory is, right? Okay. Yes. Um, you would agree if we were going to rely upon your memory or the video, the video might be more reliable? Certainly. Okay. Um, at some point, you look over there, and um, Nikolai Mew and these six, uh, did you know how many there were other than you said a group? No, they were sitting in their tubes, so I mean, I, and I didn't take a head count. Sure. If I told I, you that there's been identified six people in that group, would that surprise you? No. Sound about right? Certainly, I would have thought there was more, honestly. Okay. Um, and at some point, you look over to there, and you see 
Nikolai Mu standing in between the tubes in the direction that the tubes are trying to go downstream. That's what your testimony is. Correct. Okay. Um, Show you what, can I push permission to approach? Yes. Show you what I've marked as exhibit number 101. You see that, sir? Yes. And you see on the bottom of this it says upstream? Okay. And you see up there it says downstream? Correct. And there's a red circle that says G2. Yep. And then there's six red dots over here. Do you see that? Yep. And then there's a blue dot with an M in it, correct? Correct. So if I were to tell you that G2 represents your group, number two, and that G1 represents the group of the six people, and the blue dot is Mr. Mew, does that make sense to you? Yes, I would say it's a little inaccurate, but okay. we were directly across the river, not behind them. Okay. I'd move this G2 up to here? Correct. Is that more accurate? Yes. The six dots over here, does that appear to be accurate? You, know, you, weren't, you weren't documenting, but does it look like what you saw? At what point? Um, because sure. during my viewing, they were they were all still sitting in their tubes. It wasn't until you're after not wrong, Madison you're not had been wrong. struck that everyone got up out of their tubes. Okay. And Madison was running towards me. So at that point, I really didn't see that. I, I was watching the kids. I had lost. I think I'm going to go back to the stats and leave this up here. Okay. Um, so is it your testimony that the six? The, the other group, I'm going to call them the, the teenagers, the six teenagers, they stayed in their tube until Maddie came over there? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, they, were, I, they were sitting in their tubes calling for help. Okay. So your memory is two things. One is they were sitting in their tubes until Maddie came. Agreed? Yes. And your memory is that they were calling for help. Agreed? Agreed. And if the plane of that video contradicts that, would you agree your memory is wrong? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if it contradicts it. Um, what you remember is that whatever you saw, it raised concerns that you wanted to make sure that something got de-escalated, correct? Correct. And so as a result of that, you told your two sons, Dante Carlson and Anthony Carlson, to go over there, correct? Correct. And I believe you, you spoke with the police about that, right? Yes. And what you told the police was, I was worried about that group of kids against one guy. I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him and something bad was going to happen to the old guy. Is that what you told the police? Absolutely. And the reason you told that to police is because that was what you were thinking. That was your actual worry, correct? Right? I mean, that was, that was my concern. And my concern was because he wasn't walking away. He was drunk and he was absolutely being aggressive to those kids. At one point, their tubes had wrapped around his legs and he was just refusing to walk away from them, even though they were screaming for anyone on the river to help them. Okay. Again, I appreciate that that's your memory. I want to unpack some of that. You said um, that it was your impression that Nikolai Mew was drunk, correct? Yes. And that was based upon your observation from 150 feet away for about 90 seconds? Yes. Okay. You don't actually know if he had consumed how much alcohol, do you? Well, I've had a lot of experience observing drunk people. Sure. That certainly fit the bill. Okay. But my question, sir, was you did not know if at all he had drank any alcohol. Agreed? I didn't know, in fact, he had drank any alcohol. Sure. Um, you, what you saw is essentially him perhaps uh, unsteady on his feet in the water, correct? No. Well, you couldn't smell him, agreed? No. And you didn't observe him drinking alcohol, agreed? Agreed. You couldn't hear him say anything, agreed? Agreed. You didn't hear him have slurred speech, agreed? Agreed. So whatever your conclusion was as to his drunkenness, it must have been based upon how you observed his body moving around. Agreed? It was more his behavior. Okay. And his behavior is your observations of his body moving around, correct? Again, it wasn't because he was unsteady on his feet. Okay. It was the way he charged at the tubes. It was the just the way he carried himself. Okay. And again, this is all based upon your memory, right? Yes. All right. So you sent the boys over there because you didn't want an old man, I think as you said here, 
uh, to get the brakes beat off of him, correct? That is correct. I think we've heard different expressions here. Maybe uh, would that be similar to to get a beat down, correct? Yes. Or maybe some other people call it uh, to get beat up. Would that be the same? That would be the same. And I think one witness it called it uh, getting his butt kicked. Same thing? Sure. Those are all kind of interchangeable terms. The same thing. All right. That's what you were worried about, right? Yes. And part of that was based upon the fact that you saw that he was one man and there were these six teenagers, correct? No. I just thought it was because he was drunk. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you have been worried about one drunk man on the river if there was one teenager standing there? I don't know if I would have or not. Okay. The words that you used to the police was, I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him, correct? I was. Ooh. And the reason that you asked, uh, used the word gang up on him is because you were concerned he was outnumbered. Agreed? Again, that wasn't my thought process. Okay. You just so. used the word gang up even though it wasn't your thought process? Oh. Yes. Okay. And oh. Then, um, oh! I thought he would continue to provoke them until they did something. Okay. And this is, again, your observations from 100 feet away? Sure. Did you hear any words that he said? No. All you heard was the boys screaming for help? Correct. Did you hear the boys say he's a predator? I heard him say that he's a pedophile. Okay. I didn't give him much credence at the time. Okay. You had no reason to believe that, correct? No. Um, you, had no you had no basis to know why that they were screaming pedophile, correct? No. But you agree that your hearing them scream at this one man on the river pedophile, that increased your worries for that one man, correct? Sure. And that part of that is, is because when you call somebody a name that dehumanize them, dehumanizes them, that might mean that crowd is more willing to be violent against that person they've dehumanized. Fair to say? Speculation. Overruled. You'd agree with that? No. So the word pedophile to you didn't have any particular concern for you? No. It was the same type of word as jerk or some other pejorative term? I believe the kids were just throwing it out there, yes. Okay. And you didn't believe the kids were speaking the truth? I, I had no... Again, I wasn't worried about what they were speaking or what they were saying. I just saw a situation and didn't want it to escalate. And as a result of that, you sent your two boys over there, correct? Correct. And, you, and Dante and Anthony, they're not teenagers, right? No. They're adults, correct? Correct. And you thought those, your two sons, would be able to de-escalate the situation, correct? I did. Um, did you observe Dante go over there? I did. Um, did you observe Madison go over there? I did. And when you saw Madison go over there, did you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison? No, what I saw was Madison walk between the tubes and Nikolai and tell him to move on down the river. Okay. Can I approach you, Judge? Yes. You're welcome to use the fresh markers in the package. This is going to be good, Chad. Here we go. Getting this ready for the. Uh, okay. Getting this ready for. So I'm going to make some drawings up on here. The eclipse. See it. Um, Judge would be okay to him stand there to observe if he needs to. If he needs, can you see there? I think I can see it. Okay. Can the jury see? Can everyone on the jury see the. <laughs> there is a sweet spot in this courtroom where everyone will be able to see. I'm happy for you to tell me that, Joe. I'm wondering where it is. Oh, okay. Where you're <laughs> I think you'll have to push it all the way up against the wall. Okay. All right. Downstream on the top mm -hmm. and upstream down here. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. If I use that. It's backwards from where I'm sitting now versus sure where I was then. So. At that time, you were over in this position where I had G2 before. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And then. Six 
tubes were over in this direction. Is that fair? Correct. Randomly, but does that look about right? Yep. And then um, Mr. Mew, would he be in this position? No, he was directly in front of the tubes. Right here? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. Is that what you saw? I mean, maybe 68 feet in front of him if we're okay. talking spatial distance, but I mean, sure. he was but indirect. Generally that position? Correct. All right. And what you then saw was Madison Cohen come from this position and stand in between him and the tubes? Correct. So if I put an MC here, would that be correct? Yep. She came from over that way? Yep. That's what you saw? Correct. Guys, I've been on mute. What did you see her do then? She was pointing downriver and telling him to go, 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 get the fuck out of here, go. Okay. Did you hear her use the F word? I did. Okay. She was that loud? Yeah, because he wasn't, I mean, he was just staring at her blankly at that point. Okay. And you could see that from over here? Yes. And did then Dante come over there too? I don't remember the order that everyone went over there after Did that. eventually Dante get over there? Yes. Did Riley Madison get over there? Yes. Did Anthony Carlson get over there? Yes. Did A.J. Carlson get over there? Uh, A.J. is not a Carlson. I apologize. Sorry. A.J. Martin? Yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. I'd love um, to call him my own. But. <laughs> appreciate that. And then um, Janelle, uh, what's Janelle's last name? It starts uh, with a D, right? Yeah. Uh, she called Janelle D. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. And then there was a Gabby K as well? Yeah. All right. So and I believe all there was another, there was some, there was some of the kids' friends I didn't know. So. Okay. And all they right, were all now. in the same area around Madison? Um, I, I don't know where they were standing. In, I mean, they were behind and to the right of Madison. I think some people had said they created, told the police, that they created a wall between Nikolai and you and the tubers. Is that what That's you possible. Call? Is that what you remember? I, 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 I don't. I don't remember. Okay. But we know we have at least, if I put a Riley Madsen, one person somewhere in this direction. I think Riley had actually walked up and stood next to her. Okay. So Riley can be here? Yeah. And then Dante's over in this area? I, again, I, I, I don't remember. Okay. Can I just, I mean, I, I know I'm just trying to, Make sure we have enough bodies over here, right? So can you put a big D here for Dante? Sure. And then we have uh, Tony's there someplace? Yep. AJ's there someplace? Yeah, yep. And I think Scotty stayed back and held the tubes with me. Scott's over here. Yeah. Gabby K's over here somewhere? I don't remember where Gabby was. Okay, well maybe just put her in the middle for now with a question mark. Yep. Chanel D is somewhere over there? Yeah, I, again, I don't remember. Okay, so somewhere here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people from your group walked over there. That's how you remember it. Correct. Okay. And then there was the six teenagers, correct? Correct. So at least as we have it drawn here, at some point it looks like there's six of them, five of them, maybe two more that are standing there in Mr. Mew space, right? Or in front of him, I should say. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say they were in his space, but... Okay. In front of him. Yeah. Sure. Other witnesses have described Madison Cohn as being in Nikolai Mew's face. Would you agree with that? I don't object to the line. I think they just asked the witness and not if they agree with the previous testimony. Sustained. Do you agree the question? Do you agree that Madison Cohn was up in Nick Mew's face? I guess I wouldn't describe it like that. If somebody uh, else described it that way, would they be lying? Objection to this. Sustained. During this time when you're making these observations, you're still sitting in your tube over there at G2, is that right? I think I might have stood up out of my tube by that point, but yes, I was still with the tubes. Okay. Uh, fair to say you did not see Mr. Mew um, touch Madison Cohn. Agreed? That is correct. Um, it was reported to you later by others, correct? It was reported to me by Maddie. Sure. And also by others, correct? Uh, you know, I don't think anybody else told me. Well, didn't you originally tell the police
Didn't you originally tell the police, uh, in fact, do uh, you remember speaking with investigator John Schultz? Schultz? Do you remember speaking with him? I remember speaking to an investigator at the hospital, yeah. I told you this man over here with the badge on and the uh, tie and the gray shirt with the folder in front of him is investigator John Schultz. Does that refresh your memory as the person you may have spoke with? No, okay. I'll take your word for it. I mean, uh, you spoke with a police officer at the hospital, correct? Correct. And you told the police officer she came, and I think you're referring to Maddie. Mm -hmm. give you, she came. The next thing I know, she's like, he punched me, Quentin. He punched me. They said he slapped her, but whatever. Do you remember saying that to Mr. I don't Schultz? remember saying that, but I may, I may have. I won't argue that I didn't. And if you did say that, it was because that was the truth. Agreed? Agreed. And the truth on that day was that Maddie told you he punched her, but others said they saw a slap. Correct? Correct. You didn't see anything, correct? I did not. And as you sit here today, you don't know who said slap. You just know some people said slap, correct? Correct. And the only person that told you, excuse me, let me say that. When you spoke with the police, when you told the police that Maddie was punched, you told her that's the only person that said that was Maddie, correct? Correct. And then you used they as a plural to say what the other people said, correct? Correct. Has anyone since then told you that they observed any of that group, Riley Matson, uh, Dante Carlson, Tony Carlson, AJ Martin, Gabby K, or Janelle D, told you that they saw a slap and not a punch? I don't recall that anyone has. I don't recall having a conversation. It wasn't, uh, obviously there was more severe injuries and those were the concern. Sure. And it was clear that she had been struck. You could see the mark on her face. You, you uh, said that before. Let me ask you some questions about that. Sure. Where did you see that mark on her face? Uh, it was that her cheek was visibly swollen. There was pictures taken and, and uh, they were offered, but I don't know whatever happened to them. Okay. And we'll get to the pictures. Let me just put that aside here for a second. Um, can you point on your face where it is you saw the mark on her face? No. Okay. You don't have a memory of that? I remember her cheek and, and around her eye being swollen. When you say you have a memory, I mean... I don't know do if you, it was her left or right cheek. I don't... So, so. do you have a memory of actually seeing it? Because when I have a memory, I see a picture there, and then I could see your face, and I could see the mark on one side or the other. You don't have that in your head right now? She was coming at me, so I would say it would have been the left side of her face. Okay. So... Um, Again, it's not a quiz, but I just want to make sure that we're the same because somebody else had said they didn't get left and right correctly. And so can you just reach your hand up and touch the left side of your face where you think you saw it? Okay, and again, for the record, you use your left hand to reach up and touch your underneath your left eye uh, on your face, correct? Correct. And in fact, I apologize, but I have a... I couldn't tell from that. I have a little scar under my left eye. I couldn't tell from back there if you did. It doesn't no, look like you there's do. bags under my eyes. I work nights. Nope. I, sometimes we project on our own onto others, and I apologize for doing that. Um, so what you recall is, did she point up to her left side of her face? She came over holding it. Okay. She came over holding the left side of her face, right? Yeah. Um, and when she's holding the left side of her face, I imagine she's holding the left side of her face like you did with her left hand, correct? I believe so. Okay. When she walked over to that group, she had things in her hands, correct? I guess, uh, I suppose she probably did. Yeah. I mean, she had a phone, right? I don't know. She had a vape. Again, I, I, I don't know. And she had a white claw. Right? If I showed you photos that said that she had those things in her hand, would that surprise you? No, it wouldn't, but okay. I, I can't say that I, I know what she had in her hand because I sure. don't. When she came back to you, she still had the phone, correct? Objection, I think it doesn't remember. I'm asking now when she came back. I'm asking a different time frame. Fair enough. You can answer the question. I still don't remember. Okay. When she came back, did she have the uh, can in her left hand? Again, I... I don't remember what okay. she had in her Would it refresh your memory to see a still frame of her standing by the tubes afterwards speaking? Can I show that to you? Sure. I'm just going to check that no, it's in the video. He doesn't remember. I don't think this is a good use of our time. He doesn't remember the photos. May or may not show something different. Would you agree? Let him refresh if his she's seen after she says that she got punched in the face on the left side of her hand and she walks over to you at G2. Yeah. Right? And if she's seen in the video over there holding a can in her hand mm -hmm. with the phone in her 
her right hand. But yeah. She's got her hands full, correct? Okay. Do you agree with that? I mean, if her hands are full, yes, I would agree that her hands are full. And if her hands are speculation on what might be, it's a hypothetical. Well, come on up, please. Oh, come on. That's that's a bit. Wow, that's him up there. That's the guy up there puffing and puffing away. Holy cow. I want to show 2657. Also, when you're ready. I'm ready, Judge. Also, I think he finally was able to convince the judge this is refreshing his recollection. If he can't figure it out, then that's on him. But he needs to say if he can see it or not. Showing you picture 2657. And I believe the evidence is that this is at approximately a minute and 50 seconds into the video. Is that Madison Cohen that you see in front of you with the blonde hair? That is correct. And she has a, a drink in her left hand? Yep. as fast as I can. Show you slide forty two thirty five. Mm -hmm. uh, just a is that you in the yellow shirt, sir? Yep. And then over here, does that appear to be Madison Cohen with the blonde hair and the one piece suit? Uh, it's really not clear enough to say for sure, but. Yeah. The person who's got the blonde hair in the upper corner there with the uh, one-piece suit, does it appear as if that person has something in their left hand and something in their right hand? I couldn't say from that picture. <laughs> I'm not sure that matters. She came over clutching her eye, whether it was with the back of her hand, her forearm, or the front of her hand. She came over holding her eye. So your previous testimony when you said she had her flats of her fingers up against her eye, you're saying... I didn't say that. Uh, that, that. That's what you showed. So you asked me wear on the face and I used my hand to show wear on the face. I didn't say that's how she was holding her hand. You did. I thought I did both. And if I was wrong, that's fair. Um, so tell me now, tell the jury now, what did you see her do in relation to the point place on her face where she said she was punched? What did she do? Again, I don't remember. I just remember she was clutching her eye. Okay. Whether it was the front of her hand, the back of her hand, or her forearm, I couldn't say. Okay. Again, this all happened very quickly and I was able to see that she was okay, there was people stabbed, 
and that was my concern. And I appreciate that. If it seems like I'm judging you, I no, I'm I not just trying want to, to be clear. Impression. I'm just trying to gather the facts so that the jury can make their decisions. Make sense? Yep. Okay. You said that there was a photo taken of this mark on her face. Correct. Did you take this photo? I did not. Her mother did. Okay. And this is something that was told to you? Yes. You didn't see the photo, did you? I think I did. Okay. Who showed you the photo? I believe her mother showed it to me. Okay. And when did her mother show you this photo? We all went and had lunch after the bail hearing. Okay. Um, so and I believe it was I believe it was that time at lunch that she showed it to me. It may have been here at the courthouse, but it was that time frame. Okay. Um, and do you uh, are you aware that Madison Cohn gave her phone to the police? She very well may have. I mean, I'm not aware of that. But is it your under? Were you told by somebody that the police just didn't want it? Is that what you were told? Well, it wasn't her phone. It was her mom's phone. Okay. So that was and, and yes, I, I was told that the photo was offered up, and they said they didn't need it. The police just said we don't need that photo in a homicide case. I don't know how they said it. Okay, that's fine. But that's what your testimony is. That is my testimony. That's what you were told by the Cohen family. That is what I was told by her mother. Yes. Okay. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Carlson, do you have a photographic memory? Absolutely not. Do you remember some details of events without remembering every detail? I do. do remember how you drove here today? I do. do remember how many lefts for his right turns you took? Nope. Do you remember some things from this incident, but not every single incident detail? I would say that's fair to say. Some things were burned into my brain that day. Um, You said um, on cross that you, you thought Nikolai was just a drunk idiot. Do you remember that? I don't believe I used the term idiot, but I Maybe. think that's fair. I might be mis misremembering too, so I don't, I don't mean to put words in your mouth if you think I'm wrong. You feel free to correct me. Um, and I think you said that your fear was he was going to keep antagonizing the boys until they did something. From what I witnessed, yeah. I'd watched them walk away from their tubes two or three times and then reapproach them. And your memory from your vantage point was that you could see Nikolai, Maddie, and then the tubes. So like... I mean, I could see everything from my vantage point, but what I was focused on and paying attention to at different times varies. Um, you know, I... I think I was mainly focused on Mr. Mew and watching what he was doing um, versus, I, I, and obviously I could see Maddie interacting with him because I was watching him. But if you ask me what the other kids were doing at that point, I couldn't tell you. And your, your view was not a bird's eye view like that drawing? Absolutely not. So if there's parts of your group walking over or standing in between parts of your view was obstructed? Yep. So Attorney Nelson drew, drew some locations of people up there. Do you actually remember that that's where those people were? No, I mean, I remember where we were in relation to their group. Um, we were almost in front of them when I got the boys to stop our tubes. Um, we were on uh, the opposite side of the river. And, uh, and I want to... So Attorney Nelson asked you um, which cheek was it on Maddie? You remember that line of questioning? Yep. I think you said a couple times you didn't remember. Then he told you about how his memory works, and then you said left. Well, I'm just, I, again, I didn't want to say anything that I wasn't absolutely certain about. I remember it being the left-hand side, but I didn't want to state that without being absolutely certain, and I wasn't absolutely certain that it was the left-hand side. He asked you to pick a side, and you picked? Correct. 
I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? <clears throat> so just, you know, when you say you remember it being on the left-hand side, do you have an image in your mind of Madison Cohen's face on the left-hand side having to mark? Is that what you see when you say, I remember it being on the left-hand side? Correct. Okay. You don't see anything else in your head other than that, right? You don't have any other memory, correct? I'm not sure what you're asking me. Poor question. Fair enough. I'm asking in particular about your memory regarding Madison Cohen's mark. And the okay. only memory that you have about Madison Cohen having a mark is the memory that you've told us about it being on her left side. That's the only memory you have, correct? Correct. All right. Thank you. You would said you watched Nikolai Mew walk away two or three times, correct? Correct. And was that before, during, or after Madison Cohen had walked over there? Before. Okay. And when Nikolai Mew walked away from that group of teenagers those two or three times, did you see the teenagers just float downstream away from him? No, because he was in front of them. Okay. So when you said you saw him walk away, you mean he walked downstream from him? He walked downstream. He walked, at one point, he walked around the side of him and around the back. He grabbed the tubes and stopped them from behind. And then he walked again in front of them. Um, and he had started to walk downstream from him at that point, and that's when he turned around and charged at them. And I believe when he charged at them, Madison was off the tube and on her way over there, and the boys were following. Okay. And you'd said that you had an obstructed view, but you could still see things, certain things. Well, I didn't right? say I had an obstructed view. I, okay, I thought you did, and so... Did no, you? he asked me, as, as they were walking over there, is it fair to say that at times it was obstructed? Okay, so at times it was obstructed? Correct. So one of the things that wasn't obstructed is you observed your son, Dante Carlson, hit Mr. Mew, correct? That is correct. And you saw Mr. Mew go down into the water, correct? I saw him fall back onto his backside. Right. I don't know that I'd call it going down in the water. The water was very shallow at that point. Sure. The water was flowing over the ground, correct? Yes. Okay. It's still the river, correct? Yeah. Whether how deep the water is, he went into the water. Yeah, right? it was probably 10 inches deep at that point. Okay. He went into those 10 inches of water, agreed? Yes. And when you saw Dante hit him and he go down into those 10 inches of the water, that's when you yelled stop, correct? Correct. And your son didn't stop, did he? He was I, I uh -oh. don't know that I can say whether he stopped or not at that point. Did you see your son Dante Carlson hit uh -oh. Nick Mew when he was down in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Oh, Chad. Did you um, see AJ Martin come up from behind Nick Mew and push him when Nick Mew was sitting in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you see your son Dante Carlson swing and hit uh, Nick Mew in the front while AJ's pushing him from the back? I don't know if AJ was pushing him from the back when Dante struck him or not. I did see Dante strike him from the front. I was unaware of the situation at that point. Didn't know why Dante had struck him. It was very out of character for Dante to hit someone. So I immediately yelled stop. Because you were worried? Because I didn't want it to escalate. That was the whole point of sending him over there so that hopefully it wouldn't escalate. But it had escalated, right? It had. And then you wanted it to stop, correct? Absolutely. Nothing else. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, you may step down. Is he released? Yes. All right. Is he under your subpoena? He's under the court subpoena. If I, um... I think we have his number. I can tell the court at the end of it. He's free to go today. I will certainly inform the court and Mr. Carlson. He's not, he doesn't need to sit in the hallway. All right. So you're free to leave. He may be asked to come back on a different okay. day. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, while we're in between witnesses, uh, I'd like to have the illustration marked as an exhibit. So let's get a number assigned. I think it would be 102, Judge. Okay, 102. Move for the admission of Exhibit 102. Okay, that'll be... All right, chat. It's just before 9 o'clock. I am going to have to stop it now because, uh, well, basically, we don't have time, and i got to get ready for 9.30. So we're going to end it here. i got to get everything sorted out. Um, yes, remember they were sent there to de-escalate, de yes, and they started swinging. So, um, 
Okay, this is this is just 500 people watching on Twitter. If you really are out there, hello, Twitter people, but I don't think you are. Uh, almost 300 or 282 watching. <clears throat> Guys, we are going to stop here. We'll start up tomorrow morning. Um, I have a hearing at 10 o'clock. I don't think it should go very long. Um, and then Eric Hunley has asked if I could come on. Uh, laid back law. Um, so we'll probably start up about 1.30 or so. And we will finish up day two. We will knock out day three. And then from there, um, tomorrow night, I think we'll be covering some of the filings with... <coughs> uh, I think we'll be doing some Russell Greer and Acerthorn filings because there's so much of it. And then over the weekend, we will finish up day four, day five. And then we will finish up whatever we can on the weekend with uh, George Kelly. I think for right now, George Kelly's going to go on the back burner. If the if the news isn't sharing it, we have to wait every day till the end of the day. You know, we'll have to figure something out. Um, I will warn you guys next week, um, probably like, you know, we'll be going hard till about Wednesday, Thursday, I'll be slowing down. Um, very likely, I will have a trial starting Friday. And it will go till Monday at the uh, trial. We'll pick the, we pick the jury on Friday. Um, I may do a stream or two, a lighter one during the weekend. And then f Monday I have trial. And then Tuesday I'll have court and some. I'll have be waiting on the verdict, but I'll have some hearings. So there'll be a very limited amount of stuff probably at the end of the week, beginning of the week of uh, the week of uh, the 15th. So I just want to let you guys know now. Um, that said though, we are going to be starting at 930 tonight with the crime stream. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of fun stuff, and, uh, I will see you guys there. So, um, thank you to everybody here. I want to make sure I didn't say super chats yet. Uh, Josh says, what happened between us and racket, me and rackets? No, nah, I mean, not, nothing specific, nothing specific. It's just, I think we're kind of just going our separate ways. Um, stop Moss B is saying Sneed. And then Automatis is catching up. You just use the words gang up even though it wasn't your thought process. Yes, yes. Come on, my dude. Goodbye. These witnesses are all not credible. Here's the problem, though. Like this bar owner. It, it's it's very much like the other case we talk about. He has to live in this community. So if he's going to say, yeah, these these kids all caused it. And if he goes around saying, yeah, basically Isaac got what was coming to him, he's going to look like his business will hurt. He has to live in this neighborhood. And, and if you guys don't understand this, I'll show this real quick. So you can understand what happens. This is Minneapolis, um, and this is a this is a map of the area. This this was a place for people to go. And from what I understand, this is over this way. And this is this is the Mississippi River coming. Well, this is the Mississippi River coming down through. But there's you know lakes and rivers right here. This is the state line. This is the state line between Minnesota and Wisconsin. So that's why that's why we have Minnesota people. I mean, look, people like Lake Elmo, that's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, boy. But look, you have St. Paul, you have Minneapolis, you know, you have George Floyd, George Floyd to stay in Brooklyn Park where the uh, Taser, Taser, Taser lady was. Uh, Nick lives way out here somewhere. I don't know, like out that way really really far so this is this is kind of like a regional area yes yeah, state lines state lines were being crossed I mean I thought I was finally being a real internet lawyer I had to go do real life stuff yeah oh so that is it for right now, guys, and uh, I will see you guys at 9.30. So Nick, Nick, Nikolai Mew, not guilty like a mofo right now. I mean, there's very little you're going to do to convince me he's, you know, not guilty. Or at least, I mean, he's going to get hung jury out. If he gets convicted, I am very surprised. Because if they had, if the, if the state had it, they would have showed it already. <clears throat> They're hanging their head on this video. So... Now, I'm not even sure with all this nonsense, Nikolai Mew has to testify. But as but you know, trial's still new, so 
Time will tell. Knock on wood. So um, I will see you guys in a little while. Take care and uh, see you at 930. Bye, guys.